to order our April 13th budget uh, special finance committee budget hearing. Clerk, please take the roll. Councilman Ferry. Present. Councilman Capiano. Present. Councilman Pavlaskis. Yes. Councilman Wall. Here. Councilman Vice President Vargas. Present. Councilman Donegan. Present. Councilman President Reno. Present. There are a, a plethora of departments that are before us today that we will get through. Um, at this time, I'm going to open it up for public comment. And when we come back from our lunch recess at noonish, I will open it up for public comment again in case there's anyone from the public that wants to speak then. And, uh, you know, if people trickle in, I'm certainly will, willing to... Um, to entertain it at this time. So is there any members of the public here today that wish to speak on any of the docketed matters? Seeing none in person, Tom, is there anyone online? There is no public comment. Thank you. Okay, uh, this morning we are gonna begin with the public libraries. I'd like to invite Director Garsha up Director, good morning. Um, if you have any anything you'd like to introduce regarding the budget, I believe the microphone is automatic, so you won't have to hold it as long as the green light is on. Just make sure you speak into the mic. That way it gets picked up and uh, the floor is yours. Thank you, uh, Chairman Donegan, Council President Moreno, members of the City Council. Good morning. Um, first off, I'd like to introduce uh, who's in the audience, the new chair of the Library Board of Trustees, Michael Goldberg, is here with us today, as, as well as our assistant library director, Julie Holden. Um, so we've had another very successful year at the library from our uh, amazing summer reading program, the launch of our outreach vehicle, Branch 7, to our teen volunteer program, where over 200 Cranston teens volunteered at the library last year through our computer classes and our very vibrant ESL program. Um, we've outlined the amazing work of our library team in our annual report, which you've all received. I'd also like to thank the city council for your continued support and for the support passing the resolution to fully fund state aid to libraries. As you know, the governor's proposed FY25 budget reduces aid to libraries. Uh, it makes for a challenging budget environment for the, for the library with a loss of $22,212 in state aid. Uh, with your support, we are advocating with the General Assembly to restore those funds. But the Library Board of Trustees have allocated that same $222,212 from the Library Reserve Fund to offset these, this projected loss, and that is reflected in the revenue in the proposed FY25 budget. Um, also, although the proposed FY25 budget is a net increase for the library um, that covers some of our contractual obligations, and we thank the mayor for that, uh, this budget still presents some challenges. The line item reductions in our budget, coupled with a continued rise in fixed costs without additional funding, would likely result in some very tough decisions by the Board of Trustees and a reduction in services to the public. I would also add that there are some inconsistencies in the salary schedule in this budget for three library staff members. Um, we will need approximately $8,000 combined added to our salary and FICA lines to have the correct contractual salaries for these employees. I have submitted this information to the finance director, and I asked the council to consider adding those additional funds back into our budget in the amendment process. Thank you. Thank you, director. Um, for, for my own notes, uh, what was the amount that needs to be added? Uh, approximately $8,000. Council President. Thank you, Councilman Donegan. Good morning, Director Garcia. Uh, thank you very much for attending this evening, and thank you for running a top-notch library department that is the envy of many. Um, I had a couple of questions for you. Um, one is with respect to the $8,000 salary um, adjustment, just so I'm clear, is that an increase or is that something that has previous in previous years has been eight has already been there? That's what I'm trying to it's ask. It's not, me. it's not um it's 
a few, a few employees that had inconsistent information in the system that uh, some of it is step increases that are contractual that weren't listed uh, correctly in the city system. So it's okay. it's it's an increase, but it's it's a budgeted increase for contractually from previous years. Oh, just want to make sure I understood that clearly. So it's already in in place. It's a contractual obligation. Okay. And then my other question is with respect to um, the library, uh, one of the very positive attributes that I find with our uh, library system in Cranston is the flexibility in the hours, um, including Sundays, um, the central libraries extended, I call them extended hours where there's at least one night a week where they're open until 8 p.m. And um, along those lines, in terms of the uh, reduction that, that is shown in this budget for part-time hours, how is that going to uh, impact your department and particularly with the the state requiring a minimum wage increase? Um, so you may remember that in, in fiscal 22, the library received um, an increase in our part-time uh, line item to uh, account for a 13 and a $14 minimum wage increase that were happening over the, the, the next two years. So this year we have the, in January, we have the, the $15 minimum wage. Um, in our original budget proposal, we had proposed level funding that line at $450,000. We felt that with prudent scheduling on our part, we'd be able to absorb that minimum wage, wage increase. Um, but, um, you know, uh, that's 32 employees that we have to raise, 32 part-time employees we have to raise to $15. Um, but with the reduction of the 50,000 from that line that's in this budget, um, it, it'll be really difficult for us to meet those obligations without significant cuts elsewhere in the budget by moving money around, um, which we have had, we've done in previous years. But, um, the situation is exacerbated, I think, by the continued increases of fixed costs that are, have been underfunded for, for years. Um, just, I can give you some examples, um, our, um, portion of the city of the building insurance that covers our buildings and and the um the interior you know the the interior and the collections in in the in the buildings that's part of the city insurance policy has gone up over 135 percent in the last six years and we've had no increase uh, in funding for that um, our tipping fees have gone up 49 percent in the last five years uh, again there's been no increase um funded for that as well and our utility bills have also increased dramatically so um i think that um the trustees um we're gonna have to make some tough decisions they've only had this budget for about 12 days but um and so it's hard to say what reductions in services that they would have to make uh, if we don't receive the um that fifty thousand dollars back into the budget but i think all um Everything is on the table. There could be reduction in hours to branches. Sunday hours could be potentially eliminated. Um, there's a lot of different scenarios, um, but it would be really difficult to make up the, those um, loss of funds in the existing budget. I will say that we've already been open for 23 Sundays this year. We're open one to five uh, in the afternoons on Sundays at the Central Library from October through May. And um, we've been averaging 470 people um, in the building over those four hours, which is a really amazing figure for a Sunday afternoon. Um, this last week we had 654 people in the building. So um, the Sunday hours are really well used and that, that may have to see reductions. Thank you. There are any other questions from members of the committee or council regarding public libraries expenses? Budget Auditor DeMeo. Director Gasha, uh, just one quick question. You had made mention that you're moving mm -hmm. um, the 22000 plus from your reserve. With that being moved over, what's the reserve balance? What will be left at prior? So currently our reserve balance is approximately $137,000. That includes that twenty two. dollars uh, It also includes uh, $48,000 that the trustees have uh, set aside to upgrade uh fire alarm radio box systems at our at our library locations you may recall that 10 years ago the city council passed an ordinance that discussed upgrading all the city buildings to the the new standard of, of radio fire uh, fire alarm boxes by 2025 um uh, to date there really hasn't been any real um citywide plan to do that so we've been trying to do it on our own and so we've accounted for for that in that um in the reserve fund so if you take those two things away that that leaves about sixty seven thousand dollars in that balance but depending on what happens in this budget and the trustees may may want to put um 
more money from the reserve into into the budget to offset some of these losses that would mean we would not be able to do that um, particular item with the with the uh, fire alarms um, and is also not really sustainable on the note of the fire alarm I know that the state had public safety grants I know the school department uses them from time to time to be reimbursed has that been looked into to see if maybe that could replenish what you're spending um, in discussions with the uh, I haven't talked about those specific grants in a few years with the fire um, alarm intended, but from my understanding, those grants would not cover what we need to do. Thank you. Are there any other questions on the expense side? Seeing none. I, I do. Oh, yes. Yeah, Councilman. Uh, I don't know if I should ask this question now or later then. Can you give me a rough estimate of exactly how much money you're be, you feel you're being underfunded to run the programs that you run. And I would just want to personally tell you that I've spent more time in the library in the last year than I have in the last 10 years of my life. So you do a fine job with programs. You've done a wonderful job. So what can you give me a good estimate of what you think you're being underfunded to maintain the quality of the work that you do with your libraries? I'm going to give you two answers to that question, if you don't mind. That's uh, not a problem. So, Councilman, um, knowing the fiscal situation around the city, and, we, and we've seen the other the, the budget constraints, not wanting to use ARPA money, we completely understand that. Um, I think that if we were able to just receive the line item reductions that were taken from this budget, we wouldn't be able to make it work, although it would be painful. If uh, I was to be honest and say how much money we would need to fully able to execute um, the various fixed costs that I just mentioned, you're you're probably talking um, closer to one hundred and twenty to one hundred and thirty thousand dollars. But I think we could, if we were just to get the the line items that were reduced back into the budget, I think we would be able to make it work. It would be it would be tough, and and as as normal, we we are very. Um, we take the, our budget very seriously and are very fiscally responsible with it. So we would be able to make that work. If you were to just get the line items, you would not be able to make any improvements to your programs. No. Okay. So 125 to 130,000 would be the real number. And then just the line items would get you back to where you are without any improvements. Correct. Thank you very much. Council President. Sure. Um, Director Zadella, this is um, a question for you. Um, it's been presented to us, and it would seem logical because we all face it, whether you're commercial business or a residence, utility expenses have increased dramatically. Um, so my question is, with them having increased dramatically, why is it in this budget they're still tracking at the, you're proposing the same expenditure level going forward because a fixed cost through the chair to the council as i believe i inferred when we um opened the the budget hearings one of the things that we're seeing this year is we come online with net metering credits or um solar net metering credits reducing electricity bills um this was one of the departments which will be receiving um, net metering credits, reducing their electricity bills. It commenced, I want to say, February um, was the first bill it hit. So one thing we are anticipating, you know, as Mr. Gosh has said, over the last six years, I believe he quoted the um, his utilities went up 135 percent. Oh, no, that was building insurance. I didn't actually, okay. I didn't say a number for utilities. Okay, utilities have gone up, but this is the first year they will be reduced by net metering credits. Do you know what the um, net metering credits are per month? Um, Percentage-wise or dollar-wise? Through the chair, I don't have that on me, but okay. we can take one month worth of bills per account we've assigned it to and get that report out to you. Okay. Um, 
Can I can I add something to that real quick? Sure. Do you, um, we, the, the net meeting credits will be uh, a fantastic addition. Um, we applaud them. Have not seen those on our budget yet. So uh, since they just they just started, so we haven't really seen what those would be on a monthly basis, as as, as the finance director just mentioned. And I'm hope, hopeful that they will de decrease the cost enough. Um, the last two fiscal years, we've been we spent over thirteen to fifteen thousand dollars. This year was trending to spend about fifteen thousand dollars more in utilities than was budgeted. So we moved that money from other places. One thing that the trustees will be doing, and this may also um, be used uh, some costs from the reserve fund, is we have had Rise Engineering come to the building to give an energy audit of the central library. Our hope is to move all the light to LEDs as well as putting some motion sensor lights in place. Um, we're still waiting on that quote, and usually there's significant rebates from Rise Engineering for that. So hopefully the cost will be minimal for us to put that in place, but that will hopefully also um, help with you utility bills just in the last couple of years it's been a very it's been a struggle um with the increased costs and um with respect to that insurance and hospitalization basically uh, same question uh direct as Adelis. like if it's been increasing that's a pretty much fixed cost why are we keeping it at, at uh the rate that we have it um through the chair to the counselor if you look at last year's budget there was an aggressive rate increase for health insurance last year, I believe it was 10%. That 10% um, is trending lower right now. So what we've done is factored two years worth of, of health insurance rate um, increases downward for this year to um, compensate for what was a higher rate increase last year. So, and maybe I misunderstood you. So you think that last year was higher, but you're not expecting this year to be as high? The chair, okay. um, last year was excessively high because one of the problems we have with this um, bringing in the budget so early, one, we don't have state aid revenues. One, on a actuarial basis, we do not have the rates when we formulate the budget. Um, one of the things we were talking about is possibly um, trying to, you know, start the budget later, but we make um, assumptions on on health insurance when we don't even have the actuarial reports from both the carriers and our consultants. So last year, I will say in no uncertain terms, the rates in, uh, assumed in the budget were high. Um, that goes into increasing the health insurance trust this year. So we believe that the sufficient um, funding in the health insurance trust that will carry over from this year to next to absorb the rate increase we have proposed in the budget. Thank you, Director Stellis, um, and thank you, Director Garsha. Thank you, uh, Chairman Donegan. Councilman Wall. Good morning. Um, I think it might be for Director Sedellis' question. Um, I'm looking at the uh, operation of library. Can't hear you. Uh, can you hear me? All right, add the button press. Everybody hear me? All right. The operations of library. Um, that line, or since it went down 55 grand, the budget that preceded this one. All right. And I looked at the explanation, what it is, uh, online cataloging, uh, dues, I mean, I commend you. It, it went down 20% in one year. I just want just to explain how, how that happened. Most operational costs, I would assume, would be going up. Yeah, the, the last couple of fiscal years during the pandemic were really interesting because we either had money that we couldn't spend because we were closed um, or we moved. We had to move money to other line items to cover things. So that so. That line item has been fairly consistent. We ended up maybe moving up money into it in a couple of years um, to cover certain costs and then moved it back to the you know the appropriate lines. The the major um expenditures from that line are our Ocean State Libraries dues, which um have been increasing every year, but not by a dramatic account. I think this year um, it's not reflected in this budget, but they're they're trending to increase by about thirteen hundred dollars. Um, our security officer is in that as well at the central library. Um, so some of these lines over the last couple of years, um, and I, I mean Tom can jump in, but I've been they're they're um, 
they're not typical actual trend. They did not typical of trends before the pandemic because we had to just move money around. We had maybe had more money in some, in some items that we spent on special projects because we had to spend it down. There was a few years there where we didn't have a lot of our staff in the building. Um, so we ended up, you know, uh, or on reduced schedules. So we would move, move items and do uh, some operational building projects that maybe we didn't have the money to do normally. So that, so that's the main reason why it's been, the trends look so different. Okay, thank you. Councilman Campiana. Thank you, Dr. Collins. Um, Director, uh, the traffic that you have on a Sunday is astronomical. I wonder, is there any historical data? Is it seasonal? Is it when summer's coming up? Is it go down in those seasons or does it stay steady throughout the whole year? So I, I'd have to go review, and again, the the pandemic has kind of skewed some of those numbers for recent years. But it's historically um, the, the the we're actually trending higher than than last winter right now. But typically, the the time between um, October and before Christmas vacation for the students is really bu busy, and then in the spring we we stop in in, in May, which is right around the time that um, you know the students are out. So typically we always we always traditionally saw a lot of students, whether it was high school students, college students in the library. But this year, because I've been I've come in myself a few times and, and, and observed, it's actually a, a broad swath of the population. So it's not just the student population, but but just a lot of different demographics. So um so it's a, it's a little bit of a different trend this year. We're seeing you know a lot of a lot of different people and maybe not exactly the same time of year that we saw them in the past. And also uh, I think we've spoke about this um, and I promise I got a few calls from constituents about hoopla. Yep. Um, it is a, a big expense to the library. Um, can you give a brief description of what that is to the other council? Certainly. So Hoopla is a, a digital um, service that we offer where the public can um, borrow uh, digital ebooks, digital audiobooks, um, movies. And uh, the model is that it's um, unlimited use and the library has to pay per use that someone borrows it. So it's between $1.99 and $3.99 uh, per cost. So we had typically uh, originally our, you know, our friends group had been paying, paying for that. We built it into the on our operating budget over time. And we budgeted, I think this year, about four or $5,000 for it. Um, but an unfortunate, it's both fortuitous and unfortunate that last May, um, you may have noticed that, um, if you ever, if you went to our library catalog, we are, the Ocean State Library has launched a new um, library catalog system. And for the first time, Hoopla was in that system because it used to be you could only find it from our website. So once people are actually discovering it in the catalog when they're looking for other, other books, um, the usage has gone through the roof um, and, it, and it's now uh, pretty much unsustainable. We've spent... Um, probably twelve thousand dollars or not this year not all of it from the operating budget some of it has come from our friends group and and from restricted gift funds that we have um from donors but um and i'm sorry if i'm not talking directly into this mic um but it's it's uh, it's a good service that people like but it's unsustainable we have the same problem with all of our ebook ebook um platforms that the cost is just unsustainable for us so that's one that's going to have to be a, so we're going to have to have some some um, significant discussions with the trustees on on whether we can keep that service um, in any event, um, whether we receive the increases that we're asked the, the line item the line item um, money back into the into the budget this year or not because it's just not sustainable um, in that way. So we we've also um, been very active at the state level. Um, the Rhode Island Library Association for the past five years has had legislation in the state house in both chambers to uh, force the publishers to have fair licensing contracts um, because it's not a good use of public funds the way the pricing is skyrocketing at this time. So that's probably a pretty long explanation and I can talk about it, I can talk about it for another hour, but um, it's, a, it's a very popular service that's, that's just becoming really uh, hard to, to pay for. So you see that service going away? It's it's possible um, uh, if if we have to start making tough cuts. That's an easy one to cut because it's already over budget. Um, I would hate to not have to do that. So we have to, we're trying to come up with ways to um, to sustain it. We are I know the calls that you got were because we we put a monthly budget spending cap in place, which then put a daily spending limit in place, um, and that the day switches over at midnight. And we and we I was really not 
I was surprised that we had some savvy users that figured this out. So they were going online between 12 a.m. and 6 a.m. and borrowing all the books for the day. And people that get up at normal hours were shocked that they couldn't borrow anything. And then were because we I I also received a lot of calls and emails about it. So that was just one thing we put in place to try to make it um, sustainable. So we're still working on other other things, but I, I would love to be able to keep it. And they can only get that through the library. Correct. Thank you very much. Councilwoman Renzulli. Thank you. Um, Director Garsha, in case I missed it, where what line is is that under the hoopla? Um, that is part of our online resources line. Thank you. And that is similar to like what when you're ordering ebooks on, on Amazon or anything like that, correct? Not so uh this no. Okay. Um, because the the problem that we have with all this, the we, the ebook systems, whether it's Hoopla or our other overdrive ezone system, it, and this is the basis of our the legislation we have at the at the state level, is that if you were to purchase a book on Amazon yourself, most likely you're paying what 14, 15, 19 bucks for it. Um, in most cases, in Hoopla's case, we're paying three ninety nine, two ninety nine, one ninety nine per use. So every time someone uses it, and the other in the other ebook services we have uh, called the ezone. The libraries could be paying. Um, this is on a statewide basis. So the the we share that e-zone system with the state. All the other libraries in the state, Hoopla is specifically here in Cranston for our for our residents. Um, if you were to purchase the, a book in the other system, the libraries may be paying sixty five, seventy five, eighty five dollars for it, and then only being able to lend it twenty six times or for two years, and have to relicense it again. So it's it's really not a, a good use of public funds, and it's been really taxing um, library budgets across the state. So it's 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 the same um, digital download process as Amazon, but not the same pricing structure. Okay, thank you. And then I just have a few questions. Hold on one second. So for your legal services fund, I see that the explanation says legal counsel regarding labor relations, and that has been around four thousand dollars a year, except one thousand one year it looks like it was ten thousand dollars. Is that only for labor relations every year, or could it be for other so, things. So that is the trustees retain a, a labor attorney. So um, the years that it goes up, the, the year that it was 10,000, that was most likely union contract negotiation year because the, the trustees and myself negotiate with our with our union other years. Um, we don't always hit that month that that 4,000 every year. Um, if there is another personnel matter that I need a, a legal opinion on, I'll I'll contact that attorney. But most of our legal services uh, go through the, the city solicitors. Okay, so is there a reason that it's necessary in the first place when we already have I you allowed to use our city solicitor for late, like we negotiate our own contracts? Yeah. So, I'm just so the, the trust since the trustees have the the state mandated authority to set wages and contracts for library staff, they choose to have their own attorney, not and not use a, a, a city attorney. The attorney that the the, the trustees have, have retained for several years longer than I've been at the library is and his name is Vincent Ragosta. He's a well known labor attorney. So um, I think that's the trustees' choice to re retain that um, and have a you know their own separate um, counsel um, separate from the, uh, the the city solicitors. Which isn't to say that the city solicitors aren't amazing uh, helping us in other matters. So specifically policy review, if we have a new library policy that, that the trustees are considering, I usually talk with the solicitors concerning it to see what their what their thoughts are. So they're very helpful. But in the in the matter of labor, the, the trustees use their their uh, authority to have their own okay. counsel. But it is a choice, correct? They could choose to use a city solicitor if they wanted to. They could choose to do that. Okay. Um, Then the increase that you need, the $8,000 about the misunderstanding with salaries, does that affect anything else in this that we need, to, or does that include Just that? That includes FICA. Includes the, everything, the payroll taxes, all yep. that. Okay. And then in your, and I'm sorry if I missed this, but in the revenue side, is this showing grants? Or no, do you have a separate grants and budget? We do, we do not show grants in our revenue line because we do not uh, do, uh, apply for grants for operating expenses. Um, we apply for grants for uh, programmatic um, additional programming um, and additional services that is not reflected in a revenue line in our budget. Um, it's it's problematic, um, at least in the library world, to to um, 
receive grants for operational expenses. Most of the most foundations we deal with will not give us that when that should be coming from from the city. So um, when we go out, when we have grants, again, they're for additional things that are not reflected in, in, our, in our revenue line. Can you give me an example? Um, certainly. So we get we just just um, just last week, I, I have legislative grants that were sent across my desk from Senator Miller, who gives us a legislative grant every year for ESL classes at the William Hall Library. And I received another legislative grant from representatives Baginski, Potter, and Fenton Fung for ESL classes at the Auburn Library. So those um, we've had the, the ESL program for close to 22 years, and none of the money for the ESL program has ever come out of our operating budget. We always have raised that money elsewhere from either programmatic grants or uh, donations, which is the same with our summer reading program. Uh, that is also always raised through our uh, with donations from our friends group or, or, or grants. Uh, we just received another uh, $2,500 grant, for instance, recently from the State Office of Library and Information Services for summer reading program. So how much would you say you currently have in that grant budget? I know it's not for operationals, but I'm just curious what um, other, and I ask the same question to the schools usually. Yeah. What so is the second range of income. I don't necessarily have a grant budget. I mean, we apply for, for, for grants um, as needed. It's not like we, we don't apply for the same grants every single year. Mm -hmm. um, we have at the library, um, a restricted receipts account where we we retain gifts and um, donations from 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 donors. The trustees have the state mandated authority to be able to receive gift funds under under chap, uh, Title Twenty Nine Chapter Six, and so we have in that line now. I would probably in that budget now. I'm probably going to say, and this is just a, a quick estimate on my part. But it's probably $130,000. But again, those are restricted funds because when a donor donates to us, they usually restrict it, say, I want it to go to the books in the children's collection or I want it to go to the Oaklawn Library, things like that. So that's where we're able to supplement the um, operational costs provided by the city appropriation to do the extra work that we that we do. Um, so it's, it's supplementals. It can fit some of the categories that are here. Like you just said, you just mentioned children's books. I'm sure that that's already here in in books and care, correct? Certainly, um, you know, if if someone puts a donation saying I want children's books, then we can use then we use the donation for children's books. That that cannot and should not and is not able to supplement our our book budget in the municipal budget. Okay. And it's just one more question, director. Or supplement. Yes, yeah, a plan. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. Departmental expenses yes. for professional development, staff education, and training. Is Does that include, uh, like, tr is that like travel to conferences and stuff like that? Or, or is it just simply like for the people who work there to go to certain classes to? Um, it depends on the year. So um, most of the time that covers um, training that we have in the library, whether we bring in a, a, a trainer or do a, a webinar, it also covers costs to the Rhode Island Library Association conference every year, which is which is in Rhode Island, so it's not any travel. Um, we do um, have um, a donor that gives us money to send um, certain staff members to conference out of state, so that happens on occasion. Um, but again, that money is not... Um, not city or public money. It's it's donors that specifically um, give us money for that purpose. For an, for an example, um, we have an amazing new children's librarian, I believe came and spoke to the council at least once this year, Elena Rios, um, Cranston resident graduate of, of Cranston East. So this year, um, she was named an emerging leader 2024 from the American Library Association, which is a huge honor. So the, the that donor that I mentioned is actually funding her completely to go to that conference so she doesn't have to pay for it herself. That's excellent. She has the eraser story, correct? Yes. Yeah, she's great. She's very memorable. Um, but how in, so in 2022, and I'm looking at the actuals on that line where it's $28,000 and then it would be six, five, 10. What, can you do what you have to do with this eight? Um, and when you, I'm trying to word this the right way. If that were to be moved somewhere else in your budget that where you need money, the donor money that you have, will that cover, 
I know that it's a supplement, but if you had an excess, why can't it be used for other people to, to do their traveling or professional development yeah. so that you can, so this taxpayer as a city are not funding something that donors want to essentially fund. I just see there's other streams of income that come into the library that there's, there's no donors going to public works saying, I would please do this dredge sewer near my house. Yep. It's, it's, it's a different. So one of the things that I will say about the different line items in the budget, mm -hmm. and um, I'm not going to speak to the what, what's listed here in the actuals, but we have we been, we move money quite often between line items because of the you know the when I was mentioning the underfunded fisc, fixed costs. So if you we we sometimes don't spend what we say we're going to spend it on because we can't because a, a utility bill is trending up or the insurance is trending up, so we move those those monies around. So that was what that's what would happen this year. We would still be doing that regardless. We'd be having to 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 make tough decisions to change line items and move things around and make up for those fixed costs. So um, the departmental expense, um, you know, is is a is a pretty small amount that um, does it covers other miscellaneous costs. You know, just uh, you know, it's hard to it's, to it's not all used for the professional development. That's the primary use. Is other just I can't even really tell you what they are. So it's all just miscellaneous. So I, you know, I need to go petty cash reimbursements, things like that. So it's a, it's a fairly fairly small line item. So um, so that's what I would say. I mean, we do have some really um, some some good donors, and we're able to to, to do that work, um, the additional work that we that we do in the community because we're always on the lookout for for additional monies from from grants or donations to do more work than we are able to do otherwise. But um, you know, again, I don't think that that should you know, supplant any of the monies that are are budgeted from the municipality. I will, I would also say that with our revenue line, we actually watch that very closely in forecasting. So if we're trending to be under budget and the revenues we've said we were bringing in, we stop spending. So we, you know, we're not gonna, we, we look at the revenue lines and say, if, if we're not getting to that 65,000 in revenue that we're supposed to be bringing in, I'll stop spending. And then some of these lines will be under because, you know, we're not gonna overspend our budget. Um, we, I think we take that, that, that responsibility very seriously. Um, and, you know, I've been the director here now, this will be my 12th year, um, which I can find amazing. And um, we've been over budget once um, and that was by $2,000. So we take, we take coming in, we take spending the public money very seriously. And we appreciate that. Thank you, Director Garcia. Are there any other questions on the expense side? Councilman Wall, yeah, yeah, go for it. And I think you were touching on on the revenue side, of, and I just talked to Mr. DeMeo regarding this. The revenue side, it's going up by approximately fifteen grand. It had been at forty one, forty one five for about four cycles, um, and just checking, it's uh, annualized now at about thirty nine grand. Is it is that possible to? I mean, is, do you think that's Good estimation. I know these are estimations. We're pretty we're we're pretty confident in that that estimation because um, the 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 additional monies we put into that line item um, is the is the reserve that I mentioned. Um, we also the trustees also felt that um, we hadn't so we charged to use our most of our meeting space. We charge a nominal thirty dollar fee for three hours, and that doesn't even cover the cost of us getting the room ready to use. We hadn't raised that in probably 15 years. So we raised it to $50 starting April 1st. The trustees voted to do that. So that's a minimal amount of additional revenue, a couple thousand. Um, but that also offsets the, um, you may remember a couple of years ago, um, fiscal 18, I believe it was, uh, the library went fine free. So we had to really uh, hone in on lowering our revenues from fines because it was a kind of an equity issue. And the more and more libraries that go fine free around the state because we share materials, the less and less revenue we're getting from, from fines. So um, I'm confident in that number. Um, we've we've always gotten within a couple of thousand of it every year. And again, if we're, if we're trending lower, we stop spending, but, we've, but I'm confident in that forecast. Thank you. Are there any other questions on the library? Thank you, Director. <clears throat> Thank you, Director. Thank you. Next, we have Public Works.
Okay, uh, before us now, we the Department of Public Works, broadly speaking, um, I do want to open up for the purposes of, I guess, synthesis, if we could, um, work, so we're going to discuss Group 1300, Group 1301, 1302, 1303, 1304, 1305, 1306, 1307. Starting with expenses in group uh, 13, well, first, director, is there, is there is there anything you'd like to? Yeah, I guess I'll just give a brief summary of how this budget was derived. Um, essentially, it was just Looking at trends from fiscal year 23 and the first half of fiscal year 24, seeing where we're at and basically balancing that. Um, there are a couple line items that have special increases on them, which I can explain when we get there. But by and large, this was derived based on looking at budgets over the last year and a half. Thank you. Um, I'll begin line item 51100. It's the salary schedule in group 1300. This is uh, within the Department of Public Works. This is going down about 90, 98,000. Um, does that mean that the position of director is not being funded? Um, Mr. Chairman, the position of director is partially funded and it's not anticipating um, it will be funded or filled July 1st, it's got a timing issue similar to what we did with funding uh, the senior planner um, in the planning department half year. This is the this position not being filled until the latter part of next fiscal year. So the is the is it that line item is it budgeted for that position to begin January one or later on? The position is of director is funded at thirty three two fifty two, which is roughly a February start date. The, the position has been open for a year and a half? Um, Mr. Chairman, I think it's well over a year. Um, it's been advertised and it has not been filled. So yes, the position's been open for quite some time. The proposed change in differential, then I, I assume, is is to compensate for that uh, vacancy. Um, Mr. Chairman, that's correct. On line item four, uh, excuse me, line item five four zero zero zero, lighting of streets. Mr. Chairman, the reduction is this fiscal year the last payment on the street lights. Um, the, we now own them, so there's no more payment going forward. Okay, so the the 2024 budget was one million seventy thousand. The budget, as proposed to us, is six hundred and twenty thousand. Where does the six twenty come from? Is that how is that number derived? I'm sorry, 450. Yeah. It's reduced by 620,000. My apologies. Um, that number was derived. We pay a fixed fee per street light monthly, um, as well as the maintenance needed on street lights. That number was derived looking at 
the first six months of fiscal year 24 and expanding that out over a year. So looking at the past bills from July to December of 2023 and carrying that over through fiscal year 25. Is there, um, I don't want to use the wrong language. So we, we're not we're not making a payment on those polls anymore. Is that the? So no better term. If, if it was a bond, I would refer to it as the bond has been paid off. Okay. So with, and, and for lack of a better word, due to ownership that it's, it's totally ours now, is there any additional cost associated with that that will no longer be picked up by the uh, utility? We, okay, it was, maybe I shouldn't have used the word bond, a lease. We own it. We repair it. Right now, the, the it was a financing technique for the lights. We do repair the lights, whether previously or prospectively. So we carry the cost of repairing the lights before and after, and as um, Director Matu said, the expense for maintenance and repairs has been trended from this year into next. So the cost of repair is built into the budget. And on the the road and control program, that's line four, uh, 54002, this is um, a reduction of, of $10,000 proposed I and admittedly the um the actuals for this year at least through February I, I know I have the March numbers here but from what I input it's running at about 8500 through February so I understand the reduction but so is that reduction just due to use um Mr. Chairman yes it is in the package that was sent out through March, um, road and control expenditures year to date, nine months, is 12400 um, So the 25000 is more than, you know, if you were going to, as you do on multiple budgets, um, trying to annualize, uh, annualize the twelve four. dollars um, It's more than what we're spending now. Um, so the trending has us um, properly funding that in excess of what they're spending right now. The, which, which I understand, um, and I appreciate that you're you're you know diligently going through that. Um, but just given given the area of the city that I represent, anytime you go knock on doors during a campaign, rats are top of the top of the list and and i'll just say the the i have experienced challenges in accessing the road and control program for constituents particularly constituents who rent because if they the way that the, the city currently does it is it has to be the homeowner or the property owner and for if someone's a tenant it can be difficult you know, and they're the one that's living there and experiencing the issue, it can be difficult at times to, not for all landlords, but it can be challenging at time or there could be a barrier to getting the property owner to sign up for even this free program. So I think if there was a way to maybe change the process to make it easier for people that don't own the property, but live there to access the program, there might be better usage. Can maybe explain why that is the case right now. Um, the reason the property owner needs to sign off on it is the city is indemnified when going on to their property. Um, that indemnification form needs to be signed by the owner of the property. Um, so that's why that's in place right now. I understand. If, if there's any way that legal can put their minds together to see if there's a workaround, if it's if it can't happen, it can't happen. But if we could just explore it, 
I, I, it would it would be appreciated. Does anyone have any question, other questions on group 1300 on the expense side? Um, this is probably for the director and both of you maybe answer this question. When you uh, annualized the figure and you said we're right on track, so you were using, when you were analyzing the rodent control figure, you would say that right now you're on track. If I may, yeah, go um, through the chair to the counselor, what I said and if I didn't, word it well enough through through march rodent control has expended twelve thousand four hundred and six dollars which is thirty five percent of this year's thirty five thousand as we would as we were developing um the budget if we just annualized that twelve thousand it would have been you know less than the twenty five we're using so realizing the importance of the program the 12 i mean 25000 is above what would be a straight line projection however now and this is what i'm thinking i'm i'm by by all no means a you know a nature study you know you know the habitat and how how rats and rodents uh, are but i'm going to assume that you're going to see more in the warmer months as we're coming into it. In fact, I'm getting calls now, and I didn't get them in January. I didn't get them in February, but March, April, yeah. the hotter, hotter weather, I have a and feeling that's going to be an uptick. So it's not going to be a consistent. No, it's uptick. not. And that's what we're saying. It's not a straight line. That's why we increased it above a straight line projection. Thank you. Councilwoman, uh, Council Vice President Vargas. Uh, thank you. Um, a, um, a question going back to um, actually a rodent control program. So how many bait boxes or controls do we actually have that we've placed around in the city? Do we have that number? I do not have that number handy right now. Okay. What does it cost us as a city to purchase those? I I'm, I don't have that off the top of my head right now either. The unit price of the boxes and, and or the bait. I do not have that right now. Okay. And um, what type of... You, you have communications in Department of Public Works under there... Um, any type of communication in terms of our rodent control program, does it come out of the rodent control program line item or does it go under communication? Which one does it fall under? The rodent control line item. Okay. And so what type of communication have we had that, as, as a city that you would actually expense from that rodent control program? What are we doing as a city? Is there a plan in place? How do we advocate or make folks aware about the rodent control a majority of our advertisement is via the city website, which doesn't have much of an expense or any expense for that. Um, so there's not much in terms of dollar amount for notification in there as we heavily rely on the website. Okay. I mean, the website only says tips for voting control. There's a brochure other than that. It just says, please call us. So this, that's, I, it's really not much of a communication but is there any other plans in place at all to get the word out there? Because as the chairman just um, stated, and I could say not only in his ward, but I think it's a citywide problem with rodents. And to see that decrease in a number where now you're telling us it also includes communication as part of that and not in the other line item, it's really bizarre to me. The fact that we have received emails, I forwarded emails about rodents not too long ago to Gina and the mayor's office. Um, and the fact that we are, um, not utilizing those fundings, it's just um, uh, mind-boggling. So uh, yes, I am requesting what it's costing us as a city for the bait boxes. Um, Want to know how many do we have? If there's any way to query that in terms of even by ward, it's fine. If not, ultimately it would be, um, actually, can you query it? Are you asking about the boxes that yes. have been placed or yeah. the ones we have in stock? 
The ones that are placed. Yep, that's all mapped on GIS. So. Okay, I think that would be great for us to be shared with with all of us. And then the yeah, the cost of the of the bait boxes as well, because that all comes on, under the rodent control program, right? The purchase of the bait boxes, the any like the rodenticides that we're using. Correct. Yep. Okay. Um. And um. The other one was quickly right back to the lighting of streets. Um, that is strictly that is not traffic signal. That is because I think I see that on the highway maintenance. This is clearly the lights that we see in the utility poles, right? I just want to be clear of that. And so, does that mean that because we own them or the lease, are we not going to foresee this? And FY twenty six, as the number keeps decreasing, and you said that this is a lease that we have. Um, through the chair to the counselor, the reduction is going to continue. So the the four, you know, the four fifty that you will see in the twenty five budget, um, if will continue. And the only thing that may occur is as the lights age, we may increase it in subsequent uh, subsequent years for repair. So. With the lease payment is now behind us as of FY25. So that 450 is the new baseline going forward. So that amount is a tremendous decrease, obviously, as stated earlier, um, the uh, few fiscal. Um, and so now we're at 450. But is, is so you're saying that this current fiscal year that we're in, we did a lot of work and taking up taking up a lot of the, the the lighting. I'm just trying to understand that again. So yeah, the cost of acquiring the light the lights is behind us. So now we're focused on just maintaining and paying for electricity. Okay, thank you. My last question that I have is on the sidewalk program. I know that's still level uh, service funded on that end as as well. There seems like there's a remaining balance of about seven thousand nine hundred and ten dollars. Um, you ran this, I think, yesterday. These are the numbers from, till yesterday on Friday, correct? Through the chair to the council, that's correct. Um, so you do you, I guess my question maybe or so more for the director, um, has there been any requests that are coming in between now that, that are not allocated in this remaining balance, I guess? Any... There, there are no requests in the queue, but this is about the time of, of the year when they start to come in pretty, pretty heavy. So there are none that we're waiting on that are not represented in this budget, but this is about the time of the year that they start to come in. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Chairman. Councilman Campapiano. Thank you, uh, Councilman. Um, I'm going back to the uh, the rodent control program. Is that for expenses of the bait and the traps, or do we outsource the going out and providing the service, or is this something the city does? The city installs the bait boxes on properties that that number is to purchase the boxes and and the bait so so it's basically okay so supplies correct okay and then i want to circle back to the um the directors you say the director's position is actively being advertised um through the chance of the council i don't think it is currently um listed as an open um position on a job but they have advertise it as far as I can recall two times previously. Now, the struggle to fill that position, you think it's because of salary or? Um, through the chair to the council, I, I don't know what the issues have been with this specific um, position. I don't even know how many resumes they've received to be honest with you, but I know they've gone to the, um, they have advertised that position two times. Thank you, director. Okay, moving on to expenses for 
Group 1301, Division of Traffic Safety. And Councilman Ferry, sorry. Um, I just have a couple of questions. Um, first is, you know, it's kind of upsetting that we're not budgeting uh, full salary for a public works director when 99% of the calls I get from people involve things that involve public works. Okay, so it's kind of upsetting to see that that's not in there. We're not actively trying to fill that position. Secondly, what is the weight for somebody right now if they have a bait box in their yard? How often does it get filled? Um, you're talking about getting rebated? Rebate. That is upon request of the property owner. All right, so I see that as a problem because I have three bait boxes in my yard. I live on the bike path. I'm on the highway for the rats. Okay. I call in about every two months to get them filled. And every time he comes, they're empty. Every single time, all three boxes are empty. I have people that have them in their yard and they say to me, the guy never comes to fill them up again. So I say, you have to call. Well, I didn't know I had a call. I said, when was the last time they were filled? Oh, a year ago. So if the poison is not out there to kill the rats, then they're not going to die. So are we not doing a good enough job of getting back to filling them up or, or informing the people that they need to tell us that they have to fill them up? Because if mine are empty after two months and people have had them out for six months to a year, if the poison's not out there, the rats are not dying. That's part of the problem why the rats are still around. And maybe that's why there's so many. So I just think that that needs to be looked at and Maybe we need to bu budget more money for for uh, bait so we can fill them more often. And maybe we need to maybe we need to throw a little more money at this because every time you ring a bell in certain wards, the problem is the first question people ask is, "What are you going to do about the rats?" Okay, so I don't think that waiting for the people to call to have them filled should be the answer. They can't look inside the box and see if there's bait in there. I happen to have a key to them because of a property management thing that I used to do, I can look in my boxes and see that they're empty. The average resident can't look in that bait box and see if there's bait in there. So how do they know they need to be filled? So we need to be on a regular fill up thing. That would be make, make a lot more sense. Okay, the second thing is about four months ago, you stood at that podium and I had a thing on the public works agenda about trees being trimmed and how much of a problem it was. And we were getting lots of calls and the wait was eight, 10, 12 weeks. And we were only addressing the trees that were dangerous to people. And I asked you, and this is nothing personal, by the way. I said, what do we need to do to solve that problem? And you said, we need to spend more money trimming trees. Okay. I don't see an increase in the tree trimming budget on this budget at all. Okay. So that's still a problem. We haven't increased sidewalks. So everybody that's sitting in this room that's an elected official has preached at one time or another that we're gonna improve public services, we're gonna make the infrastructure better, we're gonna do all these things to service people. And public works is 90% of that. And we are not looking to improve anything based on this budget. So that kind of like is upsetting to us as elected officials. How are we gonna be a better city if we're not increasing the services. So do you see any of these things as a problem as the acting director? Um, so the trees, yes, of, of course, more money means more work getting done. And there's certainly work out there that needs to be done. I don't disagree with you at all on that. Um, relating these sidewalks to the trees is a bit difficult um and i do have a plan in place for that that's more in the capital side of things um but yes the way we, we work on trees right now to be fiscally responsible is we go out for a monthly list using the state master price agreement and we send our list of trees to a handful of vendors and award that project based on the lowest the lowest quote um so we, we are trying to be responsible fiscally responsible with trimming trees um, but yes, of course, more money means more work will get done. But we can't trim more trees or be better at it if we don't have more money in the budget for it, correct? Um, may I through the chair? Yes. 
one of the things, and I'm just going to pick up where um, Director Matus was speaking. Last fiscal year, we were haphazard, and I can't say we were getting the best price for, per tree, whether it be removal or trimming. Um, and as as Director Matus stated, we would we were reactive in terms of how we approached up, you know one-offs so but further elaborating on what the director said we um will prioritize sending out bids of 25 at a time trying to be more economical we're trying to get a proactive approach with our inventory of trees that we can manage um what we're seeing is the cost per tree of our of our activity because we're doing it in bulk, bulk for no better term, has gone down. Um, so that will um, get more trees. Doing the bidding process, competing, you know, multiple different vendors is getting a per unit cost down somewhat. Um, could we do more with more money? Yes, but we need to get a system for the program for us. I, I appreciate that you're looking into reducing the cost and getting more work for our money. But for instance, I live on Cranston Street. It's a no through truck street. When a truck does have to come down the street to make a delivery, like say Cardi's or one of those, they cannot drive down the street without hitting trees. And I've been reporting this for two years. So I don't understand why we're not addressing something like that. They can A truck cannot drive down Cranston Street without hitting at least five trees on its way down. And through the chair to the council, I can't issue, I mean, address that one, but I can guarantee you that I'm going to go back in with the director and look at that one and make sure that the trees are actually on the list. So if if we can just double check that. Thank you. So I just overall think that, you know, we need, if we're going to improve the way we do things and we're going to preach that we're going to improve public services. We need to take a good look at how we're going to do that. And sometimes maybe it's going to take a little bit more money or it's going to take a readjustment of the budget. But I just think that we need to concentrate on road control, trees, sidewalks, and hiring a public works director. Not to say that, I know you said the other night, you're a little bit, got a lot on your plate right now. Okay, so we, we understand that. And, you're, and I know you're trying your best. And and it's nothing personal, but we do need a public works director. You know, with all the flooding we have and all the other infrastructure problems, bridges, you know, we do need another body in that office to get things done. Thank you very much. Yes, is this, and this question is on group 1300, Department of Public Works. I just want to keep us group by group if we can. One last question. Can you, um, Director, can you let me know um, how many cell phones are under communications in the Department of Public Works? I do not know that number off the top of my head. Okay. Um, can you send me that email as I, well, yeah. please? As how much? Yep, I can find And that how much per line are we paying? If we're paying per devices or per line and device? I think it's per device, but I'm not sure. So when we get it back to you, we'll get the number and the means of pay, of how we're charged. When you say per device, is device and line or device line? There's two separate things. That's I'm not sure. So when we get you the number, we'll get you how um, we're getting billed. Thank you. Um, and on that same note, um, just in general, just cell phones throughout the entire city. That would be great to know as well. Total yep. Thank you. <laughs> Councilwoman Renzulli. Thank you, Chairman. Um, Director, regarding the bait boxes, um, would those be reused if they were collected? Was it going to be refilled, right? If they just stay at someone's house because they never call to get them rebated? Are they essentially just someone throw them away or they might leave them there for the next year thinking someone's coming back and they didn't have to schedule. But if we went out there to pick them up because they didn't need them anymore, could they be reused somewhere else? 
Yes, um, it's very rare that we get a call to come pick up a bait box that someone no longer wants on their property. But yes, if someone makes that request, we will go there, pick it up. And if it's in the condition to be reused, we will reuse it. What I really mean is that in the past, and I may be incorrect on this, so please correct me if I am. I think that we were told that they went out on a schedule to rebate this calling to have it baited. I agree with council. I don't think that that was a thing before. I don't think people ever called to be rebated. It was on a schedule to my understanding. But if someone were to go out there on a schedule and the homeowner to say, I've, this is great. Although I don't have rats anymore. Wouldn't they take the box at that point? I don't think anyone's going to call and say, please come take my box. They don't even know they have to call to get rebated. Do you know what I'm saying? I'm not totally sure. I understand. Um, in the past, we were told that someone went out to rebate on a schedule. So say the schedule was in three months. You got baited in June. Somebody came yep. later in September. If they got there and they didn't need to actually rebate, they could then take the box, I'm assuming, and go reuse it somewhere else. Are we just leaving boxes around the city? I'm saying essentially, because if no one calls to get rebated and we don't just go back on our own, then there is empty box, bait boxes on people's property throughout the city. No, is that, I don't know how I can be more clear about what I'm saying. No, that, that does make sense. Um, I do not believe that we are checking bait boxes and if they're full and not being requested that we pull them off the property. I do not believe that is correct, um, but I could be mistaken. In, do you know if in the past we went out on a schedule and we didn't just sprinkle bait boxes around the city and then ne disregard them if no one ever called again? I do know the policies of that program have changed quite frequently. Um, as of the most recent policy I can speak to, it is that new baits are scheduled and as the rodent um, control coordinator is in that area. Again, he has a map of where all the bait boxes are. If he's on a street with a house next to it that has a bait box, he is looking at that bait box while he's in the area. So the rebates are not really scheduled. It's just when you're in the area, take a look at the boxes around you and do an assessment of them. Okay. So he is, so it's not only when someone calls, he is periodically checking checking and it's not every three months every six months it's when he's in that area he knows that the neighbor has one he goes to check it correct and does he ask are you all set with this do i'm going to take it or or no he just kind of quietly goes in the yard and checks the great box he just does what he has to do and leaves a note at the end when he leaves okay um thank you is there any appetite to have people going out on a i know he's one person so i don't know how realistic this is but to be going out on a schedule in certain areas, like there's certain neighborhoods that I know a whole two streets have called and they kind of want to get baited all at the same time. Because if the problem is at one person's house, then it's at everyone's house. And I've tried to assist them in all putting in their application at the same time, hoping that they would all get baited at the same time, because the problem is never going to be solved if one house gets baited in April and the, another one gets baited in June, the, the rest just go to a different yard. Like they don't die. We know that. So is there an appetite to change how we do this? Or, and I know you have enough to do. I'm not saying that it's necessarily for, for you to do, but from the top down, this program doesn't seem to be working as we want it to. And people will constantly complain. Yep, I think the proactive scheduled rebating is, is a great idea. Like you mentioned, it's obviously a staffing limitation. It's a quantity issue. Um, like we said, we get calls to install bait boxes, not so much to take them out. So the number of the quantity number is only going up and the staffing number is staying the same. Um, so that is the limitation. Um, unfortunately, he doesn't have enough time in the day to get to all these boxes. Um, so that that's the status of that. Is there, um, and I know that in areas where there's restaurants and we're trying to develop areas to have more restaurants, the, the surrounding neighborhoods seem to to me, I can't speak for everyone, have more complaints about rats. So I don't know if it has to come from a line item here, but perhaps in economic development, the restaurants could be educated that whatever is going on with their dumpsters or their grease trap is attracting rats. Like we can't solve the problem because it's just a cycle that keeps going around. And I know it's human behavior, but it's also businesses behavior. And I don't think that they, no one is doing it on purpose, but they just might literally not know. 
So is there, as it was said before, can we communicate about this program? I think when we get the complaints, people definitely learn that the program exists. So if we're not using advertising or marketing dollars for that, could at least be something go out to restaurants so they understand? I don't think they want to be contributing to this problem. Nobody wants to contribute to this problem, but they might just not know. Is that something that through economic development could perhaps happen, you think? There, there's, yeah, economic development, building inspections, um, a department dealing with um, enforcing proper use of private private property. Um, you hit the nail on the head. Um, if you have a, a bait box right next to an open dumpster, the rat's going to go to the open dumpster and not the bait box. Um, yes, that there is a learning curve that needs to be had with business owners, um, specifically business owners as well as residents um, that seem to think that the bait box is a catch-all solution when there is a personal responsibility that has to be taken as well. I have additionally, I'm gonna, then I'm going to stop with rats, but I have gotten calls that people are still throwing food outside on the ground, be it for birds or other kind of animals. Do you know if we are actively citing those people? We had a very extreme case in the past of this, but this is still happening. Or people with their bird feeders have five bird feeders in their yard. I, I don't know who to really go to. The inspections needs to go out there to cite people for leaving out food for animals. Yeah, I, I can't really speak for the citing and the enforcement because that's not a public works function. Um, so I'm not sure what the numbers are on how many people we've cited and what fines we've collected or anything. Do you know who it is that needs to go out to cite? It's just buildings, is it? I believe so. Okay, thank you. Okay, are there any other questions on expenses in group 1300? Moving on to group 1301. Are there any questions on group 1301 on the expenses, Division of Traffic Safety? Council Vice President. Thank you. Um, again, 1301, correct? Yes. Okay. Expenses. Expenses, yep. So 1301. So the 1301, I, I had a quick question, and that was on the extra vacation after 10 years. I know that was uh, in the proposed budget. It's been um, decreased. Is is that because we anticipate um, someone retiring, not being no longer with us after the 10-year mark line? I'm just trying to get a sense, um, the decrease for that. Um, through the chat to the counselor, this is one employee, and... I have to go back and look. I don't know if the the 2024 number is is too high, or the 1900 is is 1982 is in line with 23. It's just one employee, and that's extra vacation for one um, individual. So it's not multi individuals in this department. Okay, so that so and I did see that and that and so that again that remaining amount is just to the end of this fiscal year, not okay. and then it kicks up again. So on on the budget, I see that again. I'm not talking about the employee. We're talking about the, that just that position that line item just for. HR purposes, right? So submitted is 1982 for FY25. Um, I know the remaining balance currently now as of yesterday in that line is 123 uh, spot 71. Is that because that's just 
the remaining of vacation time. Yeah. Okay, got it. So you're saying 1982 should be the correct amount going we were the forward at least yes. for that person. Okay, for that employee uh, position. Thank you. Okay, any other questions on traffic safety? Okay. We are on to group 1302, Division of Highway. <laughs> and just as a reminder, we're we're handling expenses. We will go back to the revenues for these groups. We'll handle all the revenues together. Uh, Division of Highway, I do have uh, two questions, Director. One is on uh, line item 54201, snow removal equipment repair. Uh, this line item is level funded at the 75,000. Obviously, I understand the importance of making sure that all of our uh, equipment is is uh, functioning properly for, for, for the safety of our, our streets and, and uh, those working. The, the question I have is for, for 2024, when annualized through, through February, it was running at annualized 31,000. The, the average over five years was 52,000 and it's budgeted at 75,000. So I'm, I'm wondering, you know, there's, there's a significant gap between where it's running, what it's historically been and what it's budgeted at. And I'm wondering if that's a place for potential savings. Um, Mr. Chairman, I'm sorry. In when you were trying to annualize, were you using the February report, did you say? I was. What's the March report? Including, thank you, including encumbrances, they were at um, 63,000. So, um, that being said, it was a relatively, you know, light winter. So, again, we um, reduced, I should say, we carried forward the 75,000, um, not knowing. And the, depending on the severity of the snowstorm, um, in speaking with the people over in, in I'll call it central garage. Um, quickly, you can have, you know, major repairs. So, right now, for this, it's, suffice it to say, we're through this season. They're going to spend sixty-three thousand for this snow season at minimum, unless there's some other bills outstanding. But we—that's one line item we did not reduce. As you can see, we reduced other line items in this budget. I thank you and 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 I appreciate your uh, your correction on the on the annualization. I apologize, you know, it, we did get the March report out, you know, late yesterday afternoon, so I humbly apologize if we got it out sooner. I'll go to the the one right after that 54202 snow removal materials. Um I'm going to ask for what the I'm going to ask for the actual again through February it was running at 1567 oh Miss Chairman um 54202 including encumbrances um actual expenditures were 255 and is roughly $1600 worth of encumbrances one thing I asked um through the the director is to get the sand and salt back to the level we started the fiscal year. I don't know if that's occurred yet. So, so that two fifty seven, theoretically, 
would stay stagnant for the rest of the the fiscal year, with the exception of the the potential for a purchase to to bring back the the sand and salt level to what it was at the beginning of the year. Um, through to the chairman, yes, and if I can just make a further um, statement. So in terms of, you know, focusing on the balance of 92 that we have this year, um, when we go to close out the fiscal year, if you go down to the, the March report, you'll see that overall in snow, if you grouped all the line items, um, in closing this fiscal year, any additional um, snow materials, you know, will be transferred down to close out the the whatever line items and snow went over. So, just a a cautionary note. Thank you. Council Vice President. Uh, thank you. Um, I had a question in terms of um, there's there's eight vacancies currently in that department. Um, salary, I want to know if those eight vacancies are in fact included in that salary schedule for 2025. Um, I, I didn't know how long they've been vacant for. If you have that, that should be my first question, actually. And two, um, are they scheduled in FY25? Um, because if they are, um, the... Uh, obviously, they would not be part of the longevity, and I saw that your longevity went down. So that would be my next question, if there's been some. I think I know the answer to that, but I'd rather hear it from you. Um, the reason why that was decreased. Um, through the chair to the, the counselor, when you're speaking to vacancies, I assume you're on page 40. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, I'm sorry. Um, I assume you're referring to page 40 when you said eight vacancies. Um, I don't have a page number, okay. but in general, oh, um, oh on that okay. one, I oh, on that one is the so, uh, page. I'm looking at page seven one uh, page seventeen okay. it, in general. The 2.1 million dollars, which you see for the salary, is or all funded positions. So if you're looking at the salary schedule and you're looking down, when you say eight vacancies, those are eight positions which funding isn't um, incorporated into this budget. There are eight positions with no funding in this year's budget. So are we And you're absolutely right. And that's what I see on here. So yeah. because I'm double checking that yes. in fact, I'm understanding that correctly based on that numbers. And David came over to explain it. And I said, I, I understand that and I see right. that, okay. but I want to ask in general, I want to ask you, does that mean that we're not going to fill in those eight positions at all in FY25? And how will that impact? Because if we're not, I know that um, even the overtime went down by $5,000. Are we not so I, I guess my question is, we're not filling in eight positions. Overtime goes down. What impact does that have overall for the entire department of highway and maintenance? And I mean, those are eight unionized positions, correct? Um, yes, through the chair to the council, that's correct. So what 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 are we are we why are we filling them? I'm just curious. Um, they weren't through the chair to the council. Those positions were not funded in the current year's budget. We have no new positions that were not funded in FY24 
funded in FY25 throughout the um, throughout the city, with the exception of I think public safety, police and fire. Okay, um, this is not and, the only department where there's vacancies, it, but I'm going to stick to this. No, not funded vacancies. Right? So, funded. in terms of okay. if we authorize the position in the current year's budget, and that um, position funded in this year was carried over to next year. Am I saying it in such a fashion? It would have to be funded in FY24 to be funded in FY25. So they've been vacant for some time. I'm sorry, ma'am. Have the eight... Have the oh, eight I don't know. Been? Yes, they, they were vacant this year. And I don't know how far back they've been vacant. But yes, they're vacant currently okay. this year. Okay. Now, to, okay. if I may... Sure. Um, continuing on the overtime budget in crosswalking the March expenditures for 1302 through March. Um, overtime is, you know, nine months into the fiscal year, out 14,000. So that's in terms of trending um, what we're going to do with overtime. Um, that's, you know, how the 25 was derived. Okay. So. I mean, I, if we can decrease overtime, I'm, I'm, I'm happy with that. So as long as the work gets obviously done, exactly. right? No yeah. one wants to see overtime as a yeah. high number, but I, I, I just wanted to double check on that. So on the longevity, again, that's decreased. Is that because of retirements? Through the chair, I'm assuming it is. That's a calculation that's, you know, back to, Matter of fact, if I can just take two steps back, back to um, the library directors. When we build the budget, we do an extract in of our payroll database, and you know, back to Mister um, Mister Gosh's statement, the information that's in this budget, unfortunately, is only as good as the information in the system when we um, pull that extract. So right now, I will say with no uncertain terms, the longevity is pre uh, predicated on the employee base who gets longevity and it's a calculation. So this, I'm going to make a generalized statement that this is the longevity calculation for those employees um, in 1302 as of the day we pulled the extract. So that's a um, payroll calculation function. So did I, if I hope I answered your question. Is that through human resource payroll gets done through uh, yeah, personnel? The, the actual data going in um, the HR system, yes, is a, is a function between the communication between personnel and the controller's office. So. Okay. So, Current 24 in our budget, we had passed it for 27,388. Proposed is 22,971. Um, but out of, but it, it's been decreased. And the reason why I'm asking is because remaining it, we're at the negative. Aren't we over? Okay. If, can, if you could indulge me for one moment. Sure. And On longevity for the current fiscal year, year to date, we are over 2,600 in the current fiscal year. And, and, and so because it's longevity, which is part of their, their agreement, their CBA, isn't it? They, so why, I, why are we decreasing it? And that's what I'm trying to Okay, yeah, thank you. If you can indulge me for one moment.
In terms of the calculation for FY24, I can't speak to um, what happened in this current fiscal year. But I can state that the calculation of the um, FY25 budget is predicated on five individuals getting longevity. So the, the amount that appears in the, the budget is predicated on a headcount um, of certain employees getting longevity. So those fives add up to 22, but we're over, so. We're over for 24, but for our extract, 25 in the amount of 22,000 is the amount that should be budgeted. We're, okay, so I guess, are we anticipating retirement? Um, this is who was on the payroll when we did the extract. Someone could have, I don't know, like I said, I can get you a report on what the calculation was on the longevity for both the budget estimate and the year to date of the, no, the, so speaking to 24, the 27,386 compared to the year to date expense of 29,975. Are we on council? Mm -hmm. I mean, yep, yep, yep. the March, I can tell you who the five or there were five employees for FY25 that per our payroll system will have longevity um, that total 22,971. And so I can get you an answer on both of those, but the yeah. FY25 budget is predicated on five employees in the highway division being entitled to longevity. Okay. Yeah. Cause I'm, I'm just looking at the hospitalization and everything else. Some of it is decreasing. So some of it is not. So, okay. Yeah. That would be fine. If you can get that information. Thank you. Um, the other item that I had as a question um, is line uh, number Five four one zero one um, traffic light and blinkers. That's all city traffic light and blinkers. Um, but is that also to fix traffic signals as well? No, no, that's not including of uh, traffic signals. Okay, so the two. I know because I know fire alarm has traffic signals, and then this one has electrical. So that's why I was trying to distinguish. The two, okay. Um, that is all for the, on thirteen oh two for me. Thank you, Councilwoman Rental. Thank you, Chairman Director. Um, for the difference in the differential, is that the same explanation as you have for for longevity? Just based on um, through the chair to the councilor. The differential, in, that's the, um, in terms of the differential, that's not a calculation that comes out of payroll. That's operations when someone's doing additional work. But back to, I believe, what would be your, your question, why did it, it go down? Through the course of this fiscal year, um, through nine months, we've only spent fifty grand. So the sixty-five thousand is um, trying to get it in line with the actual spend for FY twenty-four. Okay, thank you. Um, as far as gasoline and oil, I see that staying the same as currently, but it looks like the actuals. We are already over if you include the encumbrances. So I'm am I reading that wrong? Um under the actuals, I see that it's already at a hundred and six percent used. Gas right now, which includes an encumbrance, 
through the fiscal year. So one thing we do is try to anticipate what we're going to use through the fiscal year. As you see, it's 30 grand. Um, we don't know if we're doing it. We just have an, a PO against it. We haven't spent that. Okay. So, so that, that's not something that needs to be paid. It's a, it's a, it's a PO that's like estimated. Is that how it's always done? I'm trying to, in terms of trying to project year end closing, I can't speak to what happened in previous years, but as we work with the, the larger departments, I would like estimated POs for everything. So as we go to close the fiscal year, we're not just doing direct pays and we get blindsided. So it's one of the um, changes this fiscal year that we've been um, really focusing on, on departments, most like, you no, know, the bigger three departments, police, fire, and DPW, trying to require, um, require that they do estimates POs, you know, for no better term, a blanket to get them through the the fiscal year so we can start preparing to close this fiscal year. So is that the same explanation for pavement marking materials? Encumbrance um, is a is an estimated PO. It's not actual POs that we just haven't paid. And I'm going to defer to mm -hmm. to Director uh, Matus. That's one we know we're going to spend, and the estimate for a hundred thousand dollars in for um, pavement marking materials um, was not an accurate FY twenty four budget request because there's additional work that. Um, Director Matus can speak to, and in terms of it being in the red for fifty grand, there's currently a transfer um, to cover that fifty. But in terms of the sixty-one thousand, um, I'm going to turn it over to to Director Matus to describe the what occurred in FY twenty-four. Yep, so this year we got a little bit more strategic with our roadway line striping. Um, it is revolving every three years. Um, the cycle goes from center line markings, edge of roadway markings, and then stencil markings, um, like the word only or the arrow, stuff like that. As well as every year we do our crosswalks over again in waterborne paint. This 150 is more, uh, 132, excuse me, is more accurate of what that strategy is going to actually need. Um, so in the past, like Director Zadella said, we put in a arbitrary amount of $100,000. We have vetted that expense over the last, over the current fiscal year. And we have realized that number for the edge of roadway markings, which will be a part of FY25, is closer to 132. Um, director, I'm not sure if I'm looking at the wrong line, but I see the expense for paveway marking materials, $100,000 in 2024. I also see it as $100,000 in 2025. That's what led me to ask the question in the first place. Yeah. If it was 130 in 2025, I would totally understand what you're saying. So excuse my ignorance in, in pavement marking, but it's 100 and 100. So if it needs to go up, it's not up. Okay. And in, in I think Director Matus was speaking to FY24 is the 132 for pavement markings. Yes. And he said that's, so that's more in a line of cycle going up. And then next year, we're not going to be doing the same work that we're doing this year, next year. So is that what you were saying, Director? Yeah. I, I understood it as this is. Now the trend of how you're going to be doing it, and that's how much it's going to cost. So then it should cost that in the next year. No, yeah, I I misspoke. I I apologize. So basically, what you're doing this year is not required to be done next year. Will be correct. Yes. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Uh, Chairman, thank you very much. Thank you, Councilwoman. Are there any other questions on expenses for thirteen oh two, Councilman Campapiano? 
I'll be brief. Thank you, Chairman. I'm going to circle back to the um, the snow removal materials. Um, is that something that's purchased on a case by case basis, or is it purchased up front before the season? Council, could could you repeat your question, please? The, the snow removal materials, or sand and salt, is that something that's purchased up front at the before, the beginning of the winter season, or is it done on a case by case basis? Through the chair. Um, what we do is use and replenish during the course of the year. Okay. So, so in what I was making reference to, to Councilor Donegan, um, in terms of replenishing our stock, um, it, it's an inventory. So in discussions with um, the director and the um Superintendent of Highways or what, whatever his title is. I'm sorry to, if I can't remember his title. What I said is, just suppose we started this fiscal year with 100 tons of salt. Right now, you know, during the course of the winter season, we've used salt. So now what I, you know, we've discussed is we return back to the level of 100 tons that we started last year, last fiscal year with, and whatever we're purchasing now is what we consume this year. So we get our inventory back to the level we started the fiscal year with, and accounting-wise, you know, you're back, you know, by replacing it to where we are, it's the actual amount that we use this fiscal year. We'll be represented in our financials. Okay, so we have some inventory. Yes, yes, sir. Thank you. Okay, seeing no further question regarding to group 1302, we'll move on to group 1303, Division of Engineering. Do any members of the committee have any questions? Seeing no questions on 1303, we're going to move on to group 1304, expenses on the division of building, <clears throat> division of building maintenance, excuse me. This is group 1304. Director, uh, line item 52008, electricity. It is being reduced by uh, $120,000 for the twenty fiscal year 25 proposal. Just wanted to get background on the, uh, the rationale for that. Um, Ms. Chairman, if you look at the the March report, um, the, and I just want to make sure I'm giving you the right line item. The year to date spend for electricity and is $212,000. Um, so I assume you're comparing it to the budget of, of 460. So we're seeing a trend going down. Um, that coupled with there are some um, 
net metering credits in some of these. So that's the reason, you know, we reduced the electricity budget for this division. When did those credits come Again, online? Again, it, it's they all came together in February in as I believe it was the um the council president asked for a summary of what we've seen to date. So those materialized. They hit the first bills in February. I'll I'll hold off further questions on that specific line item once we once that uh, report is documented to the council president. You know, going questions might come up. Um, the other question I have on this <clears throat> for this department is line item uh, re well, related to electrical supplies 54401 the uh, the historical average is 39,000 this is at 50,000 for the for the 25 fiscal year uh, what is it running at and it's running at 26,000 for this year Mr. Chairman, if I may, um, I can't recall why the ask went up, and I don't know if there's something they knew about. So, yeah, yeah. there was a reason why we went up on that line item, and for the life of me, I don't, do not recall if we knew something was was a, going to occur or, or a major project. I don't have an answer why that line item went up eight grand, and I apologize. Do any council president. Thank you, Councilman Donegan. Um, my questions, they may be paired, so I'm going to ask them together and then give you an opportunity to answer. Is previously it has um, come up before this council um, the issue of the need for repairs to city buildings and particularly the dire state of our fire department facilities. I understand that some improvements have been made along those lines. And my qu question one is the building maintenance in this department, does that then cover those expenses for those fire department buildings or be separate? And the second thing is... Um, relative to the vacant positions in this department. I see that there's a building maintenance person position that's vacant. Then there are some skilled laborer positions that are vacant, um, actually two building maintenance persons. And I'm just wondering about the cost advantage in terms of having those positions filled and keeping up with our building as opposed to outsourcing those types of repairs. Um, your first question was our approach to improvements to buildings. Um, yeah. You specifically mentioned the fire department, mm -hmm. but um, so if I could just address that. In this current year's capital budget, the FY24, council authorized $250,000 worth of building improvements um so the the improvements that are currently underway with the fire department are being conducted under that overarching blanket of 250,000 in addition to the fire department work um work that's being um some Limited work over at the police station is being done with that 250. 
We've also done the improvements this fiscal year in the city clerk's office. And um, there's probably a couple of other improvements being done under the auspices of building improvements. Um, to your request on um, utilizing outsourced um, contractors, there is certain work, and I think what's coming to mind is the work that had to be done in the, these chambers relative to electricity that was my understanding was beyond the scope of the capabilities of our um, employees in building maintenance. So there are certain work work that needs to be done that we have to outsource um, improvements. Yeah. Um, through the chair to the council, I hope I answered both of your questions. Yeah. Um Yes, I'm sure as best you could. I'm just still left with the question of whether or not anyone has actually looked very hard to determine, maybe not so hard, to determine, you know, if we had that skilled labor within our workforce, would we be saving a, oh, oh. quite a substantial sum oh. rather than hiring an outdoor vendor to do this work, particularly given the scope and scale of buildings that the city owns? Through the chair to the the um, council president, I know that, and I'll, I'll defer to um, Director Matus relative to the fire department in terms of the improvements done over there, but I do believe we first checked to see if we could do it in-house, the work that is being done. Um, but to your point, has a comprehensive cost benefit analysis been done on how we should um, proceed with buildings? Um, the direct answer is no, a cost benefit analysis has not been done. You want to talk about yeah, that? I can speak on the fire stations a bit. Um, yeah, when the project came to light, I walked through the station and determined what could be handled with in-house personnel and what would have to be outsourced. And that's exactly what we did. Um, it's a combination of city workers and outside help to get these projects done. Um, building maintenance replaced some some ceiling work, did some painting in these buildings to decrease the cost of outsourcing. Um, so it is something that we try to be fiscally responsible of and use the resources we have in-house as much as possible. But as Director Zadellis said, there are skill set limitations on some of the larger scale work. Thank you. I appreciate that. And just to be to be clear, um, I'm not limiting, you know, my questions in terms of the overall building maintenance to just the fire department. You know, again, I'm I'm talking about um, and and I apologize apologize if I wasn't clear on that. It's the overall um, assets that the city has in terms of buildings, and it just seems to me that that is worth investigating whether or not having someone um, that is has a particular skill set, for example, electrician um, on the payroll of the city so that we may save costs. That's all. Thanks. Yep, that exactly correct. That's not just fire department specific. That's all the projects that we do, um, whether it's out of that capital citywide building improvements or out of the operating budget. Um, also, just to follow up a little bit on the FY 25 capital budget, the city has a line item in there to assess fire stations and subsequent years do construction on, on that assessment. Um, part of that assessment will be what the city forces can tackle ourselves as well as, you know, what has to be outsourced. So we are on the same thought path on that. there any councilman thank you chairman um does the city have a an assessment of all the buildings or is it strictly reactionary there is no assessment of citywide buildings uh thank you councilwoman thank you um 
I'm going to ask this question every time I see it, and I think it's something that the council president has brought up in the past as well. This legal service fund, what is, and it's, it's not a ton of money, but if we have legal service funds in multiple departments when we already have solicitors and we do receive reports from them every month as to who we are paying for our outside legal, I am curious what this is for exactly. Is it the oh, same thing, labor? Um, that being said, do we have the right to know what attorneys it is and how much they are getting paid? And, and Councilor, if I, this is of the two contracts that I have not read to date, it's the two contracts which we will be negotiating with. Um, I can get you an answer, this calculation, but it's per specific individual individual um a hundred and four dollars so that everyone for pay. for each person on our payroll yes. we pay yes. a certain amount for that for the, because it's also i think it's running over is it running over this year um regardless i yeah. just i just think we we get a legal bill every month that has solicitors who they use outside who they are how much they cost per hour i would like to see that for every legal service fund yes yes not just particular to this fund to every department who's using outside legal work that's outside the scope is, of our legal I, I i believe and i don't have it in front of me but i'm pretty confident what you're referring to on that line item is employee yeah i'm sorry I believe it's a um, it's almost an insurance policy for employees. Should they get in trouble, they can hire uh, attorneys. Okay. So that's totally different than yeah. what I understand. And that it's separate it's fantastic. From it's legal part of their work. benefit. It's part that's of a, it's a benefit. Correct. As separate in the library department, that it is not a benefit. It's something else. Correct. Right? Okay. Separate and apart from the from the solicitor's office of the law department, that is almost an insurance policy. Someone gets whatever. Yes. Yep. Thank you. Okay, that's great. And I think that's fantastic. All those workers deserve to have yeah. coverage should they need yes. attorneys. But in any other, I'll just say it out loud now, I'm going to request in any other department where it's not exclusively a benefit to union employees who deserve all the benefits that are in their contracts. In every other instance, I would like to see who we are paying, how much they're getting paid an hour. So if they're getting paid $400 an hour to do the, the library's labor and we're only paying outside solicitors $150 an hour, we need to make that more equitable. And if I may, and I'm doing this from memory, in addition to the solicitor's office with outside labor council, we have it down in claims um, we have it in the library, and we have it in finance when we issue bonds. Those are the four instances um, where you'll see legal fees that I can recall. And um, relative to finance, that is um, part of the miscellaneous reports on the bonding side. Everything else is um, a line item within those those three criteria. Thank you, Director. Are there any other questions on Group 1304? Council Vice President. Thank you. I'll, I'll try to be quick. I know we have a long day on here. Just a quick note on that, though. I'm just wondering why, if there's any legal expenses or anything like that, maybe that should be a conversation in terms of being allocated and placing it maybe in the personnel department or so forth. I just don't think that it. It's a benefit. But it's a benefit of that. Yeah. An employee benefit, counsel. Are we talking right. about the, yeah. what? Yeah. Um, That's an expense that was negotiated, which we pay out per person for certain individuals. Only 100. for the building maintenance employees. Um, in this particular case, yes. Yeah. 
So um, we, we can talk about that later. But my my questions that I have is under paint and glass. Um, I have a question for paint and glass under plumbing and heating supplies and under city supplies. So um, under the paint and glass, I think the proposal is five currently this fiscal year. Um, we appropriated for 5,000 as well, but I'm looking at that and it looks like we're over. Well, Are we in, not anticipating going over next year given that we're having some projects throughout the city, hopefully taking place? No, through, through the chair to the council, the projects that we have going forward are going to be paid with with bond proceeds as authorized by council. So these would be one-offs if they're out um, doing maintenance work in a department. Um, again, this is, is um, something that looking forward to next fiscal year, we have to really scrutinize and make sure that um, the maintenance division, you know, will always address what they have to do, but it's going to be within the confines of the FY25 appropriation. So if we need to move money down from a different line item, they're going to live within their budget for FY25. Okay. Thanks for putting that in the record. I just want yep. to double check. Same thing with plumbing and heating supplies? Um. Yes, ma'am. Okay. And um, city supplies looks like we are uh, they're, they're under correct. Yes. Yep. So, like I said, living within your budget means, um, as an example, fourteen thousand in the black for city supplies as of the end of March. Um, that's going to you know if they don't use it, that's going to cover. They're paying glass and plumbing and heating supplies. Okay, so why not decrease city supplies in and, the proposed and, budget? And the one issue that I don't know, Councilor, is when the ten thousand yo, know, the ten thousand dollar encumbrance that was just made in or that you're seeing in the March report. Um, I don't know if that occurred this week as we're going to you no. Know, close year end, you know, get all your POs in. Yes, you know, could I have done it? Um, possibly, but I don't know when that purchase order was entered. Okay. So your the city supplies, are you anticipating using roughly some money to cover the paint and plumbing? Is that what you're saying? Yes, ma'am. I look at theirs because from year to year, one year they may be, you know, doing a big painting job. Um, plumbing supplies, I can tell you just in this building, um, they did a ton of work on removing sinks and offices this fiscal year that they're not going to have to do next year. So it varies from year to year. Okay. And the same applies for fuel as well. Okay. Through the chair to the counselor. Fuel, um, you'll see that we have reduced it down 110. In terms of this year, um, that's one that we don't have a, an encumbrance, but through March, They've spent seventy-one thousand. I can't tell you what period that is through. I'm going to assume that is at minimum through expenses through February, since they don't have the March bill. That was the reason we reduced it down to a hundred thousand. Okay, I'm just wondering why not allocate certain funding yeah. the way they are in terms of just later on, just in, in playing again, with transferring. Where sitting there the first budget pass was an extract of expenses through december when we started the budget um to present to the council april 1st it was from where they were expensed through december so now this is more real-time information from you know compared to when we were formulating the budget council 
Okay, got it. Um, and the city supplies also covers cell phones in this department, correct? Yes, ma'am. All right, thank you. And there's seven vacancies, as I noted as well. And um, the same applies as my questions from the previous department. The I'm divisions. going to assume uh, that there are seven vacant, unfunded positions, yes. All labor, all unionized, all from, um, from the union as well. If you can indulge me for a minute. Yes, um, through the chair to the counselor, the seven positions that are not funded, vacant funded positions, yes, ma'am, are all unionized. All right. It's a lot of departments without with a lot of vacancies. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. Are there any other questions on 1304? Seeing none, we will move on to 1305. This is care of trees. Councilman Ferry and then Councilman Campiano. Uh, I basically asked the questions that I wanted to ask about that previously and that we do acknowledge that we need to do a better job with the trees and we're not allocating any more money to do so. So it's just a disappointment in my eyes. Thank you. Councilman Campiano. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I don't see a, uh, is this 100% done uh, outsourced, the care of trees? Yes. Yes, correct. You know, tree warden is, he's not an employee of the city. He's also... He is an employee of the city, um, but he doesn't actually do the work to maintain the trees. He's under a different um, department. Yes, he's under the engineering salary schedule. Okay. And um, as far as the replacement of trees, um, we all know that the sidewalks are taking a big hit with these trees. Is thought given into a different species of tree that maybe not be as destructive as the ones that's put in the past? Yeah, absolutely. We've looked at different species of trees. Um, we're looking at doing some different studies throughout the city to optimize where to put certain trees. Um, that's something that we are working on right now. Um, but yes, that has been looked at and is continuing to be looked at. Thank you. Councilwoman Rinzuli. Thank you, Director. We did talk about this, I think, in a public works meeting once, but since it just came out with the trees and the sidewalks, we can, can you just reiterate for me, we cannot fix the trees in the sidewalk. We cannot pull out trees from the sidewalks, damaged sidewalks, which are making it lift, the sidewalk lift, if the tree is a healthy tree, correct? That is the current policy, yes. So in order for that not to be the case, you need what an ordinance saying that that is not the case anymore because we, I don't, it's like a catch 22. Like we have a healthy tree. I'm sorry, I'm yeah. sorry, Councilwoman. We've got to state a budget and not policy as to how the department is operating. If we can, please. Well, if, if we know if we're going to be able to take those trees up, it could increase the budget. So I'm, I'm, Curious about that. It is it is relevant to the budget because it involves the trees that might need to come out due to the lifting sidewalks. It's fine. I can ask you offline. I don't want to, to keep the attorney here any longer. Councilwoman, I, I just the attorney made his opinion known and he is our council attorney, so I just want us to be careful. Okay, I think we have to respect the opinion of our attorney. Great. Any other questions on 1305? Moving on to 1306, refuse removal and <clears throat> excuse me, refuse removal and disposal.
director, I have, excuse me, uh, both on uh, line item 54600 and 54602. On both, just looking to get and looking to get information, you know, kind of what's the rationale for the uh, the increase there. Um, I know the the budget auditor is crunching the annualizations because mine are outdated to last month. If if I may, um, on those two line items, there the amount that is depicted in the budget is the contractual amount for our contract with waste management. The one issue that I don't know um, is the timing of where we are with the payments in the March schedule. But I can say with no uncertain terms, um, the city had a, has a fixed contract with, with waste management. And those are the, the amounts depicted in the budget are the fixed costs per our contract. So the the hauling is contractual, right? But the tipping fees are are not correct. We don't get the uh, the display in the budget is how do I how do I say it? The display in the budget is what waste management gets assessed um, with the the waste coming out. Uh, or the calculated waste coming out of um, the city of Cranston. That's a fixed line item in our contract with waste management. Budget order. Uh, so we don't pay. Rhode uh, Island recovery through the chair to the council. No, we do not pay Rhode Island. So recovery. we pay our tipping fees directly to waste management. To waste management. Have we. Oh, if I can just anticipate, I think I know where you're going with the question. Um, have we ever gone and done an audit to see what our tipping fees are? Was that where you were? So uh, the question I'm asking, uh, I was in the industry for quite a long time, and the tipping fees are usually predicated at a reduced rate to cities and towns right from the state. Now, mm -hmm. I don't know currently if anything has changed. Nope. Um, and based on that, it was always an understanding with me that we would be paying land resource recovery directly the fees. Now, again, I'd have to go back and check. You're catching me a little off guard that we're paying waste manager directly. Did we strike a deal to use their transfer station in Cranston instead of sending the MSW directly to the landfill? But I thought as a city, we we're obligated to use the state agency. So I'm I just need a clarification because currently right now it's a little different than it's been for many years. Through the chair to the counselor um, or to the, the auditor, we are getting off. The calculation includes the, the set fee that you were referring to, the reduced fee. In their contract, um, it was a calculated fixed fee based on tonnage we're dumping is is that a yeah so um this is in the waste management's fixed fee contract does that fixed fee include roll off M msw i'm sorry MSW. does it msw is municipal solid waste and C and D would be considered construction and demolition debris. Okay. So is so, that a separate so in terms rate of for each? This is yes. So we have a segregated rate for MSW, and what no, is I that? think it's the same rate for both. I'm not sure. I can get that. If if we could get that. Yep. Because the C and D is usually different than MSW. Yep. All right. Uh, thank you. And if if um, could I get a copy if it's allowed through the chair of the invoice is paid monthly for the contractual hauling and the disposal cost. Yes. Thank you. Councilman Poplaskas. Thank you, Chair. I have a question on the amnesty program, the bulky waste. It's line item 54607. I see we 
budgeted fifty thousand dollars for that. Um, and I looked at the actuals and, you know, we're running under. So my question is in the actuals, does that, um, include the most recent, uh, amnesty program month and bulky waste pickup, or is this, has that not been calculated yet? That, I don't think it's been in this yet. No, I don't, through the chair to the counselor, the most current was when, sir? Yeah, I do, I do not believe this in, includes, this is as of March. I don't think we've been invoiced for that yet. Okay, yeah, because I'm curious if, if 50000 is going to be enough. I saw it was 70000 in 2023, but in the other years, it had run under, and, you know, it seems like it's a tough number to, to track. Um, so that's why I was curious if this actual had, um, I think it was March, was the last bulky waste pickup, if that was included. Um, thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councilman. Council Vice President. Um, quick question: the the waste hauler um, uh, contract that it, I think that was ex is expiring soon. So are those numbers um, in here, the number that we in, because that might go up. So I'm just wondering. I think okay. If I just if may, that's every issue, yeah. I want to say we definitely have one more year of the existing contract. I think 26. If my memory serves me. Correctly, Actually, yes, I thought twenty. Will be um, twenty five, I believe, is the last year of the okay. existing contract. Thank you. Are there any other questions on thirteen oh six, Councilman Wall? This is going to sound like a, a foolish question. I'm looking at refuge removal contain. Right? Is that the containers we put our garbage in our uh, recycling? Thing? Is that the line for that? There's nothing there. It's zeroed all the way across. The line is 54606. One second, Councilman. Yeah. Okay. Oh. The technology director is looking at his. Yeah. He's looking. I, 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 I don't know if we've ever used, you know, since. If you look at that line item, it's been zero. Yeah, I don't know what they use. The reason I ask is there's no explanation here. I just don't know what it is. Is it the containers, like, you know, the, the, the barrels? Is that what it is? The the containers are paid for out of line line item 54603. Other. Other. If we, I, I'm sorry. The roll off, the oh yeah, I'm sorry. Those are out of that line, um, not the yes. container. Okay, but we really are not sure exactly. It's been zero for so long. We really don't know what that line item is. What they used it for previously. Um. Okay. Back to. Um, Director Matuzzi's. If we're purchasing, the, the you're calling yeah the containers that is being paid out of. Five four six zero three, not line item. Five four six zero six. Why they have it in other, I don't know, but that's where that those costs are born. Thank you. Fair enough. I just so yeah. I, I don't. The question doesn't seem as foolish. No one no, really knows the answer. Anyway. You would you would assume that if we're buying those plastic, yes, yes, it would be in that line item. This is where we, you know, since I started, this is where they've been paying it out of. I and, don't know why. And the reason I ask that is because whatever years ago we got them, as we walk around, you know, a lot of people say, it's broken, how do we get a new one, and, this and the other. And, and, you know, it's not because they've abused it. it got, it's been on, going on the truck for 15 years, and they've been the, slamming the, them down. It's, yes. And I, it's kind of... Through the chair to the counselor, um, two things, yes. Some people, very few, have the original ones. But um, one thing I've learned a lot about containers is um, where they can, they, I'll refer to it as they Frankenstein them. They'll, you know, if you break your wheels, they'll come out with wheels. But there are a lot of containers, um, what I've observed since I've been here. Um, yeah, those things get broken. And we are purchasing, you know, we, the city, end up purchasing, as a matter of fact, 
we have an order route to purchase 420 containers as we speak. And is it a fair question? How much does, I mean, do we pay for the new ones or does, I, the way I understand it, the resident has to pay for their, when it's broken. Is that, um, is that not correct? A broken bin is replaced for, for free. If you want an additional bin, you have to, that's a charge. Thank you. Fair enough. I, we believe it enough. Thank you. Councilman Campbell. Sorry. Thank you, Chairman. Um, can you please explain line item five four six? No, five four. I lost it. Four six zero three eighty thousand legal disposal service for residents. What is that? I'm sorry, Council. It, it's. Yeah, under it says other. under other. It's eighty thousand dollars provides legal disposal service for city residents. It says five four six zero three. Counselor, I do me a favor. Um, can I get an answer on that? Because I can tell you six zero three is uh, the other is primarily what we're using for the containers. So that may be a uh, miss. In do you know? legal i mean it could be shredding i mean provides a legal disposal service for city residents i'm i'm not familiar with that description that legal description um we get your answer on yeah health. i mean there's umpteen pages so may i get a can we get a an answer on that answer? <laughs> thank you okay are there any other questions on 1306 seeing none We'll close that and move to 1307. <clears throat> uh, just for informational for the committee, um, we, as posted on the on the advertisement, we will be taking a, a break at 1130. And I, I do want to get through the revenues of these departments by then, possibly um, to the best of our ability, because I, I do know and want to be respectful of the director's time who had previously mentioned that he has somewhere somewhere important to be for a an important upcoming date so appreciate that thank you 1307 are there any questions on fleet management fleet maintenance excuse me council vice president thank you director are you foreseen or anticipating purchasing any any big items this FY25 year? Through the operating budget, no. Um, there are proposed vehicle purchases on the capital side, yes. On here, okay. Uh, that, that was my only question, Chairman. Thank you. Are there any other questions on 1307? Seeing none, that is closed. We will move. We will move on to the revenues for public works, highway, engineering, trees, refuse, refuse and removal, as well as fleet maintenance. So that's uh, 1300, 1302, 1303, 1305, Also, uh, Director, Group 1302, it's Division of Highway Maintenance, Highway Miscellaneous. I'm just going to talk. I know I know you've got to flip through some pages. Um, the What's the annualization for that for this year? Because at least in February, annualized, it was running at like 239,000. 
but through March, where are we at? Um, Mr. Chairman, through March, um, actual revenues received is are one hundred and sixty thousand. So that would annualize to two thirteen, correct? If if I assume you're straight lighting it. Um, the yeah, 160 no. divided by nine times 12, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so if we, so if it's, it's running at 213 for this year, is there no indication that it could remain? We, we might see higher than anticipated revenue in that same line item for the subsequent year. Oh, Mr. Chairman, um, we are seeing in this category, we are over revenues and without going back and rechecking it again. I mean, right now, I, you know, suffice it to say, we're 10 grand over budget as of March. Um, I want to get, I would prefer um, if we could go back and look at what materialized from March of last year through, I should say, April through June. But a straight line would be your two thirteen. Okay, I just, I mean, as you know, I, I try and, yep. but it, it, five hundred bucks it, here, three, you know, five thousand dollars here. If we could, if there's it, money there, I, you know, I want to make it, sure that we account for okay. it. Okay, in if I just may, counselor. In some instances, you you question, have I been aggressive on revenues? Um, it's an estimate as of a as of a certain day. On the flip side, if I'm um, conservative on a revenue, they you know it just you've got to you know take both into consideration. So it's all I'm just cautioning. Thank you, Director. Any other questions? Council Vice President. This is this is on thirteen hundred we're starting with, correct? Does it matter? Or Doesn't not? no. Okay. Thank you. Um Director, can you just refresh my memory? What is the street opening permanent permit revenues um under group thirteen hundred? Those are road opening permits. Is anytime a contractor wants to excavate in the public right of way, the road or the sidewalk, they have to take out a permit um, to do that work. Yep. Um, I think the chairman asked the other question that I had, and then the other one is sorry, did the chairman just ask about the public works highway miscellaneous 1302? Was that the one that he just Okay. Yes. Because I was okay. I got the answer. And then the other one was thirteen oh three engineering, uh, inspection fee subs division was five thousand. Um. Again, just trying to understand, um, why so low, in terms of what we're expecting as a revenue. I think last year we had allocated for third thirty thousand. Just uh, actually, I should look what how much we received to date. Oh, um, I just want to do the chair to the counselor. The the other date this year we are at forty nine hundred. So in terms of of reviewing all estimates. Um, the FY25 budget has us roughly at $5,000. So the, the FY25 estimate is more in line than what we're actually seeing for um, 
trending at Y24. Right. So I see what it's trending at. Is there a reason why it's so low? No, no. Or Inspection your fees. question is, is there a reason why 30000 was used in 24? Is that right? I've got to go back and say, what was the origin of the 30000 Because one of the things we had last year was DPW revenues, um, for no better term, being deposited in wrong accounts last year, which skewed our numbers and our projections last year. We've got that straightened out this year. So I am more comfortable with the $5,000 FY25 estimate based on what we're seeing. Okay, so they were allocated incorrectly, so that 30000 should have never really gone and in that. 30000 was probably you know something okay. we were seeing and we corrected during the course of FY24 because things were not classified properly. They weren't recognized in the right account when we were doing the budget, and we subsequently um, journalized them to where they should have been. Okay. That's something our audit general kind of caught? Um, I think we caught it, and we knew it when we were going after we started working with DPW. Okay. Yeah. We caught that, I believe, internally. That's all I have under revenue. Thank you. Are there any other questions on the revenue side? Seeing none, we are closed on revenue. Director, thank you for your time. Huh? We are. I am. We are going to take items out of order. I am trying to accommodate those that are here and that had reached out to to and expressed a necessity to get out of here. Um, so I am taking note of, of who's here and, and trying to get everyone out as soon as possible. Um, Director Malay, if you'd like to come forward, we're gonna we're gonna take legal next, or excuse me, solicitor Malay. Uh, 11, 11, I'm sorry, 1303, God, 1103, yeah, 1103 is my, de my department. Yeah. Yeah. We're doing, yeah. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. We're not skipping, not skipping law. law. Okay. Uh, are there, Solicitor, do you have any opening comments or you want me to just dive into? No, you can dive right in. Thank All you, right. Carlton. Um, I will. The one uh, one question I have is about outside legal services, and I do want to um, preface it by saying that your department has done a good job. You know, since looking back to twenty nineteen, that was at over nine hundred and twenty thousand uh, dollars. You know, the twenty twenty three actuals for three hundred thirty five thousand dollars. So it's come down quite a bit, and so even in the question I'm about to ask, you guys have done a a good job since thank you since when you took over uh 
at least going through February, the trend was looking over budget uh, and just want to know why. Is there are there any particular cases or 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 no. um, contracts that are causing that? Uh, there was one. Um, thank you, Councilman Donegan and members of the committee. Thank you for having me. Uh, there was one outside expense um, of a of a case that uh, the city had been involved in under the prior administration uh, that the city uh, withdrew from. Uh, participating in that in that lawsuit and upon removing ourselves from the lawsuit uh there was a final bill that was submitted and paid out uh that bill went out in excess of thirty thousand dollars and that kind of shows how that uh that number has gone up uh sub substantially i thought going into uh the fiscal year this year and even through the first part of it i was right on target uh, for where I want to be or even below that has thrown us off a little bit. I do have, uh, two months left, two and a half months left in the fiscal budget, but I, I am confident I can keep it as close to budgeted last year. Uh, and in response to, uh, the mayor and the administration and trying to, uh, slim our budget this year, uh, going forward, um, um my department is, is going to do its best to try and and reduce our outside legal fees in the next fiscal year, uh, just like every other department in, in the city. And it is, for lack of a better term, a roll of the dice because anything can happen as we are self-insured and, and everyone here knows that, uh, but knock on wood, uh, and with the grace of God, I hopefully be able to get that done in the next fiscal year. Thank you, Director. Are there any other questions from the committee on the uh, Group 1103 Department of Law? Council President. Yeah. Um, thank you, Solicitor Malay. Uh, just simple question in terms of the number of solicitors on on um, under your um, management, and if that's changing in the next fiscal year. That's it. I have to do a quick calculation. Hold on one second. No, that's quite all right. I have myself, and I believe there uh, four. Five, five other uh, individuals on a uh, inside solicitor's budget and everything else is contracted on the outside. If I'm doing my math correctly. And I believe I believe I've done that correctly. So I have this five of us within the solicitor's office. And then everything is uh, everything that we cannot handle is is handled out, outside. If if you um, think that's different, I mean to um, you know uh, catch you not not prepared. Not prepared at all. for that. Yeah. So if you want to, if if it ends up being different, just let me know. Yes. Right. Thank you, yeah. Council President. Are there any other questions regarding the Department of Law? We will close that group. Thank you, Councilman. Thank you, members of the committee. Next, we'll do uh, Department of Inspections. Morning, council members. Morning, director. Thank you for being with us. I appreciate your patience. All right, we are in group 1111, Department of Inspections. We'll handle the expense side. We'll go to the revenue side after that. <clears throat> are there any questions on the expenses?
Super. Do any members have any questions? I know I still see some people flipping through that giant tome, um, but I want to give everyone an opportunity if there's anyone that has a question present. Uh, the li line item uh, 52810, American Disabilities Act expense, that... Um, at least through February was trending well under budget. And yet the proposal is to increase it by $5,000. So just wanted to, um, why? Why is that going up? Um, if you can just indulge me for a minute. Um, that was one, and I just want to verify what I'm saying that yeah, that's it. It should wash out council, both the revenue and the expense. And I don't remember what we were looking at. Um, when we adjusted that one. So that's when it gets paid out. Yeah, so I don't remember. It has no net effect on the budget. It's similar to the, it's similar to um, the change we're make, going to make for the clerk's office. So if, if I may, it's in and out. It We collect yeah. it. So, and I, quite honestly, when we changed it, I don't remember what I was looking at in terms of everything that's hap you know, happening in the construction industry. Okay, but it's 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 neutral to the budget. Yes. It's the it's in and out. So that's correct. Okay. Does anyone else have any other questions? The, the um the oh, sorry the only other question I have is is um, and I know I had sent it in an email earlier. Uh, to Director Zadellis, the how is funding? Never mind. I'm sorry. On the expense side, I'm getting ahead of myself. Any other questions on expenses, Councilman Ferry, and then Council Vice President. Yes, uh, Director Rodeo. Just a couple of quick questions. Um, are, are you understaffed right now? The volume of work has changed a little, so we, we're getting Correct, yeah. by with the staff that we have. Sorry? The volume of work has slowed down quite a bit with the construction industry, so as of now, we're, we're good. Okay, so do you feel that this current budget uh, gives you the ability to uh, complete the work that you need to do to satisfy the calls that we get? I do. Thank you. Are there, uh, Council Vice, did you have a question on the expense? I yeah, well, thank you. Um, I think Council uh, Member Ferry already um, uh, asked that question, and my apologies. Um, in terms of hearing your response, that was, are you foreseeing filling that? Like, is 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 the fact that you have, I think, two vacancies, is that not impacting any of the work that the inspections department um, does on a day to day operations for the city? If we get behind, uh, we have um, part-time inspectors to come in per diem, per inspection. Uh, so for inspectors on vacation or 
uh, an influx of work, we have avenues to uh, to to get a project out. And was that actually the case at all this current fiscal year, where you actually brought in some part time help to assist? Uh, I'm sorry, I didn't. Was that, the, to... was that at all the case during this current fiscal year that we're in that you brought in any part time help? Well, we do have some uh, part time help in there, correct? It's I don't know, sir. It's your budget. I'm just trying to ask you: Do you have part time help there? I um. Do you? If if I may. In terms of accessing part-time help, um, this year's budget, 24, and um, next year's budget, we did not actually budget an appropriation for part-time help. In terms of this fiscal year, um, the director was allowed to access five grand worth of fact filling positions. If you go to the March report that went out, um, $5,000 in part-time help, which we will have to close when we close this fiscal year, we will have to get that back down to zero with either a departmental transfer in this department so right now we've allowed him to access part-time help and he's expended $5,500 roughly this fiscal year. Next year's budget, we do not have an appropriation for part-time help similar to what we had in 24. And again, um, we will, you know, if, if need be, we will, will permit the director to get a outside part-time uh, inspector to come in to do the work. Okay. Is that outside inspector, the two vacancies that are unionized? Um, no, you're hiring, you're not, they're not full-time employees counsel. He's getting, um, is it a retiree that you bring in? When you get the part-time part help, right. it, um, could you explain how you- It's just a vendor that comes in per diem, per inspection. It's just, I think uh, 30 or 35 dollars per inspection. I'm not sure what the cost is. But but are they I guess my question is um because it's zero on here, there's two vacancies on here um in your department. When you we seek part-time help um because there's a zero dollar line item on our current and proposed, we seek a per diem of which is it doing ultimately the work of which that vacant position would do if that vacant position was filled? Yes. Okay. It, 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 I don't want to get out of line here, but I'm just wondering if that's any type of union issue yeah. at that point. But okay. Um, so do you anticipate using part-time help next year? Well, we have our staff that takes vacations. So somebody needs to fill in that spot if we take a week off. So the... Okay. So you're saying yes. Yes. So why are we adding funding into that part-time help? Um, that was not a request this year that, to the best of my recollection. Um, and as you said, the industry has changed. So just because someone takes a vacation doesn't mean you're automatically going to call in somebody part-time. Is that a, would that be a correct? That would be, yes. It, it, there's not a one-to-one -one correlation, counselor. That, I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm going to stop you right there. Like, yeah. I, I, I don't think there's any transparency going on right here. And I'm, I'm really asking, and director, I, with all the respect to the finance director, but I would like to ask yeah, the actual absolutely. director himself. Yeah, do, you, do you do you foresee having part time help coming in in FY twenty five? Yes, I do. For a day, for two days, whatever it takes to get the workload satisfied for that particular week. Or yes, did you request to the administration some additional dollars for that part time help? I don't recall. I don't know. Okay, great answer. Yeah. Um. But you've used it this current fiscal year, and you have in the past as well. Having a what? Have did you did you request? Did you use part time help in FY twenty three as well last year? Yes. 
Be, okay. And, and yep. If I just may, in FY23, um, and I don't know when, it was $1,700 for the entire fiscal year. Um, this year, I like as I stated, it was $5,400 um, through March. FY twenty five, there was no request, and we didn't we didn't fund um, part time help in FY twenty five council. Right. So, so I'm just wondering. Suddenly, as I see that number, that seventeen eighty five and twenty three, and the previous fiscal years before, and then this current year, there was zero, but we still use part time help. The director's telling us that he's going to be utilizing part time help again. So it seems like we're waiting for fourth quarter transfers to transfer funding in areas where we put zero to offset those numbers. Um, and I, ju I just have a little bit of of, of concern to that, and I don't want to speak on behalf of anything in terms of internal personnel or unionized, but I, I would double check that. But other than that, um, in terms of your extra vacation after 10 years, same question applies here for other departments that I had, or, or the other department I had asked earlier, that's a decrease. Is, and I know that in FY23, it was relatively very close, 24 that in the current fiscal year we're in, we went up a little bit. Is it because again, that number has, um, we projected more than what we should have for FY24. Sorry, I'll give you time, sir. Yeah. Through the chair, um, to the counselor, the the extra vacation is for for employees that are entitled to extra vacation, and it's at their current their current level of of pay. So, um, in terms of this year's budget, I can say that the amount in the budget is consistent with what we have in the the system i don't know the six thousand ninety four dollars of which we have and if i could just crosswalk it only paid looks like fifty four hundred if i'm going across one two three four thousand dollars this fiscal year um, the six thousand um, dollars I'm gonna assume was high. I'm just, yeah, last year, but I can say that for our payroll records, the five thousand seven hundred fifty three dollars is the extra vacation for the employees who would be entitled to it. Okay. Thank you for that. That is, um, that's what I have. That's all the questions I have on the expenditures. I have questions on revenue, but I'll hold off on that. Thank you, Council Vice President. Um, I, I do have, I, I want to piggyback off the, the question from the Vice President <clears throat> regarding the part-time help. And it's, it's not... I guess the question is, because it's come up in other areas of the budget, is to legal, if we, if the city council as the legislative branch allocates zero dollars for paper copies or part-time help, we're saying we're not giving you any money to do that. Now, that's a really small kind of, not insignificant, but you know, hypothetically, if they were spending money on a project that we didn't fund, the same rationale would apply. So if we don't provide funding for something, what gives them the authority to spend money for that, spend money on that, unless it's, you know, some sort of emergency? Generally speaking, your 
your intent as a as a legislative body is to make an appropriation for a variety of line items within a department budget. That does not mean that during the course of the year, that department or the administration could could choose to take that overall gross appropriation and reappropriate under the gross number, perhaps in different categories. There are certain aspects of that reappropriation within the gross number that would necessarily involve council approval, such as a change in staffing, such as FTEs and things of that nature. But much like, you know, you could budget for 10 full-time positions, and at some point in the year, in the hiring process, the administration says, gee, we're not going to make our budget. We're not going to fill these two positions, right? Um, they do have some discretion within their budget. It... Thank you, Director. Oh, thank you, Solicitor. Are there any other questions on the expenses side? Councilwoman Renzulli. Thank you, Chair. Um, Director, I see that your overtime is going down significantly as well. And while it's not trending to hit the $10,000 that was adopted in the 2024 budget, it, it is, I think, four or $5,000 that you've used so far. So if you are going to have less part-time help and less money budgeted for overtime, do you, do you literally just not see there being work to be done that you need those that funding in order to, to get the work done? I, and I'm sorry if that's kind of a repeat question, but I think it's applicable based on you're, you're losing a little bit of money to pay to pay staff to work out, outside of their hours or to cover a vacation. So I, I just don't understand how exactly. The overtime expenses? Uh, the overtime expenses are used for the zoning and building boards where uh, one of the to go and participate in those boards. The board, right. Okay. So I think that zoning boards are pretty, their the meetings are pretty consistent number a year. So again, I'm not sure how, if, if we're, we're trending higher than you're being allotted, how people are going to go to those meetings. Well, the other part of that is uh, the car hit the house, called by the fire department. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Director Rodeo. We can't hear you. I know I can't. Um, okay. Uh, some of the other expenses for the overtime are related to fire department calls, uh, car hit a building, fires. Uh, we're sent, so we can't determine a dollar amount on that. Of, of course not. You can't anticipate when there's going to be an after hour, you know, emergency that an inspector needs to go to. However, if currently you have at least spent, I don't know, $6,000 through March in the current year, and that includes going to zoning board meetings. We at least know zoning boards are consistent, and then we know there are going to be some after hours issues. So with $1,500, I, I don't even, I guess you'd have to tell me how much it costs to go to a zoning board meeting to make sure we're at least covering that, because that's something we can estimate. Correct. It doesn't matter to me who answers. Whoever knows answer. Well, yes, we can calculate that and get you. I don't have it on my hands right now, but yes, we did reduce overtime in this budget. Okay. I just I just want to make sure, as um, Councilwoman Vargas, Council President Vargas, you know, astutely said that if the work is going to need to be done and we're just not budgeting for it because we plan to to move it around, it's going to get done anyway. So the money's going to have to come from somewhere. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, there's that. And then just my final question is, I know that we pay rent or like we lease the, the building that you're out of, correct? Correct, Director? Do you, it's not a city building. And I know CBDG is there too as well. However, I, maybe I just missed it. So correct me if I'm wrong. I don't see the rent anywhere in the two departments. Is it somewhere else? Uh Community development, yeah. 
because when John got up, his way by. Huh? I know we have the rent covered, Councilor. Yeah. yeah. So let me get back to where it is in the budget, and I do apologize. Okay, you. great. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. And oh, Director, a couple of years ago, I know we funded a half a like a half a year's worth, or or some kind of position for an inspector because you need an inspector. I know that because I put I put in for this specifically by moving money. That you're still utilizing that, right? These two vacant positions. Yeah, this is, uh, unfunded vacant positions. Is that, is that 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 we gave money for that year? Do you know? It was you needed some you needed more inspectors. We moved money to fund it for half of a year, and I'm just curious if you're still operating with the same amount of staff or when there were layoffs. Did you get a layoff as well or no? Everybody I'll say that again. Have you been working with the same amount of staff for the last couple of years? You haven't it hasn't it, been reduced. It hasn't changed. Okay. Thank you. Are there any other questions on the expense side? Seeing none, we're going to move on to revenue. Again, this is group 1111. One question I have is on line item 42176, solar permits. Uh, looking just how how is this calculated? Um, the revenue itself, yeah. director. The dollar value of the permits. That that number fluctuates in value. No. The volume, the volume oh. fluctuates. The the actual calculation doesn't. So this, uh, why is this, why do you think this is going down $75,000 for the next fiscal year? Um, through the chair to the counselor, in terms of a conservative estimate, as I said the other day, the Re Inflation Reduction Act, um, when I was doing revenues in terms of, of trending, um, this fiscal year through um, March, we're at 145, which is roughly a little less than 50% of the, the 275. Um, if you annualize that, um, it's, it's lower than the projection you in someone's hitting an, an adding machine. Um, but I think it's going to be higher than just nine twelfths because of um the inflation reduction act and all the incentives they're throwing at green energy. So I think it's in line with what we're seeing to date this fiscal year with additional potential solar projects. Are there are there any projects coming on board that you are aware of already? Uh, yeah. This is not just a big solar project. This is solar on houses. So any any house can be getting it with the incentives being provided. It's somewhat. Um, like Mr. Gashi was saying, you know, the programs that they're going to avail themselves with the energy efficiencies, those type of programs will be available to households as well. So um, am I aware of any in FY25 um, people who are going to put solar on their roofs? No, I don't. But it, it just, you know, you see it happening all the time, sir. Thank you. I'm going to budget order to Mayo. I know you have a, a comment or a question. Based on the trending of construction going down, um, it looks like the budget 
uh, revenue estimate was increased from previous year. Um, I'm wondering if there's any impending bigger projects that are going to help you reach your goal, or do you think that that might be a little lofty? For this fiscal year till for the budget uh, budget 25 fiscal year 25 we have a couple of good sized projects i don't know if they'll be permitted by that date but there's a couple of good sized storage uh, yards being uh, brought in for, for approvals some are in the planning stages in in through the chair um getting back to the budget hearing of of um, Commissioner Pizzullo with what's in the hopper from you know what I see in planning commission. Um, there's a couple of residential, larger residential subdivisions, um, apartment comp uh, complexes that are um, in the pipeline that, depending on you know where interest rates go, could go to construction in FY25. So yes, the the um permits going up a um, little less than 10% is not unrealistic. And in the other thing that we're going into, um, as you're aware, that construction, the construction cycle is starting up for the the second half of the fiscal year, you know, now until June. So that coupled with continuing into next fiscal year with some of the bigger projects we have going um, is why those revenue line items were increased. So which just to confirm on that, so going forward, you're trending right now annualized straight lined at 1,160,000. So basically on what you're saying is the projects that are coming now will cover this, but, will actually increase yeah. it to the 1.4 million? Um, yeah, so if I just may, um, Auto de Mayo, as you're aware, you know, some people will apply during the winter, but um, applications for construction usually start, and I'll let, um, you know, the director speak, you know, speak to this, but March through the, the end of the fiscal year, you know, during the winter months that people are doing planning for construction coming into the spring months. So that's why the the simple straight line doesn't work. You've got to wait it compared to the same period last year and projecting it out, you know, March to March. So it, it's just a different methodology, but you'll see permits pick up now that the, the weather's out and you can actually do construction. It's been my experience. Thank you. Councilman Campiano. Thank you, Chairman. Um, under revenue line number 42172, administrative penalties, it went up 10 times, so uh, 2,500 to 25,000. Is there an explanation? Uh, sorry, oh, it's been corrected? Yeah. Who's um, 42172? Administrative penalties. Okay, and, and counselor, if, if I could refer back to to the March summary we just sent out to you, sir. It yeah. So it's through this fiscal year you can see um, where we are. You know, thirty three thousand. I didn't know enough about the you know the administrative penalties if that was a one time, but the twenty five thousand in line. Um, matter of fact, it's below what we've already seen this fiscal year to date. Thank you. Councilwoman Renzo. Thank you. To um. To that end, I, I'm just wondering, so administrative penalties is working without permits and late filing fees. Director, to discover that people are working without permits, 
Is that because you have inspectors going out there and finding people working without permits? Correct. Okay, so to that point, I think that it sounds like we're saying construction is going to be less busy on one side and that you don't need the help to do the work that corresponds with that. But on the other side, with the revenues going up, we're saying that in construction is going to go back up. So I, in order to do the work that we're making the revenue from, it seems as though to me, you would need the staff in order to do that work to collect this revenue. So you can tell me if I'm just a very confused council person or how that makes sense. Yeah, for next fiscal year, for certain the new fiscal year, uh, there's going to be more construction. I think more commercial construction, the bigger jobs. So uh, you you might need more help in order to do that, no? Yeah. At least part time or overtime. We manage with the staff we have. I I really do. Um, could I use somebody? It make it easier on the rest of us. Yeah, but we're getting the work out, and I don't. What happens during the slow cycles where we don't need help? Okay, so on my understanding correctly, you might need more help. You might, and that is why we might have to to draw from from different lines to get that to get that money. I just want you to be able to, if we're saying that for you to collect this administrative penalties, I think that it's fantastic if we have inspectors who are going out there and finding people for doing work without permits. I think that that is excellent and that is their job, and I. I hope for them to do that. I just hope that they have the time in order to do that. Otherwise, things are not, we're not going to be able to bring in this money if we don't have the staff to go out to collect it. Do you know what I'm saying? Yes, I do. And, I, and I'm and i I'm complimenting that if you have people who can go out and do this, and if you can do more with less, fantastic. I just don't want to be overzealous in, in what we're trying to do. And if you tell me that with the staff that you have, you can go out and hit these revenue numbers, then more power to you, you're doing more with less. And that's what we're trying to do, I think, in this kind of a budget. But I just, on one side, it seemed like we're saying construction is slow. And on the other side, we're saying construction is picking up. We have to pick a lane, essentially, I think. That's just a comment from me. Thank you. Over the past four years, we've had quite a boom in construction, and I've done it with the staff, same staff that we have right now. I don't anticipate anything more than two or three years ago when we kind of hit a high. So I think I think we can do it with the staff I have. I do. Okay, excellent. All right, thank you, Director. I appreciate that. The on the administrative penalties. What what is that? Could you just walk me through that? Like what what is it? And usually it's uh, people working without a permit. They find uh, that's pretty much it. Do you think the for fiscal year twenty four? Do you think the the increase is it due to has anything changed uh, where the the department is enforcing it more, um, or is there just one big? No, I don't think it's changed. Whatever the, the volume is, but, the, but there, to your knowledge, was there one significant fine that is resulting in that number being higher than normal? I think it's a misposting. That's, okay. that's a lot. Of money. So then it belongs to me. Yeah, Council, in terms of what is part of that $33,000, um, the, the director's not sure, and he's wondering if it was an actual misposting. So if we can get you back to the specifics on the $33,000. Yep. Because if it is a misposting, then that would ask, yes. then the estimate is wrong. Okay, thank you. If. Yeah, but it's basically. Yep. We can, I, yes, sir. Thank you. Council Vice President. Thank you. Um, Chairman, what line, what number was that one? Um, uh, that was line item 42172. Okay. 
Sorry, thank you. Um, I just had a quick. Thank you. Just want to cross out and uh, ask the same question other council members have asked. Um, director, um, and the budget that's that's currently proposed, um, both on the revenue side, we obviously see revenues coming in, and, and on the expenditure side, um, we go from obviously salary to education programs and all the other expenses. Um, as director of this department, are there any any softwares, any type of ambitious goals that you would like to see this department do that pertains to budget request um, at all? Um, I, I don't know right now, and, and maybe you can answer this for me, what software we're currently using to track any type of code enforcement, um, any penalties, any any type of housing permits, just in general. What, what do you use right now? Maybe I'll start off with that question. We have a uh, software, uh, um, vision, what's the name of the software? OpenGov, uh, that we pay an annual fee to, and that goes all our, all our building permits, electrical permits, plumbing permits, gas piping permits. Uh, it covers everything and it tracks everything. Okay, and where in your budget is that, fall under? Uh, software. Well, it's, it's in I think all these expenses. I didn't see it under. Yeah, it, it's on here. I want through the chair that the counselor is not a specific line item software, mm -hmm. um, but it's. It, it's OpenGov is the provider, it's view permit. And um, I wanna, and I'm, I believe he does it out of departmental expenses. I think it's $17,000 a year for our, you know, our law subscription. And the fire department. Yes, yeah, but yeah, that's all. Only up on yes. it too. Okay, um, sorry, that's on the expense yeah, side. No software um, licensing. It's in, I believe it's in his departmental expense line I'm item. Just saying, okay. So that is, sorry, I'm, what is it, 111, where are we? We probably have this one. Yep, it's under the 36. Uh, last year was 30. Okay, so that, so it comes out of that $30,000 proposed budget? The office, I believe it's the office is where he charges it to. Yes, that's correct. Okay. And so uh, extract from that the number of permits that we have for depending on um, whether it's housing, building, things along those lines? Uh, yeah. Inspection reports. It does it all from start to finish. You can apply online. Uh, you don't need to come to the office, which I think that's why our permits pick up a little more, too, because the inconvenience of coming to our office to get a permit. Is is that fairly new? How long have we had that system? Uh, five years I've been here. It was five years? Yeah. Really? Okay. Okay. Um, all right. And, and, and in terms of it kind of, my question kind of goes in terms of just salary and everything else. And that'll be my last question. Are we backlogged at all? And any of the permits requests that are coming in? Oh, excuse is me. there any backlogs at all in terms of um, permits being, you know, submitted? And then also in terms of the staffing going out um, to the roads and, and, and if there's any requests coming in from council members right now, um, so for example, someone calls me and says, you, there's a nuisance property. Um, it's visible. We can see it. We put in a request through the mayor's office, um, chain of command, and it goes down to you in, in most cases i actually copy you in emails what is the time frame is, is that we backlogged in terms for, of for an inspection speaking, or? for in, yeah for even a nuisance property that gets reported uh, usually the next day or two days at most it's okay by, by state law i think it's 48 hours to make an inspection that gets logged into the open gov system that you have that's or is does that get logged in into that system that you're purchasing, or is that an Excel yes, spreadsheet? Yes, that's part of the software. They they can write in the inspection that they made an inspection, it passed, it failed, 
Uh, if you're the applicant, you have access to that information. Okay, so there's no there, but do you do you still use? They used to use an Excel spreadsheet to log in all of this, and I was and at one point I was asking about software potential that would be an impact on the department in terms of the budget. Do you do you still use Excel spreadsheets to actually? No, for the for the permitting process, no. For nuisance, you do. Who said? For nuisance properties or anything that we call in. Sorry, I, I have bad hearing. Yeah, no, and I'm sorry. May I? Um, she's not. The council's not asking about permits. She's asking about if a nuisance call comes in. Do you use view permit for that? Excel spreadsheet for prop property maintenance issues. Excel spreadsheet. Okay. Okay. Got it. Thank you. So there's no other software that you foresee purchasing at all to ease. No. Uh, the whole Excel spreadsheet. That's where I was really trying to land at. Okay. There's you're yeah. not foreseeing any software purchases at all within the next fiscal year. No, I don't. To improve any type of efficiencies in your department. No. Okay. Thank you. Are there any other questions on the revenue side? Okay, seeing none, thank you, Director. Thank you, guys. At this time, the committee is going to um, take a break. I'm gonna call a recess from 12.06 until 12.35.
At this time, I'm going to call the Special Finance Committee back to order from our recess. Uh, first, I do want to open up the floor before we start with Parks and Rec. I do want to open up the floor for any public comment from members of the public that wish to speak on any docketed items. Is there anyone is there anyone in person who wishes to speak? Seeing none, Tom, is there anyone online? There is no public comment. Tom, there was no one online, correct? Correct. There's no public comment. Okay. Uh, we are now on group 1400, Department of Parks and Recreation. Do any members of the committee have any questions? On, yes, on expenditures. Um, thank you, Budget Order. The, the one question I have um, to start... Line item 55002, maintenance of trees, shrubs. Nothing has been nothing was expended in 2021, nothing in 2022, and nothing in 2023. So I'm wondering, was there a administrative change where the money for that is or the maintenance of trees and shrubs are being paid out of a, a, a different line item? Uh, yes, I, I believe they were coming out of 06 or 07. Um, we did move some of that money. Um, and I use that just for emergencies, anything that we can handle on the bike path or in people's yards. Um, you know, it's a, it's a contract that we use. Um, but we started to use that again recently. The maintenance of trees and shrubs. Correct. Has has anything been has it been used at all this year? Because it, it wasn't, but I believe we started using it again. How how much do you think I know it's it's here at twenty five thousand, which you know, that's twenty five thousand dollars more than zero, which has been spent for the past, you know. 2.7 years so I, i'm just wondering what right you know, uh, you know why 25,000 so that could have been coming out of uh, a state mpa or a blanket i'll have to check Five five oh seven. i see northeast tree was paid so that is i mean that could be going that would help my 506 507 if we were paying trees with that account why it hasn't been done, I'll have to look into it. My administrative assistant. Council President. Thank you, Councilman Donegan. Welcome, uh, Director Tasaglia. Um, I had a question for you relative to um, the maintenance and upkeep of the uh, parks under your watch as well in terms of when there is um, trimming of bushes, you know, cutting of grass, things like that. Are you doing that in your department? Number one is the first question. How much of that is being outsourced is the next question. And where is or are those expenditures properly identified in your budget we, we try to do as much excuse me as much work as we can on the park unfortunately sometimes cleanups are required 
Um, and the best and easiest way to do it is to have uh, you know, con someone go in. Um, in doing the numbers, it would cost us a little under $500 with a form and, and, and two laborers to do a park, playground, or school, which is kind of hard during the day if kids are there. Um, so on Saturdays, we will bring group in, either a couple different landscapers that do it for basically the same price or less on the cleanup. So are any of your staff doing the tree cutting? If, and... if, if we're able to, the stuff that is way above the ground that we, we can't do, um, certain machines we don't have to get certain limbs and branches. I know on the bike path, if it's easy enough, easy enough for us to cut and remove, we do it. <clears throat> or we have to call professionals. What would you say the percentage of that is done in-house and what percentage uh, of, um... of, of just the overall cutting clean, you know, cleaning is done outside. What's the percentage? A lot of outside? tree cutting is being done. And I can be honest with you. It's some, a lot of homeowners, I couldn't give you a number. 50% in-house, 50%. I would, I would say 50%, okay. so maybe a little 50, more. 50? Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> with all of those activities? Uh, or is, in other words, you've mentioned different categories yeah. of the cl cleanups, tree trimming on the bike path, the field, bush trimming we try to do school. everything you could just let me finish there's different categories you've described mm -hmm. so if you're the department head if you know that you know what we exclusively give the tree trimming to outside vendors then tell me that like i i, I just want to have an understanding of what it is that your department actually does yep. with respect to that type of upkeep and how much of that is going outside well, I mean, I couldn't give you a percentage right now. I would have to look at some old records and tell you, but I would say it's over 50% that we do work on the bike path when we are able. Then what about the baseball fields and football fields and soccer fields and all those fields? We do all that ourselves. Okay. Does that include the school playgrounds as well? The school playgrounds, we also service. You don't use outside vendors for any of those? Occasionally, we do to go in on the weekends. And like I said, it's probably about the same amount of money if we were to have a foreman and two laborers on, which is required. How often do you use outside vendors to do the, the school grounds and fields? It's seasonal, and I can check and give you numbers on that. I see. You don't know. Okay. Right now. Um, and where on the budget, Director Zadellis or Mr. Tisaglia, is it on the expenditures? Through the chair to the council, if it's for um, something such as trees on the bike path, it would be under that line item. Um, otherwise, I um, have to defer to um, to the director. It, it he doesn't have many line items, so outside contractors primarily. Um, would be the the shrubs and the trees and shrubs would be in that line item, which he has not spent. So the one that's saying zero yes, is where it would be used. Um, okay. And I, see, I'm sorry. I'm going to interrupt. I have a problem with that because I know for a fact that you've used vendors to do those things. So where I, is I it did. I date? did say we did use vendors. I mean, I'd have to go back and tell you the dates of them. We have all those records on when vendors are being used. Please get that information. We'll do. And Director Zadellis, I, yes, I would like for you to follow up. Thank you. Councilman Ferry. Thank you, uh, Chairman. Uh, I just want to um, ask you a general question because, I mean, you get at least one complaint a week from my constituents about either the bike path or playgrounds, okay? And Bain Track, you know, and it seems to be that the trend is that we're always reacting to these calls to either 
straighten things out or clean things up or empty garbage or whatever. And we're not being proactive to try and prevent them from happening again. And nothing personal. It's just that this, this is just a continuous thing. Constantly with the garbage, constantly with the garbage obeying the bike path and in the parks. So it seems to me that if we want to do a better job at these things, we need to have some kind of a plan to do so. I see no increases here anywhere that would help you do your job better. And I know a lot of people that work for your department, and I know that some of them work really hard and they just can't seem to keep up with what they're doing because you don't have enough help or you don't have enough equipment. So do you feel that this budget helps you do a better job to satisfy the constituents of this city that have been complaining to all of us on a continual basis year round? So do you feel that this budget helps you do a better job at, at serving the constituents of this city? I wouldn't say it does, Councilman, but, um, you know, we're here to try to work and work with what we have with. I'm not going to lie to you. I would take more money in just about every line item. I mean, I would love to have more to spend. Um, but getting back to the garbage and the proactiveness and the complaints, there are times, Councilman, where I'll go down and I know my guys went to a spot. We have a sheet, a daily worksheet that my foreman gave out to the gentleman, and they go and do it. So I'm just using a hypothetical situation, but it has happened. If you go down to Smith Street, say, um, use a bigger park, let's say Doric, and I empty the garbage at Doric, and it happens more so at the uh, Bain track than anywhere. We empty it. I know we went there. And then an hour or two later, there's garbage in there. And so when I go to sometimes hand remove it, because my guys are gone at 3 o'clock, and I've done that on numerous occasions, there's garbage bags from domestic households. And this is, this is a lot of what you see at those tracks. And, you know, a lot of people put their home garbage there. And again, maybe it, we could do a public message to people to be more conscious about taking their private kitchen bags to our playgrounds and parks. Right. So, but this is a continuous thing and it's not going to go away. Correct. So we have to be more proactive. So for instance, I told, I saw a little uh, writing that you had had about how a group of years walk on Tuesdays, Tuesdays, Wednesdays, Fridays, was it? Or Thursdays. I told I, I told my workers, I said, you know, they, they're walking, there's a group there. We have to make sure we're cleaning up after them. So just be conscious of those days so the track is nice. We're on a schedule. Um, we try to keep up as best we can. Uh, my point is that I don't think that this budget gives you any chance to make an improvement on the complaints that we're getting. If, so if, that's my question, yes or no? I would say yes, unless, uh, you know, we find a way to have, you know, the people in the neighborhoods help us. But you're right. You're and, and there's no no effort here on, to fill any of the vacancies you have? Um, I did want to. I had, um, <clears throat> you know, there was, uh, had a retiree this year. I had a retiree last year that never was filled. Uh, Lenny Lake, a heavy equipment operator, left, I believe, March 8th or 10th. I'm looking to fill that. Did you request to have these positions filled? I did. When you were when negotiating your budget with the administration? Yes. I, and I also requested, there are two young gentlemen on my staff that are eager to continue. They are what you call light equipment operators. They don't have to go and cut a field, get on a Kubota, get on, and they're not big machines. They got CDLs because of their classification. So we're looking to do an in-grade, excuse me, testing. They've done it before. It's a private group. They go up to Plainfield Street. They test the gentleman, and then one of those people could be elevated to that spot. So what does that do? It gives us flexibility. The guys have never refused. But at some times, I mean, now and then, you can, you can see it where they could. I'm not driving the Kubota. It's out of my class. It's, uh, it's out of my class. Uh, the fact of moving one or two of them up, if I could move two of them to take those two existing heavy equipment operators that were lost, um, that would be beneficial. Now we don't have to move as many people around. Thank you.
Councilman Wall. So just looking at it, and you guys saw three vacancies, right, in, in this budget. Now that's zeroed out in the budget, right? Can't hear you. There's, uh, can you hear me now? Yes. I looked. I looked in the back of the budget. There are three vacancies in your department. Is that correct? I believe two. No, two. No, is there a third? I don't, I'm sorry. He's talking about the yeah. zero funded. Yeah. I yes. believe the uh -huh. the positions um, the director was speaking to. One was a recent retiree. Mm -hmm. That position is funded in this budget because the person was on the books when we took the extract. So, so I think I I think I follow you. So the yeah. three that I saw in the budget are ones that were not funded in the current fiscal year's budget, twenty four. Mm -hmm. Those were not funded in the twenty five. But I believe um, the director was speaking to a person who retired in March. Correct. That is funded. His position is in there at that individual's rate. So those, yeah, those aren't so, zeroed yeah. out in the budget. Where you're so talking. what he was saying is if he brings somebody in at a lower amount, there is, for all intents and purposes, because the incumbent left at a higher salary, the new person's coming in new, one would say that the salary line is overstated, the difference between the higher person. So... I, I really am requesting that we do it from inside our own department. They've done it in the past. Our department, Public Works, Highway. Um, again, it's an incentive thing to give those people the work morale that someday they could be the foreman if they progress up. So the and it, so that position is still in the budget. So you're gonna you're looking to hire actively looking for someone to do that. Well, I, I I must have lost a position last year. I had put in for when a Tom Connell retired. That wasn't funded. I'm not sure if that's uh, that wasn't filled. I'm not sure if that was funded and is still funded. I don't see it. So that would probably be a zero. In, um, I most likely go back and double if check you take it, a look at. Just, I can right. say with no answer in terms of the position was filled and. I should say, filled and funded or even funded in last year. We carried forward all of those. So in terms of the position that the director was talking about, I'm going to have to go back and look at okay. that individual. And the other three are positions that we do, do not intend to fill. In, in this budget, um, no, they're not funded in the FY25 budget. No, sorry. Thank you. Council Vice President Lonnie. Thank you. Um, so because that person, that 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 position is now vacant, the recent retirement, um, is that going to impact longevity at all? Um, Delta me for one minute. Sure. I go to my longevity page. What's your gentleman? Uh, Lenny Lake. And, and I'm going to make a generalized comment while I'm trying to get to the right page. With longevity, and it's a person who retired, I would assume it would cascade down to to um, longevity as well. Unless someone else bid within the within the city of which from a different longevity. department, right? Because you don't have to be in park and rec. So you can be in the same Refresh, union right. and bid for, for it a as transfer, well. which. Uh, theoretically, the two directors would work that out and agree on it. If they agreed on it, that's fine. You don't want to uh, take away from one department. But, just want to make sure. But that all... longevity could be different because it all depends Correct. on the number of years. Yep. To answer your question directly, the retiree is longevity. So um, depending on how they build it, it would affect not only the salary, but longevity. Okay. Got it. However, Councilwoman, what the plan I have would be to, and the department has, is to elevate one of our existing guys there. Um, and there's only one spot open that was supposed, you know, there was two from the previous year, but that doesn't look to be in the in, in the. What, what was the title of that position? The one that you don't think. Uh, he it was the same. It was a. Uh, uh, Labor equipment operator, okay. Tom Connell. So, in other words, if these two kids were 
eligible and pass the test, I could push them up. If I'm only one spot, I mean, obviously high person on the test, um, seniority would rank on who would go to that spot. The luxury of it is if they both pass, he will remain in his, his same spot, light equipment operator, but will still be able to drive the machines that he's not uh, in contract to drive right now. And there's nothing big because they have CDLs. It's just the way it's set up. They're okay. cutters. And if, for instance, if we have two, three grass cutters and these kids that are, uh, they don't come in, we're, you know, we're not going to get the grass cut, you know? So we, we got to make sure that, that those guys do, you know, they cut fields once, sometimes twice a week. Okay. Thank you. So um, in terms of your part-time help, that's going to be decreased because you don't it, it seemed like we didn't use as much this year. I recently transferred some money over. Um, it's a tad low, but I think we can we can get by with that. It's generally all stuff for past story. <clears throat> I I use no part time help at the uh, blue room, you know, at the stadium. My crew um, in the past they used to allow us to have summer help, which I hear before me was quite beneficial for weed whackers, trash picker uppers. You put a formula with a crew of kids. And you employ some kids for the summer, but that has not happened since I've taken uh, my position. Okay, thank you. Um, the playground attendant wages that went up to twenty. Yeah, I mean we were looking at supervisors and um, just the cost of the minimum wage. Okay, so this is obviously the playground camp, correct? Yes, that's what that's. Okay. exclusively used for so how many did we how many um or i and, and and i saw the announcement that we're we're um currently recruiting starting at 16 years old might, and yeah, for the great, how week. many did we have last and so how many new are we adding numbers to that or I is it strictly so. on because we're increasing wages increasing wages hold on one second because it looks like we're roughly now at Went over by three, right? Roughly three thousand. Yep, almost four. So the summer camp breakdown that my assistant and myself came up with. It was a camp assistant director. It's a twenty dollar an hour wage, and and there are two of them. There's supervisors at sixteen dollars an hour. There are eight of them. And there are counselors. And this year, I still believe it's at 14 until January. Is that correct? Well, I the don't... rate, the hourly rate, I, it hasn't gone up yet, but there's anticipation. Some some minimal upgrades, but nothing to the 15. Right. So I didn't figure out this. There is 55 of those basically counselors, the younger, you know, the 16s and 17 year olds. Um, six weeks. And there's numbers on each one of those lines that I just read off. So we're not increasing the number of campers? Oh, yes. As well? Yes, they are increasing. Okay. Yep. Which means that we're adding more counselors to accommodate what the workload. Yeah. Okay. So what's the number of campers we're allowing for this year? Um, I'd have to check with Scott and Regina. They take most of the registrations. They're looking to increase it at every site. Okay. Um, and so then... Council Vice President, can I... Absolutely. Um, how many hours per week are, are all those positions? Uh, it's 40 hours a week for the camp assistant director and the supervisor and 37 and a half uh, for the uh, young counselors. We have to give them health insurance for the, during that time. Seasonal, I don't believe. Oh, they're seasonal. Yeah. They're considered yeah. seasonal. Yeah. Please. All right. Because um, that's other director coming in as part-time is mm -hmm. but it's seasonal okay got it thank you for that um the other one was the I don't know trees that was already added uh recreation expenses went up a little bit as well they did um things prices of things just go up um i'm looking at that is just about everything we buy in the fields. Um, so I just thought an increase was justified. Uh, 
Got it. Um, do you, are you paying any cell phones right now? Uh, I, I believe myself and my general foreman have city cell phones. Okay, thank you. And that I think comes... there's just two I could check. I don't believe my assistant or my administrator is on that plan. I think it's just the two of us. Okay, uh, I'm just trying to figure out which line item. I think I saw it in here. Uh... Oh, it's... Um... Under recreation expenses. Okay, so that's under that line item. Um, and so then your stadium and field supplies that went slightly up, but yeah, I I put in for the same amount for both line items. Um, again, we... um. Yeah, I mean, they, they came back with that number and that's what we're here for to try to uh, see what's if comfortable. I, if I may, through the sure. chair, uh, back to, if you just look at your March report, uh, encumbered 37,000 uh, actual expenditures rated. So this year it's trending. If, all the encumbrances are paid um, to be 140000 you know, again, the, the mayor's budget upped it by grand in terms of, <coughs> excuse me, stadium and field supplies for usage. So it's, it's a little higher, assuming that there's no additional expenses um, beyond the 37,000. So it's in line or a little higher than the, the current trend as we speak. Okay, thank you. Um, I would assume, uh, clearly we, we can see the zeros across for pool preventative maintenance and pool supplies. Uh, however, Councilwoman, I, I did, did want to say that um, I did put in for something for that just for prep and cleaning stuff. We had been down there a few times getting stuff out of there, my own department. Um, and again, that- At the pool? Yes. Yes, you know, they were going to start the demo and I guess the person doing the demo or the, they could not, they had to have everything out of there that we wanted to capture. Some stuff I, I, I captured. Um, there's a, still a few other items we could probably use around the stadium that I can go get. They're not, um, but we did throw out some damaged stuff and contaminated stuff from the uh, pool. So you said you're adding some funding towards the pool. So no, no, I, I, it's it's showing up as a zero. But you did add, you did request. I requested ten. I was going to use that for the splash pad prep, which okay. I could probably capture that from, um, you know, oh six or oh seven if I had to. It's not much the second year round. It shouldn't be as expensive as opening up as the first year. But there is some cost in getting that thing going. Okay. So, so do you, will you have the funds for that splash pad and those pools? I, not those pools, but the pool, if it opens following that's, year. You know, I'm going to have to try to find that from the 06 or 07. I mean, it, I don't know if I would need the whole 10,000, um, uh, but it would be good to, to use to in case, you know, there's a malfunction or there's a something we have to put into it. All right. If you use it from the 06, I mean, you're still at the negative. I know we this current year was yes. 135, and that's and so that's why they proposed it for that the extra thirty thousand dollars. So that's where you would be taking it out of. That's is that one of the reasons why it's higher. If I just may speak first to the splash pads, right now they're still under warranty. So in terms of you know getting it opened. If there is a problem, be responsible. the contractor is <laughs> responsible. Now to, I'm sorry, your second question was cost for the pool. Um, that right now, we don't know what the operational cost of the pool will be. And once again, um, with the exception of, of operational um, costs, the pool um if you're speaking to 
the, the um, one that's soon to be under construction, um, that will um, be taken out of his, his one of the, whether it be the most likely the recreational expenses line item, if, if we need to cover costs. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. Are there any other questions? Councilwoman Renzulli. Thank you, Chairman. Director, as far as office supplies and expenses, it, it looks to be normal as far as on the expenditure side, mm -hmm. but on the on what you're asking for, but in the actuals, is this like a thirty-one thousand dollar charge? Is it possible that something like the trees got taken from there? I, I don't know what you would have bought for office supplies for thirty-one grand. No, that's I, I, I am unfamiliar with that change. I mean, I see it, but it was explained to me. I just need it. No, no. She's saying, so I'm just saying that maybe out. that's where right. I mean someone would have to see if a tree company was charged under office supplies, but that would make sense. I'm just saying if obviously you have to look at it, but I just noticed that that seemed weird. Okay. Um, then also as far as overtime, last year you were appropriated one hundred sixty thousand dollars. It's not running over, but knowing that a lot of sports with overtime take place in the spring. What what line item? Uh, Looking at uh, overtime. Yeah, I had put in for extra, and I just came back. You know, this is what it was presented to me for us to amend and debate. Okay, so, but as, I mean, what I mean to say is, it would be great if you could only use one hundred thirty-five thousand dollars in overtime. But as we both know, if there are games and there are things mm -hmm. that we need people at. Which it seems like you're going to hit the 160. Yeah, and and again, Councilwoman, I don't call in overtime unless it's mandated. Very rarely, I think two or three times this year, I took in a crew to do the Alzheimer's Center um, uh, on a Saturday. Um, you know, that's overtime. There might have been one or two other times where four-hour shifts I took them in, but mostly that sports fields. It's for games. Yeah, right? you have. Um, to, I mean, if there's lights. Yeah, not People so much for the that. baseball. The baseball, the overtime is only Saturday, Sundays are holidays, the dragon lines in the morning. But the turf field between soccer, lacrosse, football, and believe it or not, even baseball will use it when the fields are wet. They can take some ground balls. We, you know, have to get that ready and we're there. So it's just an expense. Yeah, I am in complete agreement with you. I'm saying it looks like you will spend... I think you will spend more than $135,000 in overtime, even if you yeah. don't want to. I think right. you have to because right. the games will will call for that. So how, I would say to Mr. Zidelis, where will that come from if we're only, it, it's one thing to say, we would like you to live within your means. Right. But when they can literally not live within their means because there are sporting events that yeah. don't allow them to live within their means, how do, what, Director Zidelis, what do you propose for that? Um, <laughs> Through the chair to the counselor, I can't speak at this particular point in time as to the mandatory overtime that you're saying for, or as the director was saying. Um, I will say to make this overall budget, both generally and department specific, um, that we increase other line items in the one, I don't want to call it, discretionary but overtime was the one that we had to ratchet back in the in the process of balancing the budget um if i can get back in terms of how many hours are required for what you would refer to as mandatory overtime if i get back a report on that one it would be greatly appreciated okay fantastic i would appreciate that and the legal services fund is that similar to yes any other department where it's a benefit um, not anything yeah, with legal the the payroll expense that we have to um, appropriate out or pay out. That's correct. And um, this is kind of teetering on the revenues, but it, it is a question about expenditures, Chair. If, Director, is it possible that when we are having mandatory overtime in order to make up for that, can someone who's being charged 
an outside source charged to use a field, can they be charged extra in order to cover our expenses? Because it, you know, if it's one hundred fifty dollars to use a field, yeah, but we're, they're using it at night, and that causes us to spend X amount of additional costs. Can they incur those costs? I, I don't incur any of the lights into it. What I do is it's a general two hundred dollar an hour for teams that rent from out, you know, that aren't consistent renters. I have a couple groups, a Wefa soccer, a Bruno soccer. They use it four nights a week, winter into the spring, fall. Um, we locked in at 150, and it makes sense if they're using it that much per hour. CLCF has a different rate. Um, you know, and that's a topic we're gonna discuss with them. And they're 125. So what people gotta realize on a on a two-hour, I had some numbers here if I can find them. On a two-hour shift, for instance, if I have one person on. He's a twenty-seven dollar an hour guy. The overtime, it's say whatever. We, we'll make a little money on two hour gig. But if there's a big event and there's people coming in the stands, and I got to put two laborers on, that requires a foreman be with him for that for that gig. And that's when we're paying a lot of money for these guys to be there. If four hour shifts is not good. Eight hours, we'll, we'll grab a little money. And there are nine hour days. That football goes from eight in the morning till seven at night sometimes on Sundays between two Edgewood group and the CLCF group. So it's a taxing day. We sometimes break the shifts up in two fours if we can. Um, that's how we try to handle it. But I, I see what you're saying. And um, it, just a question do the schools pay for anything to use our the schools field. do not pay for anything with okay. turf usage um, or baseball fields and I'm not sure I was here previous to the agreement but I it has something to do with um, uh, God no I'm sorry about that that's the gym usage that that they accommodate buses for us for our camp and when we need it I'm sorry but no the schools Cranston East High School uh, West lacrosse any turf activity is just like it, as though it belongs to we kind of trade we yeah. barter yep. things to make it even yeah. and, and, and again um you know it's not the worst thing that they're playing there okay. all right thank you are any other questions on the expense side seeing not to revenue council vice president he had asked some of the questions uh regarding the Parks and Rec receipt that I was going to ask. Um, this is proposed to go up fifty thousand dollars for this year. the The price for camp it's that's flat, right? That's staying the same, or is uh, that going up? I believe they they may have gone slightly up, Councilman. I could I could text you that tonight if I I'm, I have it at the office. I think it slightly did go up. So that. That's going up slightly, and um, correct. If when you send those numbers over, if you could send uh, the price from twenty twenty three mm -hmm. versus the price of twenty four, and an estimate of how many were there in twenty three compared to how many you expect for twenty twenty four. Okay, uh, what I have for projections, I'm going on twenty three here. There was. Uh, about two hundred twenty thousand was projected two thirteen, and then there's always late deposits that come in after camp starts. Uh, but most of them are captured before July one. Uh, but there are some that we still have to capture after that. From my from my numbers that I put together, uh, with the groups that we rent to, and. Uh, money coming in from the camp, I expect about 365,000 to come in. It could increase because we're still gonna rent more fields between now and July. And like I said, the camp deposits will trickle in. There's some late, there's always a, a couple checks that bounce here or there. So we chase that also. At, I'm sorry, the, the, the 365 number, mm -hmm. that was for the current fiscal year or? This is what I'm projecting from what Again, from what I rent out and what I expect to get, for instance, Rima baseball, 10,000, Wefa soccer, 20,000, Scorpion soccer, 10,000. So those are all the go-to outside groups that I um, rent to. And then there are isolated rentals for football and soccer that will 
capture some money, and I'm anticipating looking on what they used last year, what they have booked for this year to come up with these numbers. Thank you, director. So it, it so three sixty five is the projection. That's that's my projection. Yes, the but again, budget that should increase. That okay, should increase because the um because the budget for fiscal year twenty five is four hundred and twenty five thousand. So that's a sixty thousand dollar increase. And if I may bring on that, go ahead. And through the um, Mr. Chairman, going back to as you said, the twenty. 23 budget. Um, the 426, um, I believe it will come in higher this fiscal year once we open up with the rentals and um, the the camp fees. So I, the 25 budget's more analogous with the actual we've seen in 23 with the increased fees in the increased participation so that's an estimate on my part okay but so so what i'm hearing then is the the 425 is based on the 2023 actuals but at the same time that we're expecting more people to be signed up for the camp this year and at an increased price so that 425 number could very well actually go above that through the chair um yes it could but right now, the 425 is with all those factors. Yes, um, the estimate right now. That's correct, sir. So, um, Director Salia, if if like I said, if if you could, and I'll I'll send you an email that mm -hmm. way, you kind of know exactly what I'm looking for. Just the price for camp for this for the summer of 23 per person versus the, and I know it's varied based on you know one one kid two kids how many weeks yep. first 24 but also the um you know the estimate how many you uh, enrolled you expect for 23 first 24 because the difference there could be you know 5 10 whatever it might be could be increased councilwoman Renzuli. thank you um is is camp captured backwards like will we capture the 2024 camp in this budget because we start collecting fees now and the and the actuals to date look right. kind of low yes so what the director zadellis was saying next year with a i'm not saying substantial increase i don't want to scare anyone but with the planned increase increases now it's, it's always, we're recognizing activity, they, it's prepaid for every year. Mm -hmm. We can assume and that. So when we talk about the, I'm sorry, when we talk about the 26 budget, again, it, it's, yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, but with the actuals of now, as of before June 30th, are we going to collect the camp for this summer, which is at an increased rate and at an increased number of children, are we going to hit this 375 yeah, they, or are we going to go over it? I think we're going to go over it because of the timing. Okay. Next year's. And then next year's. Well, but we don't anticipate. Year after. What, I, what I mean to say is we don't anticipate raising the price again next year. Okay. For the FY, what you're saying is for the FY 26 Right now, this year's right. Well, I think we'll hit the. It will be more than three seventy five because of what you know, the director said. As we go to look at next year's budget, I don't know what we're doing with rates, but it you know you were talking about at least what we're getting this year. Yeah. So okay. it's all right. A timing issue. Okay. Thank you. Councilman Ferry. I'll, I'll be really quick. Uh, this is more of a, an expense question. It's been announced that we're going to be running this program this summer to like bus people to other pools or something. Where is that on the expenses? It, you've already asked the question, so I'm going to let it happen. But if everyone could just please try and stick to. I'm sorry. It's okay. 
of recreation expenses, 5506, 5507. Now, if, yes. Do you know what the number is to do that? Specific, sorry, the Councilman? specific amount of money that's allocated to do that. I I kind of roughly figured about, well, I have, there's two different programs that are going to happen, okay? And the park view pool is one that I, I have numbers on if, in, in fact, that is going to take place, which the mayor wants. Um, if it's a five-day week, you know, that's going to be about $8,600 for the six-week program. If it's a three-day week, it would be about 59. So within 10, I can do something with that. As far as the YMCA goes, I've met with them and been meeting again with them on Tuesday with the Paul McCauley, a new executive director. When I met with the director of the facility, she wasn't mirroring the same program they gave us two years ago with free Cranston residents. So I'm trying to capture that back. She gave me other options about 16 kids at a time for open swim, uh, $150 an hour. In meeting with the other executive director, I'm trying to see as partners of the YMCA, we share parking lots, we do a lot together, what they can do for us there. So there will be some Absolutely. type of a program because we, we basically promised this. Yes. And also, we have touched base with the Ripter and leaving in from in front of City Hall um, will be, I'm trying to see what time it leaves. I want to say 940 back home at 440 or 340 from City Hall. Again, that comes with a slight fee, though. And you have enough money allocated to do all this? Um, yeah. 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 Okay. Thank you very much. From City Hall to where? Uh, one of the South County beaches, I want to say... Uh, Sorry, are you talking about the Ripta beaches? Yes. Oh, okay. Thank you, Chair. Are there any other questions on the on the revenue side, Council Vice President? It's not on the revenue side, but I just didn't know if this question on the budget pertains to CDBG or it pertains to Park and Rec, because there's there's money that is proposed to be used from the budget. Um, and I, I just couldn't, I, I, I can't find that was from behind the CBG, it. From CBG? Yeah, to Smith I, I would Street. welcome and that. I don't know where that is on here. That's why I'm trying to figure it out on the budget. This is just tax, his tax levy expenditures. Okay. Okay, but he's overseeing the project. Correct. In general, from all from from CDBG funding right. out of the budget. I, where would Smith Street be on in the budget? I'm I'm confused. So there's there's CDBG funding that's being used for Smith Street Playground. I'm just trying to figure out in the budget where do I where do I see that? It's it's okay. It wouldn't be on this budget, right? It it's an expense in. For the block okay, I'll, I'll okay. That's what I, I'll just double I, check on that. Okay, thank you. Any other questions on revenue? Seeing none, Director Tassalia, thank you very much. And if there's um, if there's any communications regarding sign up, registration for summer camps, you know, please you know, get that to us. And, you know, I know we'll, we'll all be happy to, to share that. And I look forward to the, uh, the opening day for the splash pad. I, this year. I believe they went out last week, the right. And so now it's all game on now. So, and if you need other solid dates, I can get them to you, councilman. Thank you, director. Thank you. Yes, we'll um, we'll go community development. Good afternoon, Chairman and Council members.
Director, thank you for being with us uh, this after well, this morning and afternoon. Um, and again, we appreciate everything that your department does for residents in the city of Cranston. At this time, um, I just want to ask, you know, each year you give us a kind of a breakdown of of what's coming in uh, in terms of funding and kind of where we're going to see that money allocated for different projects or grants or programs. Could you give us a little bit of a rundown on on uh, what it looks like for this coming fiscal year? Sure. Uh, this year's budget is obviously it's pretty straightforward. It's based upon a grant that we get from HUD, as well as carryovers from previous years, as well as program income. Um, we are regulated by HUD, so our budget comes together very easily. There are certain categories that we have to fund to minimums, and there's also some that have maximums. Um, that's why when we do this, uh, a, a simple explanation is whatever the grant is, and we have not received the final number yet, so the numbers you see in the budget are an estimate. We always estimate that we're going to get a grant of approximately a million dollars. Um, it could be up or it could be a little less. When we get the actual letter from HUD, we will know definitely and numbers can be adjusted then. But uh, basically, 20% of whatever the grant is goes towards program administration. And the balance of it has to go to low to moderate income projects throughout the city, depending on location. Um, like I said, it's there's public service. There is CD, we have a housing program. We also have public facilities that we fund. Um, just to give you an idea, some of the public facilities, we, uh, we give grants to the Hope Alzheimer's Center uh, senior services receives some money from us, CCAP. Uh, we have a heating assistance program that we administer through CDBG uh, department itself. Day one, uh, Elizabeth Buff from Chase Center. And these are all facilities. Well, most of them are in Cranston, but some of them may be outside the city of Cranston. But the funds can only be used for Cranston residents that are utilizing those facilities. Um, as far as the housing program, we have a rehabilitation program where if a homeowner meets the HUD guidelines for income, they could be eligible for either a 2% or a 0% loan. Um, we have contractors, we put them out to bid. The bids come back, the low bid gets the gets the job, and the depending on what they are, either a 0 or a 2%, they, their payments are very low, obviously, at 2%. Um, some of them don't have to pay back at all. They're included in that is also a $7,500 maximum grant, meaning that, let's say, a project or a job was $20,000. They would only have to pay back $12,500. So um, public facilities, I already mentioned, and uh, obviously we also do a lot with dot box. Um, as Councilwoman has mentioned, we are uh, paying for the Smith Street playground. We also just completed upgrades at Calise Field, as well as Florida Avenue. Um, and that money exhausted our the last of our COVID funding that would be going away at the end of this fiscal year. So we came up with those two programs and took care of those uh, those two top parks. Um, that's a quick overview. Uh, like I said, it all depends on the income of the uh, person that comes into our department. As far as citywide projects, we're also restricted there we have, uh, according to mapping, there are areas in the city that are classified as low mod areas. In those areas, we can do street paving, things like that. Thank you. 
<clears throat> Thank you, Director. Um, you know, the uh, a lot of uh, many residents are able to benefit from the programs run through your department, and uh, again, it it's appreciated. the The number projected for the twenty twenty five budget, the the projected federal award is down two hundred thousand dollars. Is that um, is that just a change in in census data at the municipal level? Yeah, if you look at the award, that also uh, includes carryover from previous years. So in, in each case, for example, the awards for 23 was $1,061,374. In 22, it was $1,054,000. 21, it was $1,144,000. So it's pretty consistent. We always estimate at this time of the year that it's going to be a million and that's how we come up with that amount there the extra money that's there like i said is from carryovers from previous years as well as program estimated program income for the next three months thank you director are there any questions councilman poplaska i said a quick comment i know we're running tight on time i just want to say great job I received uh, some calls from uh, residents that you've helped in your office has been phenomenal. So just want Thank to let you. you know the feedback that I've gotten. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Okay, seeing no other questions. Thank you, Director. We appreciate Thank your time. You. Thank you. Director, welcome. Thank you. All right, we're so we're gonna we're gonna do expense revenue, expense revenue, exp alternating, but we're gonna stick to one group. So we're gonna start with group sixteen hundred, that's senior services administration. Director, are there any opening comments you want to lead with, or do you want us to jump jump right into questions? Probably easier just to jump right in. All right. Do any members of the committee have any questions? Seeing none, we will move into the revenue category. Uh, Director, the, the one question I have for Group 1600 on the revenue side, uh, again, based on the numbers I was looking at for last month, it, it running under, just one. Yeah, we have uh, most of the revenue that's generated from the senior center in these, in these categories is coming from grants from the cities and states, from federal. That usually is a timing issue because we have to get to that point and then we file and it's months later before we actually see the money. So it's more of a timing issue, projecting that we should be on track by the end of the year. Are there any other questions on 1600? All right, let's move to 1601. Council Vice President. Sorry, just a quick question on that salary. It's fifty uh, six thousand five seventy proposed, but your hospitalization um, went went down, but your salary went up. Is it? But it's not part time, I would assume, because right. I'm I'm just trying to figure out. Oh, one. Yeah, oh, one. 
is there no like health insurance that's is is that is that what's declining? Is there? Is, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the salary is fifty six. I think um, because we self insure, I, I believe that it was probably. Up, inflated because of we uh, the person that was working in that position was out for an extended period of time for uh, a major surgery, so I don't I don't know why else. New person, new person yes, okay. just started. Um, six. Yeah, if, if six I counselor. Um, FY twenty. The current year's budget FY twenty four would have been the cap the plan that the previous incumbent may have been on. So the 18,000, and I don't know if the, who the previous incumbent was in 01, it's a different person now. Correct? correct, that is correct. That would have been the, the insurance plan from for the previous incumbent. What you have before you is the, the 10,596 is the actual plan. You know, it could be a single plan. For the current incumbent, so it's the insurance is tied to the employee. So we had an employee that employee does not have potential, maybe so it, family, it, or so it could be a sole single health insurance when it went down by one it, employee. So through the chair to the council, the eighteen grand was the plan for a whoever was in that position a year ago when we built the budget. This fiscal year, yep. The current fiscal year. Mm -hmm. The 10,000 is directly tied to the new employee who had, you know, that particular person's health insurance. So as an example, I was saying, I don't know if the past employee had a more expensive plan, mm -hmm. a family one. But I can say that the actual insurance is tied to the employee, not the job title. So the change, um, and I can go back and, and triple check it, is because the new employee <laughs> has a different plan. Okay, thank you. Are there any other questions on 1601? Seeing none for expense, are there any questions on 1601 on the revenue side? Just a quick, Councilwoman. Quick question on that one on 1601. Um, that revenue right there, service programs, um, is 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 that like the lunch and everything else? Like no, that's uh, that would be membership pages? and uh, programs. We charge... Um, that's some, nominal that's fees for certain okay. memberships or that, programs. So are our fees going up? Uh, memberships going up a little bit. We're starting to see bigger, but more people in each of our classes. So we're starting to see a little bit more revenue coming in. So we increase it slightly. <clears throat> um, it, it's our seniors. A lot of them are on restricted budget, you know, and I know inflation, everything's going up, but I'm just wondering how much of an impact do you think that's actually going to have on our seniors? Um. We're holding our line on everything that we're doing. We're probably absorbing a little more of the cost than some of our instructors. We're starting to see some instructors kind of inch up a little bit. We have a whole litany of different instructors, but everything else is kind of holding. I mean, meals for us is $3 donation. That's federally mandated. There's nothing we can do about that. So that's holding steady and, and that's a donation. So if they can't afford it, they still, still get lunch. So I'm not seeing a whole lot of things that we're raising our prices on or raising our fees on. So we should be pretty solid. Okay, thank you. Okay, group 1602, adult daycare. We'll start on the expense side. The uh, part-time help uh, looked like it was running over budget for through, through February. Um, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Looks like it was running way down. Um, is there 
which is it, it is a good thing, but is it due to difficulty finding help or? It's we're challenged. Uh, most of our part time help, uh, we have part time RNs and we have part time, you know, trying to find part time CNAs, and that's a challenge. So right now we're using hired services for one of our CNR CNA position because we can't find part time CNAs. So we're probably washing out a little better right now. And I think we're going to continue with that model as we go into next year. So, but if we could find more CNA help, we would love to have it. That's part of what we're looking for. Does the, what you're doing currently, if you're to continue that into next year, do you think we would continue to see a, a cost saving? I would hope so. But what I don't want to do is leave myself short in that, that, that's a critical area. I don't want to leave myself short with help. That's too important. Yeah, understood. Are there any other questions on the expense side? Seeing none, what about the on the revenue? Is there any questions on revenue? Okay, moving on to group 1603. This is senior services, social services. Are there any questions on the expense side? The only thing that popped out to me was uh, <clears throat> Nutrition program, the uh, it's line item five, five uh, excuse me, line item five seven seven zero one. Nothing has been spent through this year. Do you anticipate expenses coming up in the yeah, last we'll, quarter? Uh, that basically funds our holiday meal programs, so that'll just get transferred over to the nutrition center. It just hasn't happened yet. Are there any other questions on the expense side? Thanks. I don't know if um if I misunderstood. Welcome, Director Craddock. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry. It's been a long week and day for all of us, but uh, we appreciate you being here. The nutritional uh the nutrition program, you said it's for the holiday meals and it's three thousand dollars. Um but we already had a couple of holidays in this fiscal year. So what am I missing? This is basically funds the, the meals that we make for delivery out to the, the seniors at, at, prior, just prior to Christmas and just prior to Thanksgiving. So it's just an accounting. We just haven't moved the money over to nutrition to support that plan. That's all that is. Understood. Yeah. Right, thanks. Yep. Any further questions on the expense side? Okay, seeing none, move over to the revenue side. There's one line item, that's 47120. Uh, my question is, uh, this is going up like a thousand percent. Yeah, we, we actually, if um, it kind of offsets by looking at the admin, we, we receive a designated grant and a, the 3D grant from the state. We just kind of allocated the money where it appropriately belongs. So we took it out of, if you notice that um, admin went way down and then you saw the increases in social services and transvan, we just kind of moved the money because those basically, that grant supports those positions in those departments. Traditionally, it's just always gone to admin, but we've decided to actually make it more accurate in how we allocate the funds. Thank you. So it's just a reclassification on exactly. where the money is being yes. put in the line. The okay. total overall revenues are down, but there's two specific reasons for that. And we can talk about that when we get to the next departments. Any other questions on 1603 revenue? All right, seeing none, we're moving on to 1604. Director, there's a 
uh, on line item 51302, there's a, a decrease of about $41,000 for hospitalization. I think that's We've, also related. We've actually hired um, two new drivers this year. So I think if you also notice that we had, um, we also had a one increase in hospitalization buyback. So I think it's the new plans that we're actually going through. So we now have a full complement. We have four full drivers plus the supervisor. Okay, moving on to, oh, there's no revenue. Oh, no, no. yeah, there is. Uh, sorry. Are there any questions on the revenue side? Okay, group 1605. Direct to line item 51200, uh, part-time help, kind of the same question. Is this a faulty to staff or? Uh, it's more related to, uh, to remind everyone, last year in January, we eliminated ourselves as a caterer. We, uh, we, we, we stopped that business. So when we put our budget in for this year, we had very little data to work with since we put the budget in in March and we didn't actually eliminate the program until January. So this was kind of our best estimate. And now we're kind of refining it based on having significantly more data. So I think the 55,000 is um, accurate for what we are actually using the um, teams for now, so. Thank you. And the other question I have is on line item 57701. On the nutrition program, um, the the budget is is staying the same. What's what's it? So it's annualized this year at two oh nine. Um, oh nine one nine three. Okay. Um, do you with 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 the kind of the phasing out of that program, do you think that expenditure is going to remain the same or do you think it's going to... It'll, it'll remain the same. We're, that's, this is um, annualizing out. We're, this is kind of what we're looking at. For We've been in this program for the entire fiscal year, so I anticipate that that's what's going to roll over into next year, and I think it's pretty accurate that we're going to spend that much on food for the number of meals that we serve. Thank you. Council President. Thank you. Um, I had a question on the salary schedule. The proposed budget says it's 51100, 169, 555. But when I go to the actual um, salaried positions, even including the zeroed out for the vacant positions, it's actually 269. It's a different number. Am I missing something? Through the chair to the um, Madam Council President, you are, if I just may, sure. Repeat, yeah. sure. In the in the, I'm not look, looking at the small packet in the large budget book. If okay. you go to Group 1605, 51100 salary schedule, it says that for the proposed budget, it's 169555, but the correlating detailed. Um, listing of the actual salary positions gives a total that's over a hundred thousand dollars more okay and and i have to go back you're in the lodge yeah if book. you if if you want to the chair do you want me to just bring it down to you and show you yeah because i didn't bring my lodge book
Yeah, no. I have to get back to you because Oh, man, dude, come on. It's, my, the it's, 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 yeah, the salary there. It's so the that's benefits. all in. That's the salary. And that you're not seeking to fill the vacant positions, right? No. Okay. The, that two ones. Okay. Yep, those two are not funded. Okay. And then one last question. Is my understanding correct? The reason why you're not filling some of those vacant positions is because the kitchen services, the food services have changed. Correct? Dramatically, correct. We're no longer supplying other yeah. cities and towns. Pre COVID, right? we were doing 5,000 meals a week. After COVID, we were doing 2,500. Now we're, we're down dramatically. So well. the chef position that is filled is sufficient to satisfy the needs within your senior services department. That is correct. Okay. That's it. Thanks. Are there any other questions on the expense side? Seeing none, revenue for group 1605, nutrition. Any questions? Seeing none, we'll move on to group 1606. This is the RSVP. Program correct. Are there any questions? No questions. Moving on to the revenue side. Director, the um, the revenue is running slightly under. Yeah, uh, it's, it's the same as a timing issue. It, it's a federal grant that we utilize through AmeriCorps. So it's just a matter of when the reports go in and when the money comes back in. But it's, it's basically a guaranteed $75,000. Okay, thank you. Thank you. That's all of them, right? I'm That's, not missing any others. That is all okay. of them, all six or seven of them. Direct, I, you know, I know we kind of, when we went through this expeditiously, is there anything before you leave you want us to know? I mean, we're, we're trying to expand our programs. We're now doing a trip a week. Uh, through our trans van, which is one of the things that the seniors are very excited about. Um, we're seeing increases in the number of our programs. Uh, we're starting to look at doing more evening programs because that actually uh, just to kind of break up the, the seniors day. Um, so I think we're doing, it's going really well and I'm really happy with everything so far. So I think we're going to have a really good summer. Thank, Thank you, you, everybody. Thank you, director. He, the tax assessor did he let me know that he was going to be back around two o'clock that he wanted to so we'll get all right uh, mr lima come on down Some 
Director, your three minutes begin now. Thank you very much, uh, Chairman, members of the Council, Council President, uh, Nick Lima, the Registrar, on behalf of the Board of Canvassers for our 25 operating budget. Uh, first, the first thing I'd like to say is if you look at our current operating budget for this fiscal year, uh, it's really not comparable to what we're doing in, in the fall elections, and that's because of not well, we're not only doing one, but two special elections and three total elections. So the the balances are 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 all off this year, and, and it is not uh, very informative for uh, looking at trends for next year. Uh, that as such, this budget was built off of the previous presidential election, which was held in FY21 in 2020. As you know, we have four citywide elections this year, which is unprecedented. It's five elections in 13 months, 11 total elections since June of 2020, which is also unprecedented for our office. We can only have 60,237 registered voters, 39,000 of which will likely vote in this fall's presidential election. This budget requests $225,000 for the fall 2024 election, and we are doing more with less. Because in 2020, we spent about $300,000 for the presidential election that was partially due to covid However, we have made significant improvements since then, including election law changes that have saved us funds by lobbying the General Assembly and uh, efficiencies gained from redistricting when we reduced the total of polling places from 30 to 26. That year, we also received $125,000 in grants. However, congressional funding has dried up and there is not an indication we'll get more federal funding. So while we have had uh, eight years of uh, uh, overall positive budgets. Uh, this this current fiscal year will likely be the first that goes negative because of the unplanned for special elections, and obviously there's nothing we can really do about that. Almost everything we do is mandated by state law. We have very little discretionary spending. Uh, for this fall election, this budget includes $181,000 for poll workers. That's $86,000 for the primary, $95,175 for the general election. There's more poll workers, obviously, for the general. We also have to have a presidential same day registration polling place here at City Hall on Election Day. So that's 26 polls for September, 27 polls for November. That also includes 20 days of early voting at Pastoria Youth Center, which for the first time will include two Saturdays, the Saturday prior to each, the primary and the general. But our office, as you know, does not only do uh, elections, we also do voter registration. And since the last major election, we have processed over 40,000 name, address, information, and party changes plus 8,585 address moves within and outside of the city. And we'll continue to do vote, voter list maintenance in between elections when we can. However, I will caution the council that our time is limited, uh, as is my time here before you today. Uh, we have a five-year mailing, four NCOA mailings, a commercial property review, and we also get list updates from ERIC, uh, ERI, the EIRC, uh, DMV, Department of Health, Department of Corrections, the Jury Commissioner, and notices from other jurisdictions that we use to update the voter rolls. Um, other line items in our budgets are calculated based on the actual costs for known expenses, uh, including maintenance of our time copy timestamp, uh, our membership dues for the Ryan Town City Clerks Association, of which I serve as chair of the Elections Commission Committee, and I lobby extensively for election administration improvement and many of these cost savings that we have realized. As you know, we've had national impact and recognition in the last year. As I wrap up here, um, we have uh, the film No Time to Fail, which is on Amazon Prime and Apple TV, is showcasing our office on a national level. Uh, and we also have uh, membership in several uh, national boards, including the Federal Election Assistance Commission Standards Board, which I'll be attending next week in Kansas City, uh, the Local Leadership Council, of which I serve as the chair of the Northeast region for New England, Pennsylvania, Delaware, New Jersey, New York. Uh, in the Bipartisan Policy Center Task Force on Elections, as well as the Election Center, Partnership for Large Election Jurisdictions, Election Verification Network, and Election Community Network. Uh, and last year, uh, I was appointed by the Senate President to serve in the Special Commission to study non plurality voting methods and ranked choice voting. I'm currently the city's representative on the Cybersecurity Grant Planning Committee, in which we do expect to see significant funds. And I've been working with uh, both. Uh, uh, director Scungio and IT, as well as uh, Finance Director Zadellis, uh, in keeping them up to speed on what that committee is up to. Uh, my participation in these federal uh, task forces at no cost of the city, all participation and travel is funded entirely by the federal government. And I can get out of the office for those for the last thing that I wanted to discuss with you, and that is because of the ex incredible staff we have in our office. Combined, there are 68 years of experience in the canvassing authority that includes seven for myself, eight for Emerson Brito, who previously spent two years in Providence, 23 years for Maria Madonna, and 30 years for Terry Bucci. Their jobs have changed tremendously 
in the last 15 years. And for the last three years, our office has requested uh, in the budget, but not yet received, uh, job classification changes for their positions, which include a job title change, a refiling of their job descriptions to include all the new duties that have been added, such as curating the mail ballot drop box, early voting, uh, more su supervisory authority, uh, and many other changes, including cybersecurity, that have been added to their duties. Um, I handed out a packet to uh, the committee here, which includes a couple of items. Uh, the first is a letter from the Board of Canvassers uh, that that actually that does request the job title uh, changes be made, uh, as uh, which would have a corresponding one grade increase. Uh, I believe that we can successfully do that increase out within the confines of the current departmental operating budget. It's about four thousand dollars in total. It's it's not, it's not a, a huge hit on our elections budget, and it could be done with a line to line transfer as, as part of this budget. If the council were amenable to amending the budget to include that in increase, and this is also a conversation I've had with the administration and the mayor as well, um, then at the time of passage, what I would do, since the council doesn't have direct authority to file the title changes or job descriptions, I would administratively file those at the time of, of the one grade increase. Uh, that is our, our request. I'm not going to get into the, the details of that because I provided you a three page letter uh, that, that covers that along with uh, a story that actually just ran in this week's Boston Globe that talks more about the, the reasons why election officials need support. Uh, we have seen the highest rate of turnover of any municipal agencies in the entire country, aside for perhaps, I guess, the, the Cranston Planning Department, which, uh, as you know, has had a high turnover rate. But uh, compared to police, fire, school departments, uh, multiple other city and town agencies, this study that just came out three days ago uh, shows that uh, Rhode Island has had a 46 percent turnover in our uh, election administrators in the last four years, which is unsustainable. Um, and it's important that we do what we can to maintain uh, the level, high level elections that we have going into a busy election year like this. And our staff um, aren't lost to other cities and towns, which would be pretty catastrophic uh, for us due to the experience that they have. Uh, that said, Chairman, I thank you for the extra couple of minutes. I know I went a little over. I apologize. I apologize to the council. I know it's a long day. If there's any questions, I'm happy to answer them. Thank you, Director, and and I I don't mean this in jest. We we do always appreciate your your thoroughness, your um, your level of detail, uh, and your your passion and enthusiasm. Um, it, uh, it it's uh, it's great to see how caring and professional you are, uh, as well as all the other directors. But but you always stand out every budget year. So I appreciate all the work that you do, and and of course everyone else in your department. Um, the the number for the salary schedule rounded up 4,400. That's included in the letter, uh, the calculation for that. It does not include, however, the uh, other hits to benefits, uh, payroll taxes, for example, which would have to be calculated, which wouldn't be much. But yes, about $4,400 thereabouts. And I did um, talk with Director Zadellis, too, about some of the other cost savings we could have in our elections budget. We have overtime every year. Uh, in 2020, it was around $40,000 from Cranston Police, building maintenance. There are some things we can do to try and mitigate some of those costs that are, are absorbed in the elections budget uh, but is, that do support elections. But there's some, I think, ways we can get creative about that and uh, try and minimize them for this year to, to keep those costs down. Director, do you? Yeah, Director Zell. Uh, I see. Yeah. Sorry. Um, continuing on, Director Lena's um, request. Yes, he made it with his original presentation and subsequent. Um, if I may, Counselor, and you are the appropriating body, but other departments made very similar requests in across the board. They weren't in. Um, incorporated in the mayor's budget. It's the council's purview, but I just caution you that, you know, other departments that report to the administration made requests. They didn't do it. So this will have cascading effects. And then back to Mr. Lehman's um, request, just to highlight on the election, it, the amount um, that Mr. Lima has for elections 52610, um, there are two cost centers that 
I have assured Mr. Lima that he had a higher projection that I would personally work with him to drive two car settings down to get the $225,000, his estimate for um, his expense for FY 2025. So um, full disclosure, uh, Mr. Lima, his estimate for the elections was hot, were, was a higher amount, and I will work with him to get it down to $225,000. Well, which sure. again, I'm fully comfortable with, Chairman. I, I think we can work within those means, particularly given what we've spent on elections in, in recent years and the cost savings that we've realized. We also have some legislation pending in the General Assembly that may even result in a few thousand dollars more cost savings if it passes before June, which is you know, an, an unknown. But of course, as Director Zell said too, in our case, uh, the, our office staff, as you know, are appointed by the Board of Canvassers with council confirmation. In this case, the Board of Canvassers voted unanimously in December to uh, authorize me to make this ask. Uh, regarding the, the two great changes. D Director, um, yes or no, the, you, you have the funds based on the the the, pro the proposed budget, you have the funds you need to run the elections. Um, I, I can confidently answer that as yes. Okay. Are there any other questions for the director on the expense side? Seeing none, we'll move over to uh, revenue. Are there any questions on revenue? And as you know, our, our revenue is on a couple hundred dollars. It's it's dependent upon if a candidate walks in and wants 10 maps one day. Well, then we've made our revenue right there. But if, if that doesn't happen, we make 100 instead. So, Thank you, Director. Thank you, Chairman and members of the committee. Thanks, Nick. All right, we're going to take the finance department next. Why don't we do treasury and tax collections? And um, their finance employees. Um, Ms. Chairman, three of my department heads um, could have made it in the morning, so I will take those. Um, that being collections, purchasing in MIS. We're not going to be available for the afternoon. So however you want to do this. And Yeah, well, well, let's do assessment. You're you're here. Let's that way we can get you out of here. Director the Dallas is going to be jealous that I get out before him. So um, I appreciate the time. <clears throat> Mr. Chairman, I uh, I want to just address a couple of items um, off the top, if you don't mind. Um, the assessor's department is adequately staffed. Um, we are looking at technology to help us to meet our goals both today and in the future. So there is a little bit of an increase in our departmental expenses of $11,000. That's going to help enhance our, what we call pictometry or Eagle view, which is an assessment tool. Um, we are going to add, or we hope to add uh, an item to that, what they call change finder. And that's gonna enable us to better serve the citizens of Cranston, and also to easily detect when changes are made to properties, be it with permits or without permits. So that's something that we're adding this year. Um, other than that, our, our um, all of our expenses are down. Um, we did not do not have to pay any more on the reevaluation um, that's currently underway. Our last payment will will be incurred in FY24 and not FY25. Thank you, Director. Um, one question I have is on line item 51104. The, it's a differential 
Yes. That wasn't expended thus far through February. Um, is in is it anticipated that that differential will be necessary for 25? Yes. Yes. Yes, it will be. Yes. Okay. Um, when I came to the city of Cranston, we did some shuffling of the deck as per se. Um, we reallocated certain functions of the department to other employees. So these are things that we added into that. Um, and the differential helps us to meet those goals. Are there any other questions on the expense side? Seeing no other questions on the expense, we'll move to revenues for group 1114. Mm -hmm. Are there any questions on revenue? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good weekend. All right, let's take accounts and control. Do any members of the committee have any questions? Overtime running well over. Is that in if, 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 um, if we can go back to the council meeting um, of the other night with the auditors with um the management letter comments about someone retiring at the end of FY23 and the cascading effects. So that position, what? what do you do? He left in May. At the in May, and that position, which was a 35 hour position. Okay, his workload had to be done. Um on an overtime basis by a person high, you know, at higher pay. So the overtime expended this year, I don't know if you were speaking to this year's expenditure or next year's. This year's expenditure of overtime was someone doing the work of that former employee. We have now hired the employee is actually in the finance budget, although he is, for no better term, um, assigned down the hall in controllers. So in terms of overtime um, in 25, the person should be um, up and running and thus reduce that, the need for overtime. And for FY24, the salary that's available in finance will be transferred over to to accounting to reduce the overtime. Thank you. Are there any other questions on expenses? One, 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 three. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> like 25 years later and I'm still here. <laughs> Okay, 1115, contracts and purchasing. Uh, 
Are there any questions on the expense side? None, seeing none. Revenue, are there any um, any questions on the revenue side? I assume the, the scrap reduction is, we, there was a, a sale, right? With the, so that it was the was property over on- uh, Saunders yeah. School, that was the FY24 was Saunders School. Now we're back to um, selling just normal, we're back into our normal rhythm. And as the director Matus um, spoke to, when I believe um, Council Vice President Vargas asked about vehicles or in the capital. So prospectively, the revenue in scrap sales are gonna be primarily us disposing of vehicles, our normal course of business because you know, until such time we have a larger asset to sell, such as a school, um, we're back to just selling vehicles, which will be just, you know, aren't used. Thank you, Director. Are there any other questions? Okay, we will move on to group 1117, that is Division of uh, Treasury and Tax Collection. Director, the one question I have is on line item 52016, Professional Services. That, um, what is, are you questioning what it is? What it what it what is it? Why is it okay. the amount that it is given the actuals for for twenty four? Okay, the actuals for twenty four. It's matter of fact, if I could just correct a statement I made that I omitted. Um, tax sales. We have. I'm sorry. That's generally um, the you know, lawyers in terms of tax sales, if we have to do um, title exams or so, or primarily um, legal fees. And I stand correct because I think Council Renzulli asked me which categories. Here's one where we would have um, legal expenses for tax sales. And now in terms of timing, this is one of those fourth quarter um expenses because the tax sale i want to say will be in may but the expenses to be incurred will be incurred in the final quarter of the fiscal year thank you very much uh council president Thanks. Um, just along those lines, um, Director Zadellis, last year's budget, we had gone over this, if you recall, relative to departments having their own section, some of them for legal services, and this one's saying professional services, but essentially it's legal services. And we talked about that time, that too, about you know being centralized would be a better approach. I understand that's not completely within your control, that it would include correlation with uh, well, solicitor Malay, but um, I would impress right. upon that that should be something that should be examined. And my question to you along those lines is that all of these professional services is identified in, in this um, item as 52016. Are any of those expenditures of $48,000 also included in there's there's no overlap with Mr. Malay's department, well, correct? Through the okay. chair to the to the council uh, council president. No, and, and I'm just thinking about the report that the solicitor provides the council. I want to say that's tied directly to their outside council, 
We did do one report at the request of the council where we captured um, not only the outside legal services contained in the law department budget, but we also included the, the services in the treasurer's, the service, or I should say the collector's office, the services with the library, the services for claims committee, and the services for bond council. We did do that, but I'm going to make a generalization relative to the solicitor, solicitor's report. That is exclusively um, claims payments, related. No, payments made. Yes, claims, suits, or or um, claims from the claims committee. And it is exclusive of legal expenses here and legal expenses at the library as well as legal expenses for bond council. Okay. All right. Thank you. Are there any other questions on the expense side? Okay. Um, at this time, we'll take the finance department. Group one 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 two. Director, uh, Line item 51108, severance. Is there, is there anything planned or is this just a... Um, Ms. Chairman, if you exclude police and fire, the, um, and I'm gonna use my vernacular, the payout of any accrued time for the rest of the city, um, just so happens to come out of finance. Um, so there are two things on this. We don't know of, you know, people leaving, retiring with large, um, large amounts of a payout. So as part of this budget, we reduced this severance line item, you know, for that occurrence plus, where the severance, you know, as getting back to how we budget positions here, we budget their full salary. If they leave mid-year next year, that means there's available salary in their budget. So we will coordinate um, any payouts between this line item and um, proceeds available in the departments. On the finance side, expenses. The, the um, line 51407, contribution to insurance risk, decreasing uh, $190,000. Uh, Ms. Chairman, um, to the counselor, there are two components going into that. One is reducing um, the settlement, but if you also look at the trend on that, that is also down between the two fiscal years. So that's a measured risk as a, as a budget reduction this year, sir. In, in 2022, the actual was 2,200,000. Through the chair um, in 20, I'm sorry. And was there a, a large settlement? I'm sorry, Council, if I could just get to that page. Um, two, two, I'm gonna assume that year, there was some, we tried to do some settlements, but 
I believe that was the opera funds, the nine, the uh, nine million of additional seven million additional two went to two million went to claims to cover outstanding claims. The fund balance, I'm not quite sure, but I believe that that was in the fiscal budgetary period, and then the rest went to the health account. What what indicates that we should be budgeting less for that at this point in time, whereas we don't want to get back into a situation where we want to be having to contribute a large amount of money into that fund again. Okay, Ms. Chairman, if you look at, and it's in the 750 at a later portion in this budget, if you look at the trends that we're seeing to date, sir, The claims are, are down. We have no big settlements coming on right now that we know of, sir, through the chair. Thank you. Um, I have one additional question. Just the bank charges. I know that there is, um, do you anticipate using that remaining balance on there? This is a question that I think I've asked every year during the finance department. It's... Okay. Three quarters of the year, we've only used $360 right now. Do I think um, we're going to use that next year? I don't know. It, it's, you know, certain charges for us getting hit with, you know, service fees so if if anything um is director do you think that would be fair to say for this upcoming fiscal year that 25 globally on the yeah um that it that would probably be reduced and it shouldn't be that high i asked that so if this question every one year line item in this budget that would be it I, okay is it fair to say we can reduce that probably to 500 i'll play around no no <laughs> and if i you could $2,000 is not going to, you know, through the chair to the counselor, if you were to ask me, can we reduce that $2,500? I would say I'm not going to argue with you over $2,500. Thank you. Councilman Ferry. Getting back to the con contribution to the insurance risk. What is in that bal fund balance now? What is the current fund balance now? Council, I did not bring my general order out here. Can I get you before the end of the day? Um, the amount and I didn't bring. I, I understand. I, it's my. I, I'm just trying to make sure that we're not heading in the wrong direction, and that and that the fund balance needs to be adequate going forward. And we'd rather have more money in it than less. So I just like to know what the balance is, what the balance should be, what's a, like a history of what it should be. Through the chair, I can get to that. Thank you. Councilwoman Rensley. Thank you, Chair. There are any are there any other questions on the expense side of the finance department? If not, we'll move on to the revenue side of finance, still on group one 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 two. Director. All right, we're gonna move on to revenue. Line item four nine one three zero. The uh the proposal is going up a it, it's a whopping fifteen thousand percent, but um, you know it's it's going from one hundred dollars to to fifteen thousand, which actually seems a little cons a little conservative. It it based on the twenty twenty four numbers could potentially go a little bit higher. Would you would you feel comfortable if that went up to 
17 5. Now for again, uh, for small numbers, no, I would not feel uncomfortable. Are there any other questions? All right, that's finance. We are going to take revenues next, which is without it in front of me, I believe it's group zero 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 zero. Next, yeah, we'll do IT was requested and then the city clerk. And Councilor, I just realized um, I didn't give you, I must have omitted March yet a date when I sent out the package. For Revenues for zero, zero, zero. I was tying department um, revenues. And now that you just said we're taking the, you know, revenues in your package I sent out, I didn't send a March update. Can I just ask a question, John, in the meantime? Yeah. Simple one. Um, I understand you don't have it for us. Do you have the current year to date for revenues with you? I did not bring it up. Okay. I, what I did is brought up what I sent out. Okay. Yeah. All right. My, it's up to the chair. My suggestion is maybe continue this line, this subject matter to the next um, budget meeting then so we can have a more thorough discussion on it. It's up to, it's up to the chair. The um this is the last special finance meeting before amendment night adoption and veto. So we would have to call a special meeting, but we could also piggyback on if there's any other meetings that are called potentially or or before another meeting we could hear this i think um as long as there would be no objection to it we could discuss it as much as we potentially yeah. could this evening and then if there are additional questions that requires an additional meeting we could convene it um, because there's always the option that if i'm sure director Sedellis, you will provide us with the current to date information. And then um, as long as there's no objection from, from anyone, we could email you with any questions relative to that Through the chair, department. The Absolutely. I know I had some questions relative to, to revenues. Yeah. Um. 15 minutes. What? And, and the one thing, the, if, if I just may, sir, please.
We're going to take a five minute recess. You should work well with Jones. Damn good faint praise. That was always his approach to people, too. See, the problem with that is where he was, he fucking lost. So, yeah, he did. He lost big fucking time. Collecting for the
the uh, in transparency, the conversation was was that uh, I believe municipal indebtedness and and long term debt was um, was not posted. So we will the the initial intention is to just have a a, a special meeting before the regularly scheduled April full council meeting before that uh, to discuss those two those two groups ahead of amendment night okay group 0000, zero, zero, zero taxes state aid and general revenues i'm going to allow council vice president vargas to begin Director, I had a question on that. There's Johnson and Wales that's actually listed on there. Johnson and Wales, from what my um, what I, from what I remember, that was soon to expire, just like sunset, and there was supposed to be continued conversation. Yes. Did that happen, and why is that number lower than what it was? And one of the things um, there were conversations with Johnson and Wales. The um, it ceased. But they said they would be they are amenable to a pilot payment. What they wanted to see was, and this was four months ago, five, if not a little longer. Um, they sold, they still have properties, but the lion's share of the pilot payment properties have been sold. So we have to re-engage with the finance director. Um the estimate is half of what it was before, but there will be a pilot payment from Johnson & Wales, and this is just an estimate of what it will be because we have not finalized that discussion with Johnson & Wales. And, and that is true. I know that they sold a parcel, but I'm wondering as we are having that conversation with them um, on the pilot side of things, it, there, there's still remains many properties. of their properties within the yes, city of that, one of one of their discussions was the benefit we derive from going those were exempt properties with a pilot agreement converting over to taxable properties and that's what they wanted to see and i'm doing this from memory they wanted to see what the financial effect is so us, what it, us deriving you know yeah. they think we, I don't want to put words in their mouth. We derived a greater benefit from them selling the properties to a taxable entity. No, oh, I understand because yeah. we'll get some revenue on, on that side. But I'm just wondering, is that going to impact FY25 at all? Because we're, we, it seems like it hasn't been solidified yet, right, in terms of that agreement. Well, it affects both 24 and 25. Okay. Yeah. So so when it's that... estimate council. So why would we estimate lower, like really that low? Because the the two twenty includes the properties um, in the twenty four. The two twenty includes um, was pre the sale, if I may. Okay, right. and so and then it said it would be. Going, we're do? saying, you know, we're hoping, you know, we the went down to one ten. looking at one ten, but that could potentially go up to depending on. I don't think it will go up. I think okay. if anything. So when we look at those type of fees and having that sort of conversation, are we also talking about um, any type of services in terms of response from our public safety? Yeah. Uh, so public safety department, like response, like they use our police and fire, right? Yeah, Does that have for, anything yeah. to put not for the pilot? Okay, nice and what you're saying. Not for the actual aid that's coming in. All right, so can you keep me posted on that? Yes, I mean, that's yeah, just been an ongoing conversation for, for a few years, so I'm just curious what we're going to do going forward. Okay, thank you. Council President. Thank you. Um I just have a question, Mr. Zdellis, relative to the rescue, um, and given that we just 
I'm looking at my phone trying to find the numbers. I'm going to defer to you if you can tell me where it's currently tracking for the rescue. That's and again, I did not bring um, this year's, but um, through the through that the chairman to the. If you do recall, this was a question we had the other day on the increase in such as Medicare going up. So I think you're speaking to the rescue line item um, on the revenue side, that being 24, um, the 24 budget was, was 3 million, the FY25 projection is 3.6. Yeah, yeah, um, three million, and then yeah, yeah. one mil, and then so, it's two categories. One was the medical. The other one, universal. the other one is, um, if you look down at the 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 offset, the w one million is yeah. our write off, and it's it's a revenue and expense. It's a it's a wash. So those are the two line items yep. you'd be looking at, ma'am. Bear with me as I'm trying on my phone to travel across <laughs> to see it. Hold on. And if I just may continue, Councilor, as uh, as the Council President looks on her phone. The other thing with um. The third party rescue is an aggressive collection of there's a timing, a receivable um, that we have on the books. So the the increase in the Medicare fee, which I want to say went into place in January, coupled with collecting the receivables that are on the books um, are why we're projecting a increase in revenues in that line item. Okay. Uh, Mr. DeMeo was kind enough to let me look at his paper printout, which was helpful. Um, it looks like the, the numbers are on, on track. Um, thanks. The, um, it's line 41520, restaurant tax. The projection is for this to go up 12%. Through the chair. Um, the biggest driver on that, um, or the driver on that, is Top Golf. Top Golf with their, um, I haven't personally been there, but their sale. This is predicated on sales, so that's the estimate for Top Golf. So, um, and that's fantastic. I I also haven't been there yet uh so i would like to i was waiting for a sunny saturday to Ain't go and miss james so wasn't i but i don't golf anymore so I would, it's a convenient excuse um uh, the the i always for for this category i always go back and try and cross rep with what the governor's proposed budget is this is the governor plus top call that's that was my concern because the bud the the governor has two point eight five and this is three yes and like I said we know they are collecting those revenues which eventually will flow into us um, in a conversation matter of fact with the um, when we're going through the advertisement for the the advertisement which is going in the paper before final you know, adoption this was an item that it's the governor's budget which did not include top call they are looking at current data of, of the establishments in place
budget auditor? Currently, um, up at the state house, there is discussion from one of the representatives of a um, sunset phase out of the meals tax, a quarter of a point a year from starting January 1, 25 through January 1 to 29. Obviously, we don't know What's yet gonna... whether it's going to be passed yeah. or not, but it's something we should probably monitor. Mm -hmm. It, it's happening. It would, and if the League of Cities isn't. That same way they phased out the auto tax might be yeah, the same they, land. They, in theory, compensated us, and what we lose is prospectively new car sales. It, it, it's um, legislative change and have adverse effects on the operations of municipal government. And I was not aware of that legislation. Again, just it's just something that needs to be in the picture. It may not pass, but at this point, you have to address everything that's put in front of you. But yeah, it's prospective. Yes, sir. Prospective to a chair, prospective legislation. Yes. Third party rescue four one five two two um, that through the February numbers was annualized at about two point nine, which is on par with the previous five year average of like two point two point well yeah two point nine closer to two point nine. Why why the increase uh, by six hundred thousand? That's as I said to the um, through you to the chair as I previously stated with the council president, there's Medicaid increase, there's increased reimbursements coming through that went into effect, I want to say, January. So when we bill out, we expect to have a higher rate coming back. That's number one. Number two, um, the receivable, collection on receivables. Those two line items are um, contributing to the estimate going up. Sorry for the for repression. Yep. Um, all right, I'm going to take a break. Any uh, anyone else have any questions? Councilwoman Renzulli. Thank you. My apologies if if I missed this, but director in the the pilot, what makes that pilot go up or down? Like looking at 2019 at five million. Like are we did we lose? Like we're still housing the same state properties, correct? And like and okay, I'm glad. I'm glad the city assessor is not here right now. Um, it's the use of the property. There were certain uses that, by statute, they reimburse us for. If the change of the use, such as um, the jail. If a building was being used by the jail and is no longer being used as that department, that would decrease the pilot. So the vacant buildings uh, in the city of Cranston that are state property the, earn us no money because the state's not using them? The, it's the use of the building that dictates the reimbursement. So if they're no longer using it for a prescribed use by the statute, we are not getting. Okay, so that's all by a state law. Yeah, correct. And yes. is there room to negotiate pilot with the state? Based, with the do cities negotiate pilot money with the state based on? I know it's a little out there, but as real estate value goes up, the value of that land goes up. But they don't pay us any more money, and they have. There's no way that we can ask them to. Correct. Okay, not for well, for. Uses that are not eligible for reimbursement, no, we cannot do it. But their their payment goes by um, if that value increases. I think the payment does. But yeah, no. It, and if you may recall, last year when we were developing um, the budget, we approached the gov the city approached the governor's office. You know, with 
how many times we rented services for police and fire to that complex to no avail. It, it's just the pilot, which is predicated by the use of the property. Okay, thank you. Councilman Perry. Yes, thank you, Chair. Um, in reference to line 49135, COVID-19 stimulus, just want to make sure I'm standing this. 21, we used 15 million. In 2022, we used 7.8 million. In 2023, we used 19.4 million. And in 2024, we used 4.8 million. Is that a correct? Ms. Shaman, um, if I can go back to 2021 is the only one I'm going to have a, a qualification. APA, I think the 7.8 is the APA funds, the 19, the 4. I think nested in, again, 2021, I was not here, but I do believe the fifteen million may have been upper and um, I think they called it the CARES Act. So that would I in my mind, and I can get you an answer on that one. Okay. It's not just upper, it's upper, or it's definitely CARES. All right. Because I didn't remember the fifteen million. I just I, I'm thinking I, when I add it up, it adds up to more than I thought we had. Yeah, and, and one of the things it's it's one of those um, items where, as we spoke to the other night, you know, we for no better term, we have co-mingled grant funds with with tax levy funds, and I think this would have been an example of such an occurrence, Council. Okay, thank you. There are any other questions? And and uh, director on that COVID stimulus again. How much? How much do we have left? Um, they call it six million. I think it's five point eight plus interest. And that was one of my council one of my to do lists from the other night that I have not done to get you that out. Thank you. Are there any other questions on revenue? Okay. That portion of the meeting is now closed. We will now take IT, information technology. So what's the group number? All right, uh, I'm going to start with line number 52016, professional services. Is this, what is this? I can tell you it's not legal fees. Um, I want to say this is the give me one second, Council. I believe this is our third party um, in lieu of a in lieu of a person, we went and outsourced certain work with a company um, to provide technical support um, to help us manage our network, our overall system. That's, it's, it's um, a, um, Apex is the company. Is the 104 
thousand is that a set contract? That's a managed service contract. That's correct. That we renew every year. Okay, Council President. No. Okay. I I didn't see you were gonna, and that was the exact question I was gonna ask. So no, all good. Line item five two nine three one computer maintenance and fees. Sorry, excuse sorry. me. Yep. What, uh, what line am I again, sir? Five two nine three one. Yep. The uh the budgeted change is a twenty six percent increase to five hundred and seventy five thousand, okay. which is considerably higher than than um but, you know what we've seen in the past. And, and counselor, if I may, one of the things I work with um our TS department is in terms of support. Our IT department um pays numerous fees, maintenance fees. And if I just may, some of the fees in, in I want to say in previous years were paid out of a different account. So I can say with no no uncertain terms, this is numerous um fees associated with our network that we currently have in place. And some of them were, I think, previously classified down in the account number 52933. You know, there's a substantial drop there where just some of those expenses have been moved up. But this this covers um, the web hosting or first thing is the um, all of our cybersecurity. I'm sorry. So it's it's our existing maintenance. I don't get yeah, it's our existing maintenance costs for all of our software throughout the city council. So as a net, you expect that to go up thirty thousand. Um because technology upgrades is being reduced one twenty, computer maintenance and fees is going up one fifty. So there's yes. gonna be a, a net thirty yes thirty thousand increase in spending. Yes, through the chair. The council is correct. So I guess what are what are the what are those thirty thousand increase in expenditures? Because it's not a it's not a simple just one twenty from one line to one twenty to the other in how we're reporting and, it. Can I in the one that jumps right off the page? Um, just my financial system yeah. is is going up. Over five thousand dollars. That's one application that we, you know, I can get you a listing. They'll you know, one to one. But yeah, all of our supports. Another one is is the patch support on um, our our cybersecurity. That one's going up three thousand. There's a litany of ones that I can get you a, a listing of the increases going. Um, from FY24 to FY25. Thank you. Are there any other questions? Okay, seeing none on the rep on the expenditure side on on revenue. None. Okay. Let's move on to the city clerk. Good afternoon. <laughs> Thank you again for being here and, and your patience. As I mentioned to you in passing, I, I couldn't see behind our, our gigantic chairs. Um, and I so I apologize that no, you've been waiting here. No apology necessary. I'm here for the duration. Um, 
So I, I just want to thank the council um, in particular for the allocation of ARPA funds last year to get um, some software for the city clerk's office. Um, and I just kind of want to start with a status on that. Um, so we went live on April 1st with a cash receipt system and the ability to retire our 1988 cash register. Um, Mr. Zadellis was uh, incremental in that process. It did take us a little bit longer than anticipated. There were some hiccups, um, but we are now live. The system is running well and um, it allows for a better audit trail. It allows just for better calculations and better tracking of uh, the money coming into our office. So that's all set. Um, one of the other things uh, we have done is uh, a, the system called Clerk Base, and that is going to host our ordinances and resolutions back to 2002 and some minutes, I believe at least back to 2020, maybe back further than that. Um, all the ordinances and resolutions have been loaded in by the vendor. I'm just waiting for a few more things and then that will be uh, live and the link will be posted on our website. And that is gonna make all those resolutions, ordinances, minutes searchable by keyword. So for instance, if you wanna know um, when you know council passed a resolution on you know roosters or something like that, instead of me having to go through every single resolution and try, <clears throat> and try to find that, I can just Google roost, I can just put rooster in the search, it's gonna show me where it shows up in the minutes and it's gonna show me the ordinance or resolution that was passed. Um, and you'll, the general public and you will all have access to that as well. So I'm very excited that should be uh, linked and live coming any day now. Uh, the other system that we've procured is called Onboard. That's a boards and commissions database and that is a work in progress. It is very labor intensive. It requires a lot of research per board, per member. And we're finding that there are a lot of inaccuracies in the current access database because it there was no filtering. There was no, you know, nothing pops up to say, are you sure this is correct kind of thing? It's just whatever you put in there is what it maintains. Um, and there were some issues with appointments not being done correctly. Like for instance, um, when someone's appointed to fill an unexpired term instead of their expiration date being logged in as, you know, 20, you know, December, 2023, uh, they were appointed for three years from their start date. So we've, it, it requires a lot of cleanup. So unfortunately that one is, is going to take a little while. Um, Probate, I expect to go to BOCAP next month. Right now we have um, over 30,000 probate estates. They're all manual, they are all on paper. My uh, administrative clerk keeps track of the estate numbers on a yellow legal pad. Anytime someone wants to see a probate file, they have to come in, they have to ask for the file. It has to be researched. Sometimes we need a custodian to get it down from above. Sometimes it's up in the attic. Um, so this is gonna be actually a three-part phase. The first part is going to be um, getting a software management program, a probate software uh, management program that will allow us to start effective, say July 1st, with inputting the data, indexing it, scanning it, and being able to um, have access to that for you know, any, anyone, I, I don't know that we would put it out there publicly. That's an option we would have to discuss. Um, but at least people coming in could look on a computer rather than um, having to figure out a file number and things like that. The other part of that is going to be um, all the prior 30,000 estates that are not backed up anywhere. Um, and those are permanent records. And right now they're being stored in cardboard boxes on top of shelves in the vault that does not have a fire door and they're stored beneath, directly beneath sprinkler heads. So if we were to ever have an incident in there, which we recently did have something minor, thankfully, um, those records would be destroyed. So um, I've consulted with our land evidence company who works with a company that does uh, large scanning projects and um, they're gonna be getting me a quote for that. And that's not going to come out of the operating budget. That's gonna come out of a historical records trust fund. Um, so that's not gonna be assessed to the taxpayers. That's going to be out of fees collected over the years, um, which really should have been done all along, but hasn't been. Um, so that's exciting. And then the uh, last, but certainly not least is the business licensing software. We'll be going with OpenGov, which is who inspections has um, currently for 
their e-permitting. We'll be doing this. Um, we're working on the project now. We've had our kickoff meeting. They're going to start building the system and we intend to have that portal up and working by the end of August so that all the liquor and victualing license renewals can be done through that portal. I know Mr. Chairman Ferry is very happy to hear that. Um, that's going to be so, I just can't even quantify in words how much help that is going to be um, in the office. It's, it's the way we do it now is just not effective. So I, again, appreciate the funding for that. Along those lines, um, some of the continuing costs for that software is um, in fiscal year 2025 in the operating budget, there is $9,242 in department expenses. That is for the business licensing. Um, that is business licenses are not permanent records. So that does not qualify for use from the historical records fund. What we will be using for historical records is 7,510 to maintain clerk base, 1,800 to maintain the boards and commissions, and <clears throat> approximately $4,800 for the next year for probate. The other amounts that are taken out of that historical records are $67,000 for our continuing land evidence program and $4,000 for offsite storage of microfilm from Iron Mountain. That's approximately $85,000 that comes out of the historical records trust per year that is not assessed to the taxpayers. It is collected out of fees. Um, I only really have two line items that I wanted to address because um, they're significantly different from my department request. <laughs> Excuse me. The first is line item 51101 overtime. If you look at the trends, um, fiscal year 2022, the actual was 17,698. Fiscal year 2023, the actual was 18,952. During that fiscal year is when I was hired. So when, and I was new um, at the beginning of fiscal year 2024 when we were working on the budget. So I'm not really sure how that was going to um, settle out between the distribution of meetings. So we budgeted for 15,000. Um, my department request this year was for 10,000 originally when I met with Director Zadellis to go over the budget and we looked at year to date figures, we had come to an agreement on 7,500. However, the mayor has only budgeted it for $5,000. We are currently at $3,776.85. That does not include the current payroll, the bulk of these budget hearings. Uh, are still to go. We will have an inauguration in fiscal year 2025. So I'm respectfully requesting that the council consider increasing that um, from 5,000 back up to the 7,500 that Director Sedellis and I had discussed. The last, uh, does it, I don't know if anybody has any questions about that before I move on. No. Um, that the, item itself? I'm sorry. Did you want to? If we had any questions on that item, if that, if the chairman wants to wait until all questions at the end, or how how I'll, you... I'll let you continue, and then we'll hold questions okay. till the end. Perfect. All right. So the other line item um, is five one two zero three clerical assistance. Again, if you look at the trend, we have for fiscal year twenty twenty two an actual of forty five thousand three hundred and five. For fiscal year 2023, the actual was 34,512. Fiscal year 2024 was a budget of $30,000. We're currently at 83%. That line item is going to go over budget. Um, my original department request was for $42,482. What that represents is an increase in rate of pay, hourly rate for um, one of my part-time clerks who has been very inst instrumental in helping me get these new programs up and running. She has taken the lead on the cash receipts program. She's going to be the one um, building the licensing software. Um, she's an hourly employee. She gets no benefits. Um, she's been there longer than all but one of my full-time clerks. And she's making um, about a dollar an hour less than most of the other full-time clerks. She's doing comparative work 
Um, so in order to minimize that gap a little bit between her and her coworkers, I'm asking for a 50 cent an hour raise for her. And that's a very minimal amount um, because she only works <laughs> right now 21 hours a week. But the other portion of that in the increase is to increase her um, from 21 to 25 hours a week beginning in September. Uh, when her daughter goes to preschool, she'll be able to commit more hours. Um, and that timeline would fall perfectly in line with um, uh, the launch of our business licensing software. So it's it's only an increase of four hours a week, 50 cents an hour. Um, uh, what the mayor has put in there is 35,000. That's not sufficient. If I kept the two part-time employees at their current hourly rate and their current hours, that would be 37,193 um, minimum needed to for current staffing hours and current rates of pay. Um, so, you know, I'm asking for a little over $5,000 more. I hope the council can see fit to, to give me that. Um, I do anticipate that she will carry the bulk of um, implementing that business licensing software. And that's really all I had for my expenses. Council President. Thank you, Tracy. Um, your um, services, your lead as the city clerk has been uh, welcome and very much appreciated. We know it's a very heavy lift um, and uh, we understand the uh, real hard tasks in terms of updating us to where we should have been years ago and definitely you know, where we uh, need to get uh, to get to with the software updates, the closing of the of the cash only cash register services <laughs> and we look forward to uh, the other um, technological improvements and particularly using the historical records fees for the purposes in which they're um, designated uh, to facilitate those improvements at no additional cost to the taxpayer uh, in terms of in terms of um, since we've all been here a long time going to um, cut to uh, some of the important issues. I understood what you had to say about the um, assistance there. I also uh, want to say um, with respect to an upgrade to the municipal code, is that incorporated at all in this budget? It is not. Let's it is see, not incorporated in my head. budget. Um, it was a department request for the city council. However, it's not represented in the mayor's budget. It was not allocated. Okay. Um, I believe that that would be a cost under, uh, and directors of Dallas, if you've got some insight, I think it would be a cost under the clerk's budget. Um, I think I, I, through the chair to the counselor, it was incorporated at, at in one of the requests in the city council budget and did not um, make it through the final budget recommendation. Okay, yeah. And I mean, we can amend it um, to put it in that department um, if we can uh, afford it. But yeah, go ahead, Tracy. If, if I can just yeah. explain probably why it's there is because right now we have, um, you know, the the code of ordinances and that falls under the council's budget for the supplements um, and the maintenance of that. Mm -hmm. So what we did was we increased that by the 25,000 in order to accomplish the recodification. So um, because the existing process was in the city council budget, we put it in that same line item. We just increased the line item. I hope okay. That so, makes sense. so it was moved over to, to the city council's budget. Yep. Okay, exclusively, because I had um, talks with um, legal and we weren't sure which department it should be. And I, I think it's kind of splitting hairs. And if, if there's an issue, we can make the adjustment, which we'll look into before um, uh, budget adoption uh, relative to the upgrade to the code. It, just um, for people's awareness, that's typically done, I believe, at least every 10 years, if I'm not mistaken, is the norm. That's is that correct. right, Tracy? Yeah. Um, and we haven't done it in, what's it, 20 years? Or um, we did something in 2004. I don't know that it was a full recodification. Yeah. Um, I okay. It was at least a partial, but there are some things that make me question whether or not it was a full uh, legal review. So um, it the 
the most recent that it has been touched and looked at is 2004. So and that's I, 20 years. And I appreciate, I know you got some estimates as to that, which you spoke to Director Zadellis, which incorporated, which we can talk about in the city council um, budget. And then I think this is more for personnel. Is the clerk's contract coming up? Do you know, Mr. Zadellis, if that is in negotiations or when that's going to be expiring or? It's okay. The, the unions? Yes, yep. Both, um, the, there were two contracts that expire there's a 630 <clears throat> which it does may i refer to it as the i think it's teams or line or teams is both teams 630 <laughs> 24 the union steward just gave me the the green um the thumbs up madam jim through the cow through the chance of a counselor yes Okay. Do you know if that contract has been factored into this budget? Through the chair in one of the um, two departments we just spoke about, there was a provision um, for those contracts financially. Right. And the other thing I want to say is I want to thank everyone in your department and especially reliable Rosalba <laughs> too as well. Uh, but we really appreciate all your help. That's all I have right now. Thanks. Councilman Perry. I'll be quick. I want to thank you for the progress you're making to improve the technology in the clerk's office. It's a path we need to stay on and we need to be diligent about it. And if money is more money is needed, we do have to allocate some more opera money before the end of the year. Please let us know because we want this to continue throughout City Hall, not just your office, because it's 2024 and we need to act that way. So I appreciate all the work you're doing and, and your determination to get it done. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, can I? Yes, you can. Um, Councillor, you're absolutely right in terms of efficiency and technology. And I'm going to go back to, um, as the clerk said, the cashier machine it is a collaborative between the clerk's office, MIS, and my office. That, to make us more efficient, in terms of information, yes, it, it spans beyond. I mean, the clerk is at the tip of the spare, but we need that across the board in every department and division. So if I echo your... And, and one other thing, we're going to be renegotiating a contract with the clerks in that office and other clerks, with the Teamsters. I know that in the past you've had trouble attracting good labor into your department because we're not competitive with other cities and towns. So we, we really should be diligent about making sure that we're paying people enough money to keep them and attract them into this department. Thank you. Thank you. I, I have to say uh, through the chair to Mr. Ferry, um, that's the reason for the increase for the 50 cents an hour for Brittany Richards. It's not a lot of money. Um, she would work full time if she could, but it's not a cost effective for her to do that, to you know pay child care and do that. Um, so that's, it's more a show of appreciation than anything. It's not really going to make a difference in her bottom line, um, but it's just a matter of recognition that she's doing comparable work to full-time employees. She's getting paid about a dollar an hour less than those employees. Um, she doesn't get the benefits like vacation and holidays. So to me, it, it's, it, it's a very tiny drop in the bucket in order to retain that employee. If I just may continue, um, very talented employee, but again, the request came in from all departments in, you know, in the final budget, we just, you know, tried to be consistent with how we approach this budget. And I would wholeheartedly concur with the clerk on that particular employee, because I would not have, or oh, we would not have got the cashier um, project done without that person. Absolutely. Councilwoman Renzulli. Thank you, Chair. Um, I'll be quick. Um, Clerk, thank you so much. You have done great work since you started here. And, and I know that, and Rosalba was already 
doing great work for as long as I have been around. So I appreciate that. I just have um, a, a question that the overtime, I know that this is even, is the 7,500, would that be enough considering the amount? I'm only asking because for one, the actuals make it seem like it would, but like $5,000 was allotted for say planning and they have a lot less meetings to go to than I know Rosalba comes comes to for us. So I'm just wondering is if we have, is this anticipating us having long meetings, short meetings? Do you know what I'm saying? Like I want to make sure that it's in line with what is actually needed. Uh, th through the chair to Councilwoman Renzulli, uh, you know, that's why I did the conservative approach to, you know, the 10,000, you know, I, that's my theory is I'd rather, I'd rather put enough in there to cover it and then not go over budget. Um, I do think 7,500 after, you know, reviewing the current year to date and everything with Director Z Zadellis, I do think 7,500 is more in my comfort zone. $5,000 I am not comfortable with. And there's a few things in here that went to zero. Is that just because of the way that the state collects on these on these different licenses? Oh. I will let Director Zadellis explain this in financial yeah. terms. <laughs> yes. And we we as the clerk inferred, we totally changed, we made their uh, revenue system integrate integrated with our financial so prior to uh, this budget we overstate the revenues to include the portion we're paying to the state on the you know down both you know in the expense side we'd overstate the expenses as the clerk said in April we've changed how they're doing business both in terms of hardware technology the state money is now will no longer be an expense in their budget um, upon receipt where we we apportion city revenue state it gets recognized into a liability account on the balance sheet paid out on the balance sheet not the operating budget so not only did we change technology we changed the code excellent thank you Are there any other questions on the expense side? Okay, seeing none, we're gonna to move to revenue. Are there any questions on the revenue side? Clerk, did you? I, I just uh, wanted to point out a couple of things on the revenue side. Um, I noticed that the amounts for 42121 Sunday sales license and um, 42137 auto repair license, those numbers have jumped up quite a bit. Um, I, I'm just concerned that those revenues are being over projected. Per, um, I did not calculate those. Uh, Director Zadellis did. So if it's not out of order. I'm just asking to for him to confirm that those numbers are on track with what we're looking at. Sorry, the second one was um, four two one three seven water repair license. And Council, uh, Mr. Chairman, may I get a report back to you, if if I may? Oh, and uh, sorry, one other one is four two one two five dog licenses is being almost doubled. I will get you a report on those three points. Thank you, uh, Director, that you'll you'll get back to us on those. Uh, yeah, of course. Um, and one last thing is um, 42138 tobacco licenses. Um, that's been budgeted at 11500 and that should actually be zeroed out because we are no longer issuing those licenses. We do not have the legal authority to issue them. Uh, we consult. I consulted with the solicitor on this when I first started here, and we are no longer issuing those licenses. So I don't know that we should be putting um, eleven thousand five hundred dollars of revenue in there for licenses that will no longer be issued. Okay. 
Okay, just confirming, mm -hmm. Director, you're going to get back to us on that? Yes, sir. If, um, if that is the... If that is the case that we legally are not collecting those fees any longer, we as a city council have a duty to pass a balanced budget. I'm going to politely ask that those that eleven thousand five hundred dollars be found somewhere by the administration. Um, Mr. Chairman, that is correct. Okay, are there any, uh, Councilwoman Renzulli? Thank you, Director Zadellis. And the paper we got with March actuals, it, it, something get messed up or is dog licenses running that high over? The, and is that why this number went up? It's like about $30,000 in the credit column. Through the chair to the council, that's when I was sitting there looking at this um it's twenty five thousand. you have to if i just made you you have to take both the debit and the credit that's why i asked to um get back to you with the report so i can do a deeper dive on the detail if i may thank you um, i can just add to that a little bit i believe the dog license fees have actually been calculated differently than previous years. Uh, there are two Rhode Island required assessments that are to be collected on, on each dog license. And I believe we were only collecting one um, or we weren't collecting the correct amount. So that's been adjusted. Um, those fees are also supposed to be on top of whatever our dog license fee is. So our current dog licenses, instead of being 10 and seven are 13 and 10. So the 10 is represents for senior citizens. Um, so I think that's why it should go up some, but I'm just concerned about it going up double. Do we, are we capturing like the amount of dogs that we think are in the city that are actually licensed? Because when I have mentioned a dog license to people I know who have dogs, they have no idea what I'm talking about. So I just wanted to put that out there. I mean, I know the dogs have their shots and they're, they take care of their dogs, but I don't think people have dog licenses the in reality. So maybe this is a place we could, make a substantial amount of revenue, but people would probably be mad if they all of a sudden have to pay for a dog license. So that's all. May I, may I say something, Chair? I talked to the animal control officer one time and she, her estimate is that one quarter of the dogs in the city actually have a license. It's just her estimate. And I would say it's probably even less than that. And I, I will say that um, people who frequently come in with new licenses for dogs, say they did not know that they were required to have a dog license. So maybe there's a some type of education or community component we could put in, in there um, that could increase those fees. The other thing is um, part of our business licensing software, we will have the dog licensing um, through that software for next year's renewals. So people will be able to renew online. So I think that'll make it easier for some of the people who maybe forget or don't get in, whatever the case may be. Um, so I think that'll also help utilize increasing the, those numbers. I can't tell you an exact number right now of how many dogs we do have licensed because the way our system works, um, every person is assigned a tag number and they renew that same number every year. So the people that move or the dogs die, those tags don't get renewed. So we're at like, you know, however many dog li license, the high number, but there are a lot of gaps in between. With the new dog licensing system, we will be able to prepare a report that will show exactly how many licensed dogs that we do have. One, one quick note, in the animal control department gets a certain amount of that fee. So yeah, for every license, $3 goes into separate funds. One is um, a low cost spay and neuter fund. And the other one is um, supposed to be set aside for enforcement. Um, so those monies should be used for enforcement. There was a chair. Um, I Speaking of enforcement, not only just on that license, but on our other licenses, because this has come up, do we actually find anyone for not 
getting their license on time, renewing their license on time, having a license, like not having a license. If someone actually finds not having a dog license or we don't actually have some kind of inspector, a license inspector, right? Not even on a part-time basis. Have we you ever had one ever? You want me to answer? Okay. Um, so there is no such thing as a licensing inspector in the city. The only way we collect any fines is by um, sending them a summons for municipal court. And there's been, um, in many instances, either through the Rhode Island general laws or the code of ordinances, there are fines that can be assessed or violations that can be assessed. The problem is that requires, uh, you know, legal action or, or something like that. And that's beyond my, I mean, I can, I can submit to the municipal court a, a summons, but from there it's in legal hands. And that also needs to be initiated either by the committee or, or by yeah. the solicitor. So I, I know being here for five hours would, I, I'd have some value. So for, <laughs> there, there's, <laughs> um, so it, exactly. If, if there's a, vi if there's a violation, um, by the dog or its owner, the dog gets in a, uh, gets in a fight, bites someone, runs away, et cetera, gets picked up by, um, animal control, then they will issue a violation. If the door, if, if the uh, dog isn't licensed, that'll go through municipal court and there's a fine associated, a statutory fine associated with that. So the collection, um, is only collection of fines is only through that process, not through a you know, you didn't license your dog. It's only in in conjunction with a violation. But not beyond dogs. Like when people don't renew, when businesses don't renew their liquor licenses on time, we go up. The police have to go out at the uh, last hour and give a, a cease and desist. But do we actually find any? Like, do, is there any accountability, or do you just get the like a slap? Um. Well, I mean, liquor licenses are a little different, but you know, they will issue cease and desist depending in Superior Court and and fines and jail time. I mean, you can't that you know that goes into more, more comprehensive um, enforcement with with liquor licenses, but um, there would certainly be fines for um, not registering your business. Some of those fines go to DBR. They really don't have anything to do with the city at that point. Yeah, I mean, like operating in the city of Cranston without a license that you're supposed to be operating with. I think that there should be, we're not holding anyone accountable and they, if you don't actually get in trouble for doing something wrong, then what is really the point of um yeah yeah i mean it's, it's I'm going, really i apologize i'm i'm going to have to interject i know um so uh council attorney angel uh we're getting a little off topic here um we're getting to the substance of how ordinances work and so forth as opposed to budget matters we have to be careful of that thank you attorney angel That's all I've got. Thank you. Are there any other questions? Thank you, clerk. Thank you. <laughs> this this will be quick. <laughs> I I have no comments or questions on Pro Eight. It's pretty cut and dry. It's level funded it's basically the salary for the probate judge is not really all right any questions no. all right thank you clerk. thank you sewer enterprise fund I was just going to say, I, maybe when Director Matus was here, we probably could have did this one. I didn't think of it at the time. He was, he was in a rush. I was in a rush. Mm -hmm. okay. Shannon, yeah. um, in terms of the sewer enterprise fund, it doesn't affect the tax levy budget because it is an enterprise. Just, if I could, Councilman Donnie. Yeah, of course, Council President. Just to put in simple terms, all the money within that fund stays within that fund. Through the chair to the Council President, that is correct. 
Are there any questions? Okay, we're going to move on. Boards and commissions. These are entirely level funded. The Okay, that's done. City Council. No, no, I, I thought out of the corner of my head, so I'm getting down and come over. <laughs> I might just be seeing things at this point. We've been looking at a spreadsheet too long. It's just... yeah. I'm getting old and. Don't worry. Let's just, his birthday was yesterday. We just, yeah, don't worry, Council. I'm good. Yes, sir. Board of City Books? Yeah. Uh, uh, well, well, in terms of City Council, the only thing we mentioned before was the Muni Code thing, which you said that's that has been included in here, um, and that was the increase. Other than that, there's nothing... Um, additional, no change to to uh, to say. Yeah. If I just may, um, Council President, yeah, the the audit of the city books is out for an RFP, so this anticipates an increase over the current year. Council President, Please. former Council President, I'm sorry. Wow, uh, throwback. Hey, uh, just one comment, really not a, a question. I see the actual on video streaming is low. I know we get a lot of feedback still through the sound system. It's been going on for years. If we, I'm not that I'm advocating spending any city dollars, but if we have some money left over in the budget, maybe look into changing the amps, if we could. That's all. Thank you. I, I agree that we should look into whatever it's going to cost to make this system at least a little bit better. You, Councilman. And just since we're on the record, Director Zadella and, and uh, Mr. DeMeo, we can use ARPA funds for that cost, so that's sufficiency and operations. So, okay, we'll maybe we'll look into that. Thanks. CCAP. Which is, it's group 1900. It's, it's actually under um, grants and community grants. One question I had reached out to um, Joanne McGonigal about was the was line item 52054, the rental assistance. That was a, a line item, the 10,000 we had put in as a council, I think in like 2019 for the 2020 budget. And it was used for those first two years, but it hasn't been used in 2022, 2023. And to date, it hasn't been used in 2024 yet. Um, so I, you know, I asked, is, is that money that we could move to another community program to benefit people in the city that could use some help. She said that um, they were not aware of the, that the money was still available. They'll reach out. 
um, and they would like to see that money kept for that program. Um, I know that is, you know, it is one of significant need during this this time. And if they still need it, they think that they can use it. I think we should keep it. And, and Mr. Chairman, if I just may, um, you spoke to going back to 19. It actually, um, I don't know if you did it in the budget hearings. It was in there, the final budget for 24. Um, it put it in. Um, we carried it forward for 25. So the mayor's recommendation was to carry that one forward. So yeah. um, if in terms of utilizing it, I don't know if we did a good job communicating it, but it sounds like your conversation to um, the executive director brought to her attention that there it is there. So it is, you know, it was put, the mayor put it forward. Um as a carryover in this year's budget. Are there any other questions on grants and community grants? Seeing none, we're gonna move on to economic development. Director, one significant change that jumps out is the marketing. This is going down 11,000. That, that line item was budgeted for the 12 for a, a partnership with the Providence Warwick Visitors Convention and Visitors Bureau um, with the department. So are we, that was going to be a two-year agreement. Are we not going to move forward with year two? Through the chair, um, nothing has been spent to date, it, and that's the one issue. Um, and I don't know if that has been executed. So the, the agreement was definitely executed, Just be, and I know because I was the one that spearheaded it, and I don't think I'm not – you know, taking credit from anyone. That was yeah. an initiative of mine um, from back when Ed, Br you know, Councilman Brady was on the on the body. Um, I would just, they, I think there's like there's opportunity for ten thousand dollars to work with a group that does significant scheduling of events here in the state and I think that the city could benefit from it but I also think the city could benefit from it if we took advantage of what they are offering us and I'm not sure that we are getting the most out of that right now and I'll Mr. just Chairman, put it if diplomatically I, if I may circle back with the director on the activity I will say that this was a um A different year for the director um because of personnel reasons. You know, he had some issues, but let me let me circle back with the director Monday on that issue. Thank you. Does anyone have any other questions on group one 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 zero? Expenditures or revenue? There was no uh, I have a I have a question about okay, economic development. There used to be a, a full time um, assistant in that office. Is that position completely eliminated now? Um, it is not funded, so in it, I don't want to mince words. The position is, and I just want to triple check what I'm saying um, through the chair to the councilor. The position is in the salary schedule. And if you could indulge me so I can get to that page. It used to be about a $60,000 okay. position. That's the, the economic development aid. It's a, it's a grade 22. It's just not funded through the chance of the council. There is a position. It's not funded. Did the uh, economic development director request that that be funded so uh, 
he have, have have an assistant to i mean with an important thing like economic development i mean how can we not be, be funding if, that if, if i just may it again it's if it wasn't funded in 24 we did not add any new positions in this year's budget through the chair to the council thank you is, is somebody getting um some type of a stipend to assist him in that office there is a um a differential i want to if you can indulge me for a minute yes he is being assisted um from an individual in the mayor's office the uh, communications director um I believe that through the chair to the council, yes, I believe that's who's doing. Do you know what that differential is? Uh, oh, we had it. Oh, we haven't done executive yet. The ED. I'm sorry, I think it's going. Councilor, um, let me go to the. the budget report that I sent out because I think it's getting paid. If you can indulge me for a moment, please. And my problem is I put the... There is no differential in the executive... Uh... No, no. In terms of what is being paid out, if you could indulge me, Councilor, on the report that I sent out yesterday on expenses, sir. Okay. While that's being looked up, can I just, just confirm with this question, the obvious, um, and that may be for attorney Angel or attorney Marcella or DeMeo. If there is a differential being uh, paid, if we as a council do not appropriate the funds for that differential, I don't believe that differential can occur. It's not budgeted. Um, also, I, I stand in before attorney Angel um, answers. I thought there was a differential. I'm not seeing one being paid. But it has been brought up in the past that there was a differential being paid to that, to the communications director to assist Franklin Paulino in that office. Um, I believe that's been stated, but I am not seeing a differential being paid, Council. Madam President. Yes, yep. Attorney Angel. I first want to congratulate Mr. DeMeo on his admission to the bar. Um, just, um, secondly, um, obviously, if it's a contractual situation where wages are paid either under a collective bargaining agreement or by some other private contract of employment, it has to be funded. That said, if it's not in the budget, then you've not appropriated for it. I mean, they all wages paid, whether by stipend, hourly, salary, whatever the case may be, have to be accounted for in the budget. So factually, I think the council has to know how this person is being paid and appropriate accordingly so that the appropriation matches the actual payroll. That's my two cents. Thank you. In my defense, it's four o'clock. We're all going to be saying some stuff. Thank you. Thank you, Auditor Angel. Oh, if we could find out if that's happening and, and if it is, we need to correct how it's being done and it needs to be put in the budget, please. Okay. Um, through the chair to the... Just as a quick review of executive, there is a part-time uh, money being paid out. Part-time salaries. That's yeah. what I'm going to look to see. Um, if you may recall, 
they had part-time employees um, last year or this current fiscal year at the beginning of this year. I will check to see if the differential. And if I may, John, just ask one other question real quick. That salary, there's only one employee in economic development. I'm noting the salary is a slight increase of about a couple of thousand dollars. Is that right? That's correct. That's what's being proposed? That's correct. Okay. I'll make a note of that. Next, we're going to go to the executive. Um, one, one, oh, one. What's that, sir? Insurance. Insurance. We, yeah. We. No. Thank you. Executive. Okay. Are there any, are there any questions? Orders of the mayor. Is going up by 4,500? Um, Mr. Chairman, if, if you look at those two line items, um, inverted in terms of their request, orders of the mayor, um, increasing from two to 6,500 in Public observances and holidays going down by the, it's a reclassification of funds amongst two line items. While you look at, can I? Right. And uh, Director Zadella, do I see this right too? There's a proposed increase in salaries of $8,000 in aggregate for the executive branch? Through the chair, um, that's correct. Okay. It's a salary increase between okay. the two years. And, and that on, I'm going to call it the admin positions, that has run through all the, the departments. This is just, um, there's a few of them in there. That's why it jumps off the page. It's not a single individual in a department. Is it equal, not equally, is the $8,000 increase being distributed amongst all of the executive? Um, or more than, if, if more you're not- More than one person. That's There's fine. no one individual. It's spread out okay. over um, a few people. Okay, so that's what's being proposed. Thank you. Director, could you could you send us a, a schedule of of how that eight thousand is being allocated next yeah, year? Well, yeah, yes, we can do that. I can do that. Thank you. Or to whom that eight thousand is being allocated? Yes. Are there any other questions? Okay, personnel, and we are done. Can I ask a question? Basically, there are only two employees in the personnel department that are full-time, correct? A director and a Assistant director, I don't know. I don't know what he's called. Okay. Those are both non-union positions appointed by the mayor. 
And then there's some part-time help? Um, yes, that's correct. Okay. Somebody working the 75-day rule that used to work in the office, okay. Um, I don't know the 75-day rule, but there was a, a part-time employee that augments the two full-time employees. And that's basically it? That's basically it. All right. Thank you. If I may, to the chair. Yes, Council President. Um, similar question. There's about a $3,200 increase proposed by the mayor for the salary and the Department of Personnel for the same number of personnel. Is that correct? That, the, the Council President, that's correct. Okay, thank you. Are there, are there any questions on the insurance claims and risk management? Um, are, are there any members of the public that have any comment? Tom, anyone online? Yes, Rose. Sir? We did that. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, just to let you know, I'm getting nervous because I just want to double, you know, after we finish this, I like to double check my notes with somebody on my homework assignments, but I guess I know. Yeah. I apologize. I'm not. Yeah. All right. Hold, hold on, Tom. Is there is there anyone? Well, I'm online? not seeing any hand ra hands raised online. At this time, we'll close public comment. Seeing no other business before us today. Motion to adjourn. Second. Clerk, please take the roll. I just say aye. Come on. All in favor, say aye. 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 aye.